How are you doing this morning, chat? Good morning. Happy, uh, happy OTA day. Some deck lists here. Is there anything we might want to poke at? some more of this before it goes away. I like this one a lot. They're deleting a lot today, right? Yeah. In my dreams. I assume a isn't a numbers change. They probably want to change its text box. And while they can technically change text boxes in OTAs, I think uh, they seem to shy away from that. They seem to only want to change checkboxes and OT. It's like absolute emergency. Wave zero. Thanks for three quarters of a year. Welcome back. So again, they can change text boxes and OTAs, but in general, they seem to shy away from doing that. <laughs> you know what? I wonder how this deck looks with Cannonball versus Spiderwood. funny. So we, we recorded with this deck, this deck, and it felt fine with Cannonball. I was like, it's probably better with Spider-Web. The stats certainly imply that that's the case. Yeah, the, the whole rebalancing Thanos discussion is just like, it's really really difficult to get that type of design right, basically, because there's so many levers that you need to pull and turn. So many different places you could be adjusting. Start with some some havoc on the ladder. We'll go. We'll go from there. I didn't want to play Dazzler anyways. I'd prefer if they overbuffed and underused our tip. I think... <coughs> Thanos is not a deck I would want them to buff to try and balance. I think that would be a, a big mistake. A huge Assemble. amount of power creep. Assemble.
Alright, so I thought we were playing against an X-Men deck. We're just playing against a little clutch level opponent. So we will snap them if they want to stay. Time to bully a bit. do this and then we have one spot remaining both the bishops end up at four havoc ends up at nine dazzlers end up real big This mission always feels a little personal. Hard win matches. You're gonna struggle with this one, but it's like, yeah, thanks, Marvel Sap. Arabaduro, thank you for the almost six years. I appreciate the 71 months. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning. Wave zero, thank you for the three quarters of a year. against that I want to wait to barrage that way we could hopefully try and grab their blade in a perfect world their ebony blade I should say This is useful. It's kind of a free roll. Came a look at substitute for Mirage in this deck. It's fine. Mirage is definitely the better card, but. I think I need more than three here, probably. There's also a question of maybe I don't goose. There's a Sarah deck typically. So I think I think I'm gonna do this for the sake of maxing my bishop and maxing the dazzler.
This gives me eight, 12, eight, 12, 17, 19, 21. This is just probably not enough. Their Jubilee would have to hit something. They're probably like one in three at most to win this, huh? Over here, I'm gaining one, two, three, four, plus seven. Gaining 11 up to 20. Not get infant otter gigante here. Oh, I love I love when one bit of RNG immediately rolls into another bit of RNG. It's my favorite. Thank you, gamers. Imagine snapping on these RNG rolls. Xanthias, thanks for the 53 months. Welcome back. They might be playing Infinite. No, they played, uh, what's it called? On. Uh, they played cards the previous turn, yeah? Maybe they do all their hits for big. I think there's a 0% chance all three of the cards in their hand beat our, beat our left lane there. And, and the other side of that is the more hits in their hand that beat us on the left lane there when they hit the Dracula, it meant the less hits in their deck beat us with the Jubilee. So either, either way, it's a huge variance roll. out. Morning, Kirins. I'm awake this early every morning. I have uh, three children and under. They all, they all wake up pretty early. Does this win the game? I think this wins the game, yeah? Goose is such a good Marvel staff card. Opponent snapped. Snap. They got a deck in from the hub. Yep. Is it worth ice banning them to try and cut them off a of play? Unsure. This is only four. a break this morning. Holy. Does this ever win? We are four, 
six. And then ten, it's only sixteen, yeah. It's twenty two to thirty two. We lose, this loses to Blade and Sif, so we have to go. Escaped. The jacket off the head is such unreal RNG. Tough beat. Classic. Lose to the... One in 200 followed up by the Corvus discarding both Baramasa shards. Yeah, like not only, not only do they hit the one in the one in 200, but they hit the the two in five followed by the one in four. That's a 10% chance to happen. So they hit the they hit the one in 200 followed by the one in 10. This is such a terrible location for us. <laughs> Man, the hits, the hits keep coming and they don't stop coming. I don't drink coffee. Fan of that concentration of uh, that concentration of caffeine. We'll grab us some info about their hands here, at least. I just have to leave. There's just, there's just no chance we're going to be able to play around all their tech cards and they have a free Sarah on the first turn. time out for an hour or two Papa Taki it's just like it's just like a deeply shitty thing you look tired or you sound sick are two of the shittiest things you can say to a person it's just a zero upside proposition telling someone they sound tired has one of two possible outcomes one either they are tired and they know they sound tired so you're needling them or two, they feel fine, but you're telling them they sound shitty, so now they feel shitty because you told them they sound shitty. It's like it's exactly the same as asking someone if they if they feel if they feel sick. Oh my god, what what on God's green earth is this fucking RNG this morning? Holy gamers. Hopefully we could draw a storm to sort that out, but good lord. I'm gonna stay. We're gonna draw a storm. This is the game where our variance turns around. Oh, Let's go. Yes, they're just snap points, chat. Light them up. And for for reference, chat, I personally am incredibly careful and cognizant of making good and healthy decisions with my job. Yes, I was live for 14 hours yesterday and worked a really long day, but I drank plenty of water, I ate plenty of meals, and I slept for a little bit over seven hours last night. 
The only reason you're saying to me, you sound tired, is because you know I worked a long day knowing nothing about how responsible I was outside of it. I don't, I don't do the deeply unhealthy things like 24 hour streams anymore, in large part because I'm aware they're deeply unhealthy, so I don't attempt them. Yang Chi is the cheapest card in their hand at the moment. Is noteworthy. Asking someone if they're tired enables them to open up to you if something is bothering them. But that's not even remotely true. It's presenting the question of, hey, is something wrong? Do you need to talk? Oui. In a hostile, hey, hostily framed hand. manner. So no, that's a that's a shit take. If your goal if your goal is to have someone open up to you, you shouldn't do it in a way that implies, hey, you sound like shit. Zero, zero percent, that's a reasonable, good way to approach it. We do this, so the next turn I have this, this, and this. I suppose there could be merit to playing the night crawler instead of the kitty, so that way if I draw two, I have a lot of twos to draw, I get the extra point I might get. Yeah, like that, like silence. Hey Jeff, how are you feeling today? What a, what a great and reasonable way to ask someone how they're feeling if you're looking to have someone who you think would open up to you open up to you. That's that's how you do it, givers. Basic social interactions for gamers 101. Oh, I should have put the kitty here. That's fine. Havoc's gonna win it anyways, but it was completely free to put kitty here and block the Annihilus. Hundred percent free for me to to block the annihilus there. I was gonna play hard for the left, I think. I don't expect them to be able to get more points in the middle. Uh we could lose to a... Uh... We could lose to a hazmat. Cage hazmat. If they go cage hazmat, they'll have. If they go cage hazmat here, they'll have uh, 12 over here, which would mean I need to put 13 here to tie them and then win the breaker. Yeah, I'm gonna play around cage hazmat. Victory. What turn do you want to play Havoc? Usually you play Havoc on turn five or six in this deck, and occasionally you'll play him on turn four. So there's definitely matchups where Storm on three into Havoc on four is correct, but typically speaking, I'd say his most commonly played turn is turn five. We're assuming Cage has bet because of Debris. Yeah, Debris and Annihilus both make it more likely. I also, I also don't think playing around Cage Hazmat costs me a lot. Like the diff the cost of playing around Cage Hazmat is like putting one more point over here versus putting just 12. So it's a pretty low opportunity cost. All right, gamers, it's about that time. Let's take our first ad break of the morning. We'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Our luck's turning around. We're gonna play some more uh, X-Men Havoc when we get back. OTA, OTA soon, TM. The bot dead again this morning? The bot might be dead again this morning.
I will I will say and this is this is something nobody in chat noticed, but we'll point it out. Well maybe maybe some of you noticed, but nobody nobody said anything. I am a little bit darker this morning. The one the one negative from the long day yesterday is my eyes were feeling a little bit of burn from having the ring light on for 14 hours. So Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna run run a little bit dark and ring lightless this morning. Was there more work after the 14 hour shooting to go? But I mean I didn't go to bed. I watched uh, watched an episode of The Blacklist with Christy, and then did my Genshin and Honkai dailies, and then I went to bed. How many hours will the OTA? The OTAs usually don't go live for like another five or six hours. It's gonna be a little bit. Fifty tokens away from Nico. So close. So close. She's so good. Easily, easily my favorite step card. So the glasses I'm wearing are blue light glasses. They're actually not prescription, but those still they still don't prevent you from. I burn out from bright lights after a while. This is this this is my extra light. It's a little bit little bit better, but not a huge difference. We're gonna leave it leave it go. How many hours of sleep do you generally get a night? You seem positive, productive, and efficient during the day. Between six and six and nine. Usually, usually somewhere in the middle. I was I was in my bed for seven and a half hours last night. Probably slept for somewhere between six and a half and seven. My to my toddler is currently in a phase where she frequently ends up in in a parent's bed and she is uh she she kicks and tosses after she gets there so she periodically wakes me up Verdes, thank you for the 10 months welcome back our one and a half year old has been sick so we've been sick as well. If they're if they're in daycare, get ready for that to be the next uh, three years of your life. The little petri dishes. Oh my God. They drew our bass, and then we miraged our bass back. That's so lovely. Twelve-year-old just had chicken pox for the second time in two years. That's wild. That's what I haven't heard of in a long time. I was. I was one of the blessed recipients of one of the first early rounds of the chicken pox vaccine. Never had had that one. God bless modern medicine. Sounds truly awful. If I do it like this, Kitty comes back to my hand, and then if I draw a bishop, I can't play it, but if I draw Armor Mysterio or Best, I can. Sorry, Armor Mysterio. Only three cards in my deck. The tracker doesn't keep track of cable. Wind aid my
They have five cards in their hand. One, two, three, four, five. They have five spaces on their board. So this is getting to at least 18. I'm going to at least 19. It's gonna come down to on if they top deck their fucking Mockingbird. They always top deck their Mockingbird against me, chat. This Dazzler is worth eight over here up to 16. The only, the only kind of decision I have to make, Dazzler's definitely going here, is do I put Nightcrawler here or do I put Kitty Pride here? I already have the AVX bonus, yeah? I'll have for one. Whatever it is, sir. Damn. Uh, we were dead regardless, yep. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the imbalance patch with the uh, X-Men bonuses leaves with the... Uh, with the, what's it called? The OTA update later today. So I got a few hours on it. Sorry, thoughts on Cable. I think Cable is probably the second best two energy card generator after Mirage right now. But I think when Valentina releases next month, that tier list is going to shift. I think Valentina will be one and Mirage will be two. But I also think like the margins through which they're one and two are like pretty small. They're kind of, they're kind of close. Hey, dude. If you have a Raj, I should hold off and get Valentina. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That would be my loose take. It's certainly better for the Thanos deck with my Stone on one than us. What's Valentina do? You should be sure to check out my leaked cards review video on the Hoaglandia Snap channel. Bot's dead. I gotta ping the bot main here. Okay. That bodes well for our heroes, this local man about to be type stoned. Snap. Or sorry, I mean space stoned, whatever it's called. Victory. What kills the bot? Does it run on a server somewhere? Yeah, I mean the main teeter. The main theater must be having uh, some kind of server side issues with it. Quinjet into Valentina into six drop on three. That sounds gross. card we'll use it victory they're unlikely to have two ones here
Three rage bots. Play five cost cards, play six cost cards. I suppose we'll have to change decks at some point to get those done. Not about to, not about to accomplish that with this pile. Oh, credits from season fast caches. Feels so good. Feels so good, gamers. Draw. Might stab them. I think giving up one point on here to take two points off of this is a worthwhile exchange. Oh, snap. The DC flipping up is really good for Mysterio. I guess we could be getting stormed. Nebulax are often storm decks. Evo stuff. Wind I might be wrong to play Storm because they're probably a. Oh, Dracula. Oh, interesting. So they're the they're the Dracula dump deck then. we do this to keep them from destroying here In order to get a six power thing here, I have to give up a five power thing here. Probably supposed to leave here. Win left and right. A close, close game. <sighs> Victory. That that X Men bonus chat. Plus one, two, three over here. Yeah, this deck. This deck. This deck's really reasonable at the moment. When the X Men bonus goes away later today, it's gonna be really not. It's so sad something else to farm Mirage Boosters. 
Assuming no deck submissions today after yesterday. So, I don't generically open deck submission on OTA days because I don't want to have deck submissions in the queue when the OTA goes live. Is a, is a fun one. This this whole imbalance event makes me really excited for the future of that mechanic and system. I had low expectations after the the love couples event, but this one definitely happily blew me away. I think it's Punisher for I think uh, a potential permanent T bonus is an interesting concept, yeah. Everybody is getting piled to the left. I kind of want to play Havoc out. It's close though. Hopefully we tag their Modoc here if they have one. So the thing about cards like the Guardians of the Galaxy is you gotta remember they're series one and two cards. So, man, if they have Modoc and Apocalypse, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. I'm staying though. It means I would have had to have drawn Modoc this turn or Apocalypse. But they said Corvus, Swarm, and who's the other one? With Apocalypse. Oh my God. I am reborn. You know, I know, I know there's a lot of talk about Thanos, and rightfully so, chat. But this deck is also deeply fucked up. It's easy. It's easy to forget about the deck that's only number two right now. But it's... It's such good numbers. And, and un, unlike the discard deck, this deck is heavily resilient to tech cards. Dracula... Proxima, even Collector and Mobius to a degree are frequently cards you can't tag with things like Shadow King or Shang-Chi. Yeah, Red Red Guardian will be a welcome addition to being able to interface with those cards consistently. Destroy. Destroy went big. Yeah, they also have a bunch of like three fives and four sevens. Like they have a lot they have a lot of mid-sized numbers resilient to the interactive cards you can be playing. Their deck, the deck is also resilient to stuff like Storm and Goose and others and Press Rex because they get their stats down to relief.
They have one class vision now too. Yeah, honestly, that's basically true. I was, I was shocked. Tr truly entirely, I was shocked that they buffed, that they buffed me. And they even, they even acknowledged when they buffed him that like this was a big upgrade for the bug, a card that was like already playable. Unlucky. Uh, the bot's not still dead, it's dead again. The maintainer came and fixed it yesterday, but it's, it's broken again since. Been a, it's been a morning for RNG chat. Escape. If you're just joining us, you missed the game earlier where we lost to the discard deck getting a second copy of Dakin off of the hub and then us goosing them out of being able to Modoc and then their Corvus hitting double Miramasa shard. Just like some actual one in a thousand quality RNG tonight so far today. I mean, the meek buff was definitely locked in long in advance. It's an accurate statement. Uh, so I'm actually going to wait to Iceman in this matchup because ideally I want to Iceman on turn four just before they can Modoc. So I want them to be able to play out their other non Modoc cards first, ideally. Target locked. Colleen Wing. Nice. Good pixel dodging. But I'm Creole. Thank you for the brand new Prime support. Good morning, good morning. Playing Agatha chat. Do we snap them on principle? Let's wait and see if they ramp this turn. Wind, aid my hand. The extra turn that's definitely better for them than us.
dickhead. <laughs> I hate people. Oh, fucking gamers. This is certainly means we're dead. to hella right, yeah? I think there's any way to beat that. We're playing one, two, three, four cards. Okay, we'll coin flip. The way the morning's been going, the hella goes right every time. Alright, sometimes lucky. Or the Agatha, sorry. I said hella, I meant Agatha. So, Agatha always plays herself on the last turn. For people wondering, by the way, the reason why how I knew my opponent was playing Agatha in turn one is, look, there were no extra cards drawn on either side this game. My opponent's deck has one less card. One less card in their deck than me. In my opinion, Agatha Harkness and Thanos should both be cards that play an animation for your opponent at the start of the game because you can know that your opponent is playing these cards via derived information by clicking on this panel at the start and looking at deck size for Thanos and looking at hand size and deck size for Agatha. So you shouldn't, it shouldn't be up to the player to be like, oh, I have to figure this out. To like, it basically makes it, it, it would help players that are newer to the game learn that you could know that information that if you do it, right? All right, gamers. It's about that time. We're going to play something else when we get back. I have submissions to play five and six cost cards. This deck's been only, only okay this morning, even if I do love our Mysterio, so let's take, uh, let's take a two-minute break, and I'm going to run to the bathroom. Beer me. McGavin. So many pixel dead pulls today. Like five and six cross car. You only tell you a she hulk. Some of this. This is Mockingbird and Blue Marvel is fives in it too. This ago. You know. Hey Mockingbird Boosters chance, so you can eventually get her to uh a gold background to match your friends.
Central's not a stellar location for us. How do deck submissions work? You get a full deck list or a request for you to build a specific deck around certain cards or both. Yeah, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Some people, some people send in specific decks. Some people send in a couple of cards. Single cards, small group of cards, couple of groups of cards. Sometimes people send in like half a deck list or like you fill in the details. In general, I honestly tend to prefer the ones where people let me fill in the details, because on average, I'll uh, fill in better details than what average Twitch Shedder will. Alright, Grand Central, not Squirrel Girl, please. Thank you. Second blue marbles, the nuts. Squirrel girl, the low roll. Oh, you know, I probably should have played this right. So that way uh, they were more likely to have priority because of Shang-Chi. Chance this wins the game. Definitely limping. They let me limp. Uh, second squirrel is more points. It's uh, less points over here. The right's gonna get decided by whether or not we get the Monster Metropolis bonus. Fucking morning for RNG. <laughs> Man, just awful beat after absolutely awful beat this morning. Holy. How many locations are there? What's the rarity on that one? For fuck's sake. Reality Stone is so much better than it has any right to be. You should just make all the stones cost two and let Quinjet work with them again. Un unironically, that's one of the better suggestions I've heard. Like, no, no, no cap. I'm on board. Let's do it.
What is this discard hand? They're, the, the Nebula into Corvus bid Proxima into Modok. My last two cards are Swarm Apocalypse. Holy. Do you think they forgot there was another turn? That's why they played their swarms? That's that's totally what just happened, yeah? They had they had six energy from Corvus, and they thought the game was over. <laughs> that is one thousand percent what just happened. Yep, been there. Been there, done that. Beep, beep, beep. Actually, Adam, thank you for the baker's dozen. Appreciate that. Welcome back. about that retreat in the last game is that it doesn't count um, as having played a six drop, which is sad. Didn't count for my mission. Squirrels here. I get to go Sunspot and Space Stone. And then this is another card that makes Mockingbird cheaper. And then we pass with six energy on turn five from the extra with Hope Summers. And then on turn six, we could go zero energy She Hulk, five energy Marvel, one energy Mockingbird. Thanks, Wanda. Appreciate you. Every time I step on two, because I got a good early draw or whatever, the third location kills me. So that is what we like to call cognitive bias, where you are choosing to only remember the games where you increase the stakes and then a bad outcome happened. One of the key differences between a good Marvel stat player and a mediocre one is that a good Marvel stat player will understand they should continue raising the stakes when they're at a favorable position on two, even though it could end up poorly for them. One of the number one thing people do wrong in Snap is only raise the stakes when it's a sure thing. If you are not 
retreating games where you snapped with some frequency, you're either not snapping enough, not retreating enough, or both. Raising, raising the stakes is not about having a sure thing. Raising the stakes is about being in a statistically favorable position and wanting to get your opponent to wager more while you're ahead. I've talked a lot about my, uh, my Magic the Gathering background and my math degrees and stuff too. Over the last couple days, I've been introducing myself as deep people have coming in for drops. But something else that's true about my background in gaming is that uh, one of the ways I paid for myself to exist during undergrad and grad school was uh, farming cash poker tables. Which, having that betting and anything else experience is very valuable in a game like Snap. Yep, Limbo is yet another one of the giant laundry list of locations that Thanos has an incredible advantage into because of Reality Stone. Because the existence of Limbo here means that my opponent both simultaneously has the option to pull Limbo, but also let the game play out if it's profitable for them to let it play out. That being said, my hand's pretty good here. I might I might snap that. We'll see what this is. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press the button here. Yeah, Schro Schrodinger's rug pulls are a great way to put it. So I'm gonna pass here with six energy. And we need to not get Mobius to this turn. And then we'll go She-Hulk, She-Hulk, Blue Marvel. And then we'll be in a good spot even if they end the game next turn. They do have to miss a draw here, it's a little sad though. And hey, look, chat. It's that it's that other thing that makes Thanos incredibly favored. Every other deck that could potentially have numbers to keep up with them just gets absolutely fucking shit on by Mobius existing. It's an experience. And now we eat shit to reality stone. Oh, I should have played this rogue in case I draw Mockingbird. In this game? Probably not. Uh, roguing blob is worth... Roguing blob is worth another 13, 14, 15, 17. But I could also hit the soul stone. Is the thing. Opponent snapped.
Well, we knew we were destined to get fucked by reality, today. I also messed up here. I wasn't thinking about Sunspot. Even if I would have hit the right one, we would have lost this. Except if I would have put Ant-Man here instead of Dazzler, we would have tied here. And then if we hit here, we would have won. I did get to play a six cross card at the cost of eight cubes. Yeah, so as someone who was a big advocate for Mobius coming back to his text box, I regret advocating for that. He is a... A borderline Shang-Chi level thief of joy. That is definitely responsible for Thanos' dominance in a large way. There, there would be there would be a lot of decks that would be competitive into Thanos, I think, if they didn't get to Mobius to a ton. You're saying this is all your fault. I think it's definitely at least a little bit my fault. I don't know if it's all my fault, but at least a little bit is my fault. For people that uh, don't understand how Rogue interfaces with Blob, if you Rogue Blob, you get the entire text of the card. Meaning that, yes, if I rogued Blob in that instance, I would get to, I would get to take the, uh, I would get to eat my deck with her. So she would have eaten Mockingbird, Mysterio, and Squirrel Girl getting, uh, plus 16. So I'm winning White Hot Room while having a copy of... Sunspot, and then I get to rogue their Morbius, so. We're in a good spot. Part of me wants to soak eight here. I can play all of these next turn. But if I draw, if I draw not She-Hulk, I'm gonna wish I played the Rogue. Tell, letting them know that I'm getting rid of their Morbius is uh makes them less likely to stay though. My favorite off meta deck. Though. I recommend you check out my best decks video on uh, the YouTube side. Apocalypse. This is one of the decks that it, but I'll always have the things I'm enjoying. Rewarded. Their apocalypse is 12. This is going to get me plus 4 on here up to 21. It's going to get me plus 2 on here up to 23. 16 here gives them 25. Is plus 2. Is plus 6 enough over here? Might not be. I need to do this, actually. This gets me... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. At least we're not full soaking since we bought the She-Hulk. Wait, since we tapped like the She-Hulk.
Is Blarvel worth it here? Yeah, I want to beat them playing like uh, a bigger thing over here. That's not Apocalypse. Oh, you know what? When I counted how big I was going to be in the center, I forgot the plus four from Blarvel. I counted Sunspot Soaking and I counted four from the Dazzler filling, but I didn't count four from the Marvel I'm going. That's where the extra points came from. But I didn't, I didn't need to play the She-Hulk on the left. I got two of the three bonuses. I missed the third. Yes, what Gap said. Helicarriers are other not big not apocalypse cards. We need to beat that on the right. Breaking news. Do I snap on that draw? Proxima is my play. I think so. But I could probably pump the middle and play for left and right. That harder. Sunspot. Is Moon Girl more stats than passing? I don't actually know. I didn't count. Maybe you're right. They have two swarms and a 12 power apocalypse. Power Apocalypse puts them to plus 16 over here up to 24. So that means this here beats that. I don't think they put swarms here. Yeah, this beats this, right? Dodge Blade and Lady Sif. Victory. It's 
times lucky. I think the gamer in chat that said was playing Moon Girl more points. I think you are correct. But it also meant that we couldn't put 25 on the right, but I didn't stop and count either of those things that I should have. way to tell my hand is cracked chat is Adelaide's in play. What, a, what an incredible hand. Yes, the X-Men versus Avenger bonus leaves when the OTA happens today. Do I have to retreat here? Patriot gives them four more here up to 14 and four more here up to 18. Assume this lives here. I'm plus four here with the real Mysterio at 10. I'm plus four to 14. My Dazzler gets plus six. This Mockingbird lives center. That's 10 up to 14. The Squirrel is two. The Sunspot is four. I think we win if we don't die to Danger Room. A uh, Mockingbird is better than She-Hulk Middle because this costs three less energy, which soaks three on here. It was, it was in fact just a safety room this morning. Safety dance. Safety dance. Do do do. Do do do. Would it Mockingbird right get the win without much risk? No, they're an Eliath deck. How's this deck been for you? It's okay. You lose to Thanos when they draw uh, Mobius and they play it. Mobius turn five is the thing this deck doesn't want to see. 
early early Mobius isn't too bad for you because you can you can rogue it but like when you pass on five plenty to She-Hulk on six and they slam Mobius that turn it's uh it's brutal oh I should have played this it's a mistake Yeah, it might have been right to play the Dazzler here because they're probably uh, an Annie deck. Hey right, gamers, looks like it's time for an ad break. I need to go fill my water bottle. I'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna play one more round with this deck when we get back, and then we'll probably change things up. Beer beat. If you're watching on the YouTube side, don't forget to tap the like button and make sure you pop on over to Twitch to get some drops, free rewards for staff this week. Beer beam. Gamer, I think it's cardio time. Sap for a spell. We stood for a spell. Time to pedal for a spell. Moon Girl would have let us play two Mockingbirds and one She-Hulk. Not on turn five. We had seven energy. The Mockingbirds cost me three. Oh, I could have I could have Moon Girled in the center. Yeah, but then I'm locked to a very small amount of points in the center, and I also can't win the right because they give us negative 13 there. I don't. I don't think that line works. It cost one because Andy would send us stuff. Sure. Uh, I lose to Galactus on the right then still though. Well, it's not a, not a tenable 
for the shit to stay in for. Nico in the cloak. Bounce move, probably. Playing a move deck into the Fisk Tower feature is uh, a bold position. The anti deck are Galactus Clutter. They are typically, yeah. Oh, you know what? Are they Phoenix Force? Which is also not great in the Fist Tower. It's probably a little bit better than stock move. Fad, thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back, I appreciate it. It's the best bounce deck at the moment. I actually don't know the answer to that question. I'm not sure that bounce is very good. Could they be Galactus? No, I think Galactus is super unlikely here. This is likely a Phoenix Force deck with, a, with an awkward draw. Yeah, I'm passing in case we hit the one in seven for She-Hulk, but also just like putting points on Sunspot is fine here. And this is perfect. Them locking themselves into 17 over here means that my Blarvo lets me tie. So we're just playing for a breaker, which should be fine for us here. We're gonna gain four in the middle and we'll go to a bunch here. We have priorities, so don't have to worry about a life. Well, maybe we'll play a little bit of bounce after we finish finish this deck. Had a couple of people ask me about bounce stuff. Had a little bit of bass bounce recently. That felt okay. Maybe we'll try some more of that. Some Mysterio Elsa bounce action with Kitty Prime. Any suggestions for finishing the Infinite Climb? All my decks in my best decks video from Friday are still. What's what, Andrew? Honestly, though, at this point, I'd take a deep breath and wait for the OTA. Dark side is a serial Galactus, a uh, serial Thanos gamer. Ooh, they're not today. Interesting. Turn over a new leaf. We'll let them have their fun, but this game is over. I have Kitty into Shuri's Lab on one.
can't fathom taking a turn off of playing Kitty into Shuri's lab. Number, yeah. Escape. If anything, we maybe had a small chance because they decided to play this on turn two for some silly reason, but letting that certainly means we're done. I just can't imagine not stamping on one when you have Kitty Pride to Shuri's lab. Here, lovely. Victory. See, chat. I really, I really can't emphasize enough the power that this twenty-seven split Mysterio has. We put it, we put it onto the board. And we instantly farmed a cube from our opponent. They just never, never stood a chance against how glorious it is. Just built, a built, truly built different specimen. Get greedy, get punished, bud. Boop. Also be a world where I do this. Yeah, they, they have a second Patriot check. We have a second Rogue. Our Rogue has the Patriot bonus. So it's gonna get to make our squirrels bigger.
They have a free bird. They don't. They played Mockingbird on one before Cloning Batch flipped up. But they play Patriot here. It's 14, 15, 16. If I play these two here, this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... Oh, it's close. Oh, they're going to have another Patriot, too, still. The bird is free because of four rocks plus the extra Patriot. Chat, they don't have a second fucking Mockingbird. They played it on turn one before there was a Cloning Vats. Come on, chat. Stop it. Is this a retreat? So this beats their Patriot middle. I guess it loses to Surfer, yeah? You missed the starting match. I mean, they, they literally couldn't have had it any other way. I guess they could have played it on two, but then they would have done nothing on one. Brood plus Patriot gets us two, does it? Yep. Yeah, it's too, too many cards to beat us. The Strange Academy messed us up. I need more stats on the right. Maybe, maybe I should have copied my squirrel girl on what's it called? Squirrel girl. So I had another one to make more squirrels. That's such a mediocre card to be playing right now. There's so many Mobiuses running around. I've shaved him from a lot of my piles. not capable of getting into here. I guess we have Squirrel Girl and Blue Marble. Their deck's probably not capable of getting into here either. So Squirrel Girl might be aces. Well, if they're Annihilus, uh, Sentry into Annihilus can win the right for them here. I don't think I can snap yet. I want to see what their turn four play is. They could be on Jeff. I think Jeff and Elsa are less likely given that we've seen Korg. Sentry and Annie are probably less likely given that we've seen Korg as well.
They're gonna move something off to the right. Yikes. We don't have Sunspot. Their hawk has 14 power. So I'm just coin flipping that. Eliath shouldn't be in the bounce deck's output range, so it's not a card I'm concerned with. This here is 9, 12. Is that 5, 9, 13, 16 here. That needs to be slightly more. This is 6, 16, 19. I guess this technically beats just Darkhawk here. That right? I think I did. Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. Yeah, we beat we beat just Dark Hawk in both spots here with this line. I would have lost to Dark Hawk plus Victory. one two though. That was that was likely a stay on their part because we were limping. I'm not sure either of us are hanging out if there's higher stakes there. I might stay and flip. I think we're at worst, at worst for a flip. Need a squirrel girl or a Mysterio here for Mockingbird, then we're looking good. We do Barjeed slide before the magic dies. Uh, maybe? The squirrel girl with the limbo though, I really want Moon Girl too. Greed. Greed. Uh, I'm gonna stay with the squirrel girl draw. Let's see where this takes us. Jeff could mean a few different things on their side. Bramastein, thank you for the brand new primer. Appreciate it.
They probably can't compete on the right because Shang Chi doesn't get them anywhere there. Yeah, so I'm looking at this board and I'm actually thinking maybe I'm supposed to play Blue Marvel to keep Sunspot out of Shang range, yeah? And that gives me a three energy She-Hulk for next turn, plus Dazzler, and then if we peel an Ant-Man, it's the best possible. This is 30, 36, 40. Yeah, the Mockingbird Shang a ball, but I'm still at 13 over here. So if they Shang me, they need Shang plus move Jeff plus move Jeff plus Shang. They still need five more. I think we're good, yeah? I'm gonna gain two here, which puts me up to 13. They would have to put uh, 13, they would have to put seven here while also putting five here. Cannonball's not a real card. I spent four keys on a fake card, yes. If you're not, listen, if you can afford to spend four keys on Cannonball, you can definitely afford to subscribe to this Twitch stream because spending four keys on Cannonball means you are terrible with your money and being able to chat more frequently here will definitely be a quality of life improvement for you. Send, send some of that money you have that you're terrible with my way. It's only, it's only a fiver every month. interesting result of this new thing. When Lamentis happens, I can go in here and check and see what got destroyed in their deck. So their hand has like Blob, Eliath, no, they're the Spectrum build. And they're down one, two, three, four, five. So they have, they have like Space Stone. We're, de we're definitely ahead, I'm stepping. I was like trying to sit here. You could sit here and puzzle out what what the remaining cards in their hand are by looking at it if you're familiar with the metagame. I have five keys and I'm saving them for War Machine. Smart gamer. Can, can, Cannonball might literally be the single worst card releasing into Marvel Snap in a three month period. So if you're not an absolute giga whale, meaning you're terrible with your money and vomiting lots of it into Marvel Snap, you should probably be skipping him. I think, I think Corvus through the end of May, Cannonball's the worst card to release. 
Like, un 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 unironically. I think he's probably the worst release between Corvus and the end of May. And it might even go longer than that, because we don't know what the cards after May are coming out yet are. I have 20 keys and all the cards and still almost skipped Cannonball. <laughs> Besides the Battle Pass card, I actually think... Uh, no, no cap, I think Baron Zemo at 3 energy is probably fine. I'm trying to decide if I want a Mockingbird or Armor. I think I want a Mockingbird. I am accepting I am terrible with money. Here's some for the betterment of Hoaglandia. Thanks for the biddies, Dubbin. Appreciate it. Hey, Bozemium. Thank you for the brand new Prime support. There's a ton of people you could send that to. Thanks for sending it this way this month and keeping me around. All right, where's a Moon Girl so I can double this Orca? This is uh, 18, 22, 25. I'm 21 over here. Minions to me. Man, you needed either of these to land here, huh? Oh, they had this over here still. Never mind, we're just in. Alright, gamers. I think we're going to change things up again. We're going to take a 120-second ad break, and on the flip side of it, we're going to do something else when we get back. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. I shouldn't have spent seven keys in the cannonball variant. I actually think, and art is deeply subjective, but these weird perspective, giant hands in the foreground panned art variants, they are, they're oof. Really, really not a fan. I'm sure, I'm sure some people are super into hands. And more power to you, but I am just not a. None of, none of these pieces of art are ones I'm going to split ever. Brilliant. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. play. Should we try bouncing a little bit? I had a bounce bounce stick in here somewhere. I do need, I do need hit monkey boosters. There hasn't been that much living tribunal. Maybe I cut snow guard. One drop. Well, she's good with collector. It's as close to being an X Men deck, is it? One, two, three, that's it. No, Thanos doesn't play magic.
All right, I get rid of Hitmonkey. Oh, because it's a fake gold. Well, I mean, I need Hitmonkey boosters, chat, so we can get, we can work towards the real gold. It's more reason to play it, not less. If you cut Snowguard, your first two edges will be against Tribunal, mood. I was gonna, I was gonna run it how it is. Well, I'll spew a couple of cubes then and make adjustments. Your thoughts on Iron Man of the Bounce deck? I think Iron Man of the Bounce deck is bad. I think if you think you need a way to challenge lanes going really tall like that, you should probably just be playing something else. Part of me really wants to 2 x -er. Maybe not too much. We'll see. I do this, and then next turn we go hit monkey plus three one drops. Yeah. play four cards so I'm going up to I'm going up to a little bit over here regardless 14 I'm plus one on them the question is do I want to put hit monkey here or here we're, we're definitely doing this and then it's a matter of am I putting Nico here and hit monkey here or am I putting Nico here and hit monkey here I think this spreads my power the best. I think they have Magneto. Uh, Magneto doesn't do anything here, right? I'm winning all three. Minions to me.
Er, would it regardless of where Dracula ended up at here? Victory. You can see here exactly. Pick your guards up, put them back down, move all around. Most difficult thing here, Chad, is remembering to keep pedaling while I go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Do 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 do. If I had to pick one Marvel staff card is my favorite, what would it be? This one right here. He's the best around. No one's ever gonna bring her down. Well, that changes things. I was originally going to hit monkey these falcon these back. But this lets me in theory add eight, nine over here, which I think just makes it the play. I lose to them dropping Loki here, though. So that is the problem. Yes, one of those kitties is mine. So the kitty is six. So we get up to eight, which is 14 here. Their Mockingbird currently costs two, so they can't play that here. It's just this, yeah. I guess, I guess I'm supposed to play for here actually because this path could die to Shang. If they like Shang Mockingbird here, they get me. So I should put my more stats to beat Mockingbird here where I'm not getting Shanged. Yeah, they're leaving. This is, this is the setup. 
Because hit monkey is shake a ball. Take copy mode on Nico. Bye, Ben. We bye, Ben. with the locations, I suppose. Hit monkey boosters. Oh, it doesn't show me the hit monkey I'm actually splitting because of the custom cards, the other one. I'm splitting a different variant than I'm playing the custom card on. I'm playing the custom card in this one because it's closest to fool's gold I have. draw with Nico, I think, unfortunately. The OTAs actually aren't normally around 10-ish. Patches typically happen around 10-ish. Generally, generally speaking, OTAs happen around, um, generally, generally speaking, OTAs go live around, uh, Oh, what's the word I'm searching? I'm struggling to say. OTAs go live around like one to two, around the reset time. It would be nice if those were more consistent, but that's just the reality. They don't strictly coincide with the rollover, but that's just like how it happens to work out a lot. They discarded Hella here, by the way. I actually didn't realize what they discarded until we just bounced over, but I was mostly snapping because Hitmonkey and Kitty here is absurd. Speaking of absurd gamers, holy. Holy. Um. I want to bounce Nico in case she rolls the 2x mode. I think I'm going to be big enough here that I'm going to play the hood out for the demon. Yeah, 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 final answer. Hey, Bucky about to become a silverback, yep. Hopefully roll a 2x mode on Nico and then she goes absurd too. That's a piece of candy. It's an extra plus here. 
Do I even want to compete on the left? I think I just don't, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this goes to 13, 16, 27, 33 over here. And then in the center, I'm just like some ungodly number. Yeah. What's that? What's the ungodly number in the center? So the collector gets two bigger from this, which makes him nine. And then Falcon makes him two bigger bouncing these, which is 11. And then Hit Monkey is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, so that's 29. And then this is 33. And then she copies the demo, which gives us another plus one, which is 34. So we're like 30-ish in both of these lanes. Forgot how fun this archetype is. We actually haven't drawn Elsa yet in like five games, so I don't know if she's good or not here, but the core of this deck is definitely solid. This means I'm not going to be able to collect her until later, but that's fine. I also messed up. I should have played this somewhere else. Because my bishop's going to end up here, and then I can't beast them efficiently. Mistakes were made. Big baby, big rank! 20-2-0. Okay, are you okay? Astrid, good game to you. Thanks for the gifted sub, it's very generous. It's a fantastic draw. Let's we go collector into Falcon next turn. Do I do this now? And then next turn I go Collector Falcon. Snap. I will need to draw Snow Guard, Kitty, or Bast on the right to not get sentried. Okay, but they didn't sentry this turn, so that's great. This might be wrong, but I also just kind of want to get value out of my Elsa. Are they also bouncing? I think they're also bouncing, Chet. Obviously a little bit different than us. No, maybe not. They're basting. Is this a mirror? I might be playing a mirror. Ah, oh, this is such a good turn. Is Havoc worth 3,000 collector token? Absolutely not. Not a snowball's chance at help. So resounding no. Super fun. My favorite card that I would never recommend anybody ever spend any amount of resources on.
I think I just play hard for the left and the right here, yeah? Like this, this adds six over here up to 20. And my monkey is plus six, which is nine. I'm adding four, which is 19. Victory. Yeah, I think, I think we're good. So to, to count my numbers here, um, this is nine and this is 10, which is 19. And then I have another 16. So I'm going to end up at 35 here, and I'm going to end up at 20 over here. Elsa, Elsa was pretty good that game, yeah? My Elsa ended up giving me one buff, two buff, three buff, four buff. She was a 311. That seems, that seems fine. I think, I think getting three to four triggers out of her consistently in a game is like the number you're looking for for her to be worthwhile. I don't know how often we're going to get to four, but it felt good to get it there. Uh, people talking about Nico versus Asteroid. I'm pretty sure Asteroid M's move happens and then, or sorry, that Nico's move happens and then Asteroid M happens. So I'm pretty sure you cannot use Nico to get three drops out of Asteroid M. You'd have to fill, you have to fill Asteroid M. We did finally get our gold Mysterio. He's glorious. What draws do I have that punish me for waiting to best? Exactly, Collector. And Hood, Kitty Pride, Mysterio, Hitmonkey all reward me for waiting to best. So I think I wait to best. The, on the only draw here that I'm annoyed that I didn't best on one is Collector. And I have a bunch of draws that make me happy that I bested on one. Or happy that I waited. Beast is... Fairly neutral, all things considered. Uh, I, th I think bar is bad for me, and I'm gonna get rid of it. I guess, I guess they don't know what we're playing yet. I think, I think bar is definitely better for Thanos than us. Thank you for the two months. I appreciate you re up it. Welcome back. Professor X on the left, but other than that, we're in a really good spot with them hitting Squirrel Girl, I think. Oh my god, they time sewed their Magneto. That's so gross.
I don't want to play four cards because I don't want to get my bishop shang chi So I can, I can play one more card here and not get shang chi so. I'm trying to decide if it's snow guard or kitty. I get snow guard. Stogard gives me the option to get into Tarnax without transforming next turn, reducing some variants. This is plus four here. And then another plus 12, so I'm gaining 16 here. Which could lose to a blob. middle chat they would have been at 13 and we would have been oh i guess we would have been minus two right we would have been minus 14 they would have been 13 to 12 we would have lost to Eliath middle so we would have lost to Eliath middle because the bishop wouldn't have triggered they could have Eliath right as well Ooh, yeah that's true Yeah, I, wasn't, I was so focused on them moving from here, I wasn't focused on them moving from here. It was just a New York card flip chat. I don't think they made a bad play. I think there's just not a lot of skill with New York and Eliath. They're both pretty mid cards. Best? Best? Unlucky. Unlucky.
Hank, we gotta go. It's not gonna bother. We're about to, about to lose the game eventually. The average Patriot deck's gonna benefit from Peak, and I'm not gonna let myself get caught into staying for more. I bet. I think we're by Ben. Ah, uh, maybe I'm playing this Dave Collector plus two. Worth it to grind more conquest tokens once you have enough to buy out the whole shop. Nah, it just turns into boosters. Sconey, thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back. to get the plus one on the Nico, but then I don't get one less on the collector. Opponent snapped. I think I have to leave because they're going to low-key me. Many locations where I am happy to have a copy of Snowguard in my deck. Misfit Hero, thank you for the primer, appreciate it. Opponent snapped. Stand. Just to see how our output range feels into the destroy deck. I assume they're snapping because they have Beacon to Death's Domain, but the Snow Guard should let us slip in there and compete.
Can I stab them back? I guess if they modok me, they have a bunch of swarms. And it's close. I want to step them back. Uh, I'm going to just let this play out naturally so maybe we get a full conclusion. I'm, cur I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see how our, our output range lines up into theirs. If this is Modoc, they finish here with priority, which is good for us too, because it means... Hmm. Nico, Nico spin here means that I can play hard for Death's Domain and play Hitmonkey. Yeah. Where do we think they're least likely to compete? They're least likely to compete here, yeah? And if they discard their whole hand, they go to six. They discard six, seven cards. This goes to nine. If they play Modoc in two, that's 14, 18. I guess this, final answer. Oh, I have priority, fuck. Fuck, I forgot we had priority. I needed the hit monkey in the middle, damn it. Ah, oh, it's gonna cost me how to lose these fucking swarms. I ran out of time. Yep. Wait, they left swarms in their hand? Fuck you, bud. Ah, I win this game every time if I just have more time. It took too long. Damn it. Damn it! That sucks. My my read that they're not gonna play for Abby was correct. I should have I should have gone Nico here, Demon here, Demon Hit Monkey. I think. Hit Monkey left. Maybe maybe Hit Monkey left. It definitely, it definitely wasn't hit monkey here. This was this was bad. The the reason why I pivoted and then I ran out of time and I panicked a little bit is I should have. I counted Modoc plus two swarms was beating Nico here. Yeah, I, I really wish like the I I talk about wanting chess clocks in Marvel Snap a lot because it would punish people who slow roll everything, but they would also really benefit decks like this one where you can play quickly on turns one through five and then have a little bit of extra time on turn six when you actually needed to count out things like it feel it feels so bad from a player perspective to have played quickly the entire match and then need extra time on one turn and then not get it despite my opponent having taken way more time than me total in the entire game it's a really inequitable system that rewards people for griefing and doesn't let people who would bank their time play well. Yeah. All right, gamers, time for some adverts. We'll probably play some more of this one when we get back because it is a neat puzzle deck with lots of choices. I always, I always get to the end of games with this deck and frequently feel like we could have done something else that's better. The discard matchup's neat, even if I threw this one. Getcha. Getcha on the flip side of an ad break. Beer me.
All right, two minutes sprint on the bike, and then we uh, we stand up for a little bit. They could also, without imp implementing a chess clock, I think a really easy fix is turns one to three in Marvel Snap right now are way too long, and turns five and six could both stand to be a scotch longer. And that's not even just for complicated decks like the bounce deck, I just think in general, you could probably shave 10 to 15% of the timer off of the first three turns and give, give 10 to 15% on the last turns. Hey, thanks for egging up already. Bast. I think I'll bast here because this is a clean lane to be beasting back potentially. Lots of enjoyers out there. Yeah, it's become something of a meme among a lot of the top ranked players. Hey, thanks for lurking today, Rex. Hope your work day is uneventful. Snap them? I don't think they have a way to get rid of the Nexus. get absorbing me into breed or an okay spot. It could be that I'm supposed to put Falcon somewhere else to play around absorbing me in. One, two, three. This will be nine. Then it'll be 10, 11. And then this will be plus four. 
I eat shit to Shang-Chi with this line. Is it just this? Then this is nine, and this is nine? here. Ball almost did something, almost. Uh, Snow Guard replacement. Your favorite other one energy card, but you're gonna have worse location variants without Snow Guard. And your limbo matchups get worse. Is the bot back? I think the bot is back, right? Is it live again? deck where Elsa really shines. I'm honestly not convinced Elsa shines in this deck. The jury is firmly out on... If she's good, bad, or otherwise here. Your location gamer. How big was their kitty pride, Chet? Was she three or four? Anybody, anybody remember? The 
the Magneto plus Kitty Pride here. We assume she's four. They go to 21. My hit monkey is eight. This is still 10, 18. This beats Magneto, Kitty, Pride, left, which I think is their play. What an incredibly weak stay. How do we get Xandar? Uh, Nico's uh, location reroll. Hanging out today, choosing to do some of your drops here at Hoglandia. My little Twitch tracker here oh, says that we've had almost a hundred new followers. For anybody that's new here and up there with myself, welcome. I'm Jeff Hoagland. I stream full time here on Twitch. Marvel Snap is my primary game of choice. You'll find me here Monday through Friday during the week from about 9 a.m. Central until about 3 or 4 p.m. Central in the afternoon, typically. I am Something of a relic here on the Twitch platform. I've been streaming for a little over a decade, doing it as a full-time job for over six years now. Before Marvel Snap released at the end of 22, I played a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering and other turn-based and strategy card games like Rune, Terra, and others. Since, since Snap released, though, it's definitely been my game of choice. I think Snap is phenomenal in a way that... Uh, no other new digital card game has been good in a pretty fairly long time. I don't think I want to put a third Hulk into here. I think we just count on two being enough. I don't want to overcommit in case they're a Shang deck. Ever play a turtle? I did play a turtle card game for a very little bit. What if I bear the time theater? So that way we draw another Nico next turn. Is that good? No, I kind of want to draw like a Mysterio or a Beast, yeah? That's probably not good. Don't call yourself a relic. I've been watching since the Moto days and it makes me feel older than necessary. <laughs> I wish I had beast so I could play the hit monkey out. Like I'm just spinning my tires here. Oh, we could hawk to keep them off of playing a six drop early. That's a really good thought. I like that. I like that line. Now we're now we're doing this though, yeah. Did I write articles for magic content? Yeah, for a long time I wrote uh weekly magic articles, gosh, for probably three or four years. And then when content started making full time money, it just kinda no longer became worth the effort to write an article compared to putting that time into streaming.
They have two swarms and a mystery card. Yeah, this is all probably a lower collection level opponent. They're high ranked though. Can I compete over here is the question I have to ask myself. This is one, two, three, four. So this is 12, this is t plus 24 here. So they'd have to full soak to beat me, which they could realistically be doing. I guess it's fine. We lose to Infinite. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm supposed to play around that. If they go Swarm, Swarm, Injure, Infinite. We lose the Infinite in the middle, and I could have put Hitmonkey middle to beat that. Yeah, I, I fucked this up. We lose to Infinite. We deserve it. No, wait, I miscounted. Did I miscount? Oh, I forgot. I forgot the two from Beast to start. Oh, I was adding. I was counting 24 to 25 or 26. Okay, this is fine then. If we're if we're winning here, even through a full soak, this line is good. Victory. Yeah, yeah. And play, playing for here, if we're beating the full soak is good because it plays around something random like a Shang-Chi in their deck and their discard deck is playing some random cards. So Shang-Chi is definitely in the, in the output range. It feels weird to be have, have a ranked number this high this late into the season. There must be fewer people playing this season. Cause we're only we're only at 8400 snap points. Usually we play a lot of conquest on this stream. I feel like I feel like by a couple of weeks that I'm usually closer to rank a thousand with this many points. I guess we I guess we've had mostly good runs on the days we've played though. This morning. And tapped would not take forever to load. Anecdotally, Conquest queue times also long. So I think there was actually a bug the other day that was causing queue times to run longer than they were supposed to. There was some talk about it in the content creator discord. I can't imagine the amount of time these folks spend to get up to rank 10,000. Yeah. yeah we're, we're plus 30 cubes so far this morning with a record of 26 and 15 so far. First couple of decks we've played were kind of stinkers though. I had infinite running into bots almost every fourth match. So the amount of bots you see on your way to infinite is actually predictable. In the 70s, you get a bot every fourth match. In the 80s, you get a bot every fifth match. And in the 90s, you get a bot every seventh match. And you can get bots more frequently than that if there's like queue time issues and there's not people in your MMR to pair you into. But in in general, you get you hit about the number I just listed. That, that's, that's the floor. Did our best, chat. It's really hoping to draw one drop here. Could do. I could do this, and then next turn, like Collector Falcon Demon. Think of it to that. Have you tried any other new games lately? Nah, I'm mostly an old game gamer. My uh, my off-stream games at the moment are uh, Honkai Star Rail, Genshin Impact, and Witcher 3. And always, always intended to do a new game plus in Witcher 3, and I finally sat down the other day and was like, okay, I'm gonna fucking do this. And I am. It's lovely.
So this monkey is plus eight, which gets me to 10. And then the Mysterio is four. So that's 14, and then the hood adds one, so I'm adding 15 here up to 22. So I'm beating the vision moving left, and I'm beating the vision moving right, and I have them covered on a hulk in any singular location. We could lose to a combination of Abomination and other smaller things, but I think this is my line. Oh, I forgot about the Kun line. Are we still okay though? We're good, we're good because of the Elsa bonus. We get, we get them by exact seeds, right? Unless this was Shockered, in which case they're gonna soak one. Get to the teeth, get to the teeth. Victory. We needed, we needed that, uh, I guess, I guess we were good by two technically, because if we tied, if we tied, we were winning the breaker. How does MMR correlate to stat points? I never understood it. No, stat points are not your MMR. So, your MMR is an internal hidden number that's not visible on the front end to players. And as you win more, your MMR will go up. And as you lose, your MMR will go down but it doesn't go up and down proportionally to your snap points. The, the big thing MMR does is having higher MMR means you enter infinite with a higher starting amount of snap points. So like take someone like myself, for instance, I typically enter infinite somewhere between 8,100 and 8,300 snap points. Whereas like there's other people that enter like sub 7,000. Mace Blade, thanks for 19 months. And where where exactly I enter in that 81 to 8300 depends on how much I played the previous season because your MMR does decay a little bit. So if you're not playing enough to bring it up, it'll pull down from where you were before. Yeah, your pre-infinite your pre -infinite games also impact your MMR as well. It's also, it's also important to understand that your... Games up to infinite are also impacted by your MMR. Um, not everybody has the same infinite climb. So like people like myself who have higher MMR, I queue into similar people on my way up to infinite as I will post infinite because there's MMR based matchmaking beforehand. Not, not everybody's experience in the 80s, 90s, 70s has the same player pool that it pulls from. And this is this is something that I really can't emphasize enough. Ladders in games like Marvel Snap are not a measure of how good you are at the game. If you are capable of getting to rank 80, in my opinion, you are capable of getting to infinite. You just haven't spent enough time to get there yet. The latter experience, 70s, 80s, and 90s, tends to be very, very similar in the year and a half that I've been playing. And ladders in these games are designed to encourage players to play the game more, not measure their skill in the game. Ladders, ladders in life's live service games like Marvel Snap are engagement drivers, not skill measures. The buckle up in your title is ominous. Listen, chat, just keep your arms and legs and mind stones inside of the car at all times with your seatbelt firmly fastened and you should be okay through today's OTA update. Moro King, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Is it worth putting? Is it worth putting Mockingbird in this deck? I don't think so. That's why I'm not playing her.
She had a copy of Beast to copy. What time is the OT? If only there was some mythical, magical way for me to communicate to you all at home when the OTA is going to happen. Alas, we'll probably never figure it out. Am I supposed to leave? I'm probably supposed to leave. If I'm staying, I need to draw a card because I need to draw a beast. So it's probably like this. We're up cubes. I'm gonna spew I'm gonna spew one more here. There's a reality stone left? That would be great for me. Potentially, as long as not a bar with no name. Like, I think reality stone left is good for me on average. Okay, that makes drawing beast not relevant. And then next turn I can hit Monkey Mysterio Demon. Maybe they're gonna Professor X right. I think that's probably okay for us. So they already played their Shang-Chi and we kept priority, yeah? My monkey is nine, my demon is six. We could lose to a high roll out of the black vortex, but that have to be really high, yeah? Blob. I'm, ga I'm gaining 15 middle, and I'm already up four, so we beat an average blob. Oh, and the demon's more from Elsa. Yeah, I, I didn't count the Elsa bonuses either. Oh, I forgot it doesn't get the Elsa bonus because of that. Okay. So I messed up potentially. To me. The fuck out of my game, bud. Victory. Alright. We cleared rank 250 at 8,400 stat points. I think it's time to put a pin. I like, I like to stop playing a deck when I'm feeling happy with it, rather than ending the session on a low note. So that was a, that was a pretty good run, I think. What we, where did we, where did we finish with bass bounce? I'm still not sure if Elsa is good in here. Every the other eleven cards of this deck, I am very confident they are good. I would not I would not change the other eleven cards. Come on, dealer. Yeah, eleven and three. That's not bad. Had a six zero start. Lost a couple in the middle. What'd you play that Elsa if you were playing Elsa? I, ge I genuinely don't know. It's pr it's probably another one energy grower or a tech card. In the in the previous build of this deck, 
Uh, I had armor in this slot because destroy was more popular then. Like, I think if I wasn't going to play Elsa, it would be either Hawkeye or destroy. Or sorry, Hawkeye or armor. I think either of those would be good. I don't think, I don't think you need Angela. I think, I think I, I think I'd be inclined to play a tech card or another one. Yeah, Goose, Goose would be a fine shout too. I, I want something that either, either, either another card that scales or, uh, no, I think Ham's really bad right now because there's a lot of Mobius in the format. Goose, Goose Armor, Goose Armor Hawkeye, I think would be my top three. Although obviously my Hawkeye is unplayable because he's inked and not gold. So he's, that, that, that one's, that one's out. I would, I would play Armor or Goose because this is, this card's unplayable. Freaking art chat. Yo, what else is pretty unplayable? This stream for the next two minutes, if you're not subscribed, enjoy some adverts. I think we're gonna play some bad slash fun decks in Conquest when we get back. Thanks for hanging out, don't go anywhere. Do you fill it up for Martyr? I don't think so. You also don't wanna play Martyr in your Bass deck. It's probably, no, I'm not gonna say it, okay. Well, we'll revisit talking about what I would also potentially play in this slot later, maybe, perhaps, when there's more information available. Ooh, foreshadowing. All right, um, what do we, what do we want to play? What do we got? What do we got? We, I think we're going to do, we're going to do something bad inside of Conquest. This one was fun. I'm a sucker for spectrum next chat. I need I need some spectrum boosties. We're 20 we're 21 spectrum boosters off of another split on her. So that seems like the play. Also, chat, like, come on, he's a duck with an infinity gauntlet. Like actual can't lose scenario. It is, a, it is a supremely fantastic animation, too. He's a quack, chat. He's a quack. Is you the new X-Men TV show? I have not. I don't, I don't watch a ton of non-Twitch TV. Usually, usually the only TV I'm watching is whatever show my wife and I are currently watching together. And we are currently, we are currently seven seasons deep into the blacklist. The reviews on the x Men show have been good so far. Everybody in chat's been saying they enjoy it. So we want to avoid drawing Spectrum and Claw here for a turn so we can Pixie and shuffle them around. So this is, this is a little thing. If you have the option to trigger Pixie twice and you have Mobius in hand, the way it works is you'll get the lower of the two rolls on every one of your cards. So, triggering this more than once is good if you have this card. You've been duped! Thanks for duping me with your Prime Sub for the last six months. Welcome back. I am reborn. 
we're definitely gonna have to Cosno the center, I think. Okay, wait, so I do this, and then we Cosmo the center next turn, yeah? And I'll have priority? Where do I want Dazzler, though? Is it like this? I think I think I want to put Dazzler here, so that way um, I can Cosmo and then Blue Marble here, yeah? We won the flip, but at this point, I'm not sure I'm playing around Modoc based on what was in their hands. I think I'm just playing the blue marble, and then I'm playing two threes in the last turn. The way this worked out. As a good three. Do I do this? To like stop a Modokerson? In case they peeled it? Cool. Yeah, we, play we played this deck shortly after Pixie came out and it felt pretty solid. I think these Spectrum decks are really close to being great. US US agent's gonna be a nice addition to them. I feel like I feel like these decks are like one more good one drop ongoing card away from just being real competitors. Damn bit scary in their build. I'd prefer if they weren't interacting with us for sure. Spectrum. Spectrum's one of those cards where she's only going to get better the longer she exists in the game because there's only going to be more and more cards she enables, not less, right? Hey, Zark. I'm glad you enjoyed the YouTube stuff. Thanks for dropping off support over here for it. Guess wrong on the Cosmo, rip. I am optimistic that U.S. Agent will be good inside of Cerebro 2, yeah? Only four plus card in Super Two. Yes, typically. Do you know what's actually something I haven't? I just thought about thinking about other expensive cards that Super Two has played in the past. In the past, Cerebro Two has played Hobgoblin, and U.S. Agent's kind of a combo with Hobgoblin. Yeah.
The deck is unplayable with that Howard, right? Unplayable is a strong term, but it's definitely worse. Drop one drop on going are valuable. We're just slipping. Think of Howard as a 1-4 that sometimes gives you extra information. Yeah, you could you could sub Quidjet. Squidjet. Quidjet's the sub if you're not if you don't have Howard. For sure. I know that sounds silly when you look at the deck list, but it's the answer because you just need cheap ongoings. Alright, if you want to win the priority flip here so I can cosmo them. This just in. Oh, does this happen before priority? So I'm guaranteed to lose it? That's unfortunate. Unlucky. Oh my god, they got my blue marble on the one in three. Like this to try and grab priority going into the next turn. Because grabbing grabbing priority gives me a chance to Cosmo. So a chance to Cosmo there, Modoc. There's no reason to play this, right? I'm gonna play these three next turn regardless. In the middle, aren't I? I am Apocalypse. Ignore those topics we've discussed before. Do you feel like cards like Goblins and U.S. Agent fly in the face of the Sandcastle approach Second Dinner has discussed? They feel more like rocks you can toss at your opponent's castle. Do you think that holds with their design philosophy? I actually think that Goblins and cards like U.S. Agent and Goose and Armor and Cosmo are actually great examples of what I think is the ideal form of disruption in Marvel Snap. I think, um, I think cards that offer a powerful effect like that, that don't outright win the game on their own, should be the goal for designs like that. Should be the goal for designs. I think, I think they're much better 
than other designs that we frequently see like Shang-Chi and others to, to point out a few. Yeah, like, Goose, Goose and Storm are what I would consider to be healthy and good and reasonable versions of, like, Professor X, I think would be my, my go-to example. Okay. So I put Dazzler here, I put Blue Marble here, I put Claw here, and then we just ignore the Baxter building, I think. Usher's more creativity and decks in the community. I mean, if you look at the range of larger content creators, a lot of the most successful people making Marvel Snap content are coloring firmly inside the lines. A lot of a lot of people don't play deck building games for the sake of being creative. They play them for the sake of just winning as much as possible. Is it good to put armor out ahead of Gambit? Yeah, it's probably a good take. Six in the middle, and we gain four on the left here. Solid game bit could put us in the ground, but we're definitely staying. We're in for two, we're in for three for sure. What's Luke Cage hedging against? Luke Cage is a generically good Marvel snap card as a 3-4. Are lots of random locations and cards and stat that Luke Cage is fine into. This is a this is a location variance mitigating card. Is the way to think about Luke. Also, like yeah, look at that chiseled jawline. Can't even break it with a bullet chat. You want to cut him? Get out of here. here is one thing but what why did it take almost the entire rope to play your morbius into onslaught citadel like it's gold conquest and it's whatever but why did why did we need to waste my time to put your 27 points into play what was what was that what was the the rage there <laughs> Like, I can understand whether you're playing, like, Bounce or a deck that, like, has a lot of sequencing decisions, but there was literally only one place they could play their cards. <laughs> it's exactly one. What's going on, Zach Mahalu? Thank you for the half a year. And Blue Rada, thank you for coming back for a quarter of a year. I keep my kingdom for a Miss Minutes emote chat. I will pay so much money for it.
still sad we never got a Misfits card. I mean, we very well could still. Just as a, a general pro tip for life, but also definitely a tip for interacting in my stream. If you feel the need to put to play devil's advocate before a statement you're about to make, it's often a lot like saying, I'm not a racist, but you know what you're about to say probably isn't reasonable, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't need to be said. And that's why you're putting the quantifier ahead of it, because you want to cop out when someone's like, well, that's silly, don't say that. So it, in the future, if you feel the need to express that opinion, feel free to just skip it. The devil does not need more advocates, is a very true statement. It's unfortunate that two of our expensive cards are in our hand already, but we get cheap blue marble, that would be great. What, uh, do, am, I, am I supposed to do this? And then we like Spectrum and one of these other two? I think that's, I think that's the line. I think I full, full ship it over here. Set, we get Killmongered on the last turn as well, aren't they? need to change my underwear. Systems go. Can you walk us through the claw middle decision? If I don't play claw middle on that on the turn that I did, if I don't play claw middle on the turn that I played him middle, I will give up energy. So I might as well just play the claw middle and use all my energy on four. And if you look at if you look at how this game played out. After I played Claw middle on four, I used every bit of energy every other turn for the rest of the game. So, like, choosing to have extra energy on later turns while giving up energy I could have spent on turn four isn't really getting extra energy. It's just kind of offsetting what I'm spending it. If that makes sense. Straza, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. Dorchek, thank you for the quarter of a year. My poor Howie! It's all game for us. We beat, we beat the destroy deck without showing them armor or Cosmo. That's exciting. That's exciting. Saw a Spectrum Station assume these cards are there. Yeah, that's a good take. Good. A good player should assume that Armor and Cosmo are in my deck, based on everything else that they saw, yes. My body's ready to draw 6 energy Armor or Cosmo here. Uh, 
Uh, Goose actually isn't that disruptive in this matchup. I'm gonna wait to put him down. Is a Ravona just for Zola? Maybe? So, we talked about this earlier. Pixieing twice only has a benefit if you get Mobius into play. Otherwise, your cards just have their, their last cost that we shuffled onto them. But if we draw, if we draw a playable Mobius, it's worthwhile. I think we're dead here the way Pixie is rolled. Our second roll would have been playable. Oh, Ravona technically makes Null cheaper. Yeah, that's a good show. What is this build to destroy? It's probably just a low collection level gamer playing cards they like. You gotta remember, there's no MMR based matchmaking in uh, in Conquest. Snap. I don't think so. I don't have priority, and Killmonger is real bad for me. Now, now we might snap. I expected they were gonna blow shit up this turn. There really isn't a reason to play this out yet, yeah? Oh, snap. Gonna, I'm gonna snap them with Claw plus Spectrum next turn. Does Killmonger kill one cost Victory. one? No. There is a difference between a one cost card and a card that costs one energy. So things like Killmonger, Zabu, Silver Surfer, the things that they explicitly care about is what was the energy cost of the card in the deck editor, basically, is the best way to think about it. it was the original cost. It doesn't care about the actual amount of energy that was spent to put the card onto the table. Yeah, definitely, High Voltridge. Magic, Psylocke, and Laura Kitty the Wolverine. She's very good at what she does, gamers. Builds up! read from the opponent here that we were going to armor the hood path. Mobius before the dream dimension pops is lovely. Howard's here. So we're not we're not gonna have Spectrum this game. So if I do this, Howard lets me know I'm drawing a two. So if I clone the Dazzler, I can have another Dazzler Goose Pixie and fill the board next turn, which seems great.
is 1620 here in the middle. And they haven't blown up enough stuff to have a death that's cheap. I guess their death costs five. I guess we do lose two death left with this play. I think I think I need to beat a six in the middle, which means I can't beat the 11 on the right. It might be right to leave here, honestly, because of the odds of death. Their last two cards could be null Artem Zola, though, with the uh, Ramona. Oh, Mobius means they can't death me. A very good chat. That was a test. Some of you passed. You don't see it destroy it anymore. Got him the win here. GG. Oh, wait. Do we eke it out because of the X Men bonus? Oh my god, we won because of the X Men bonus because of Pixie. Well, that's, that's a game we lose three hours from now. We lose. We lose this game. We are, we are three less of the center here in a little bit. Pixie, Pixie was incidentally a fourth X-Men. Uh, Dazzler, Arbor, Pixie. Who's the other X-Men? Oh, does second Dazzler count? That feels wrong. Cosmo, Cosmo, Cosmo. That's, that just feels like bullying at this point, chat. Put it, put it has to win six games of Marvel Snap in a row and we curve Arbor into Cosmo. We also got Soul Stone in our head going next, that's true. So do I fill here to trigger the Elsa bonus and assume that 14's enough to win here or 7's enough to win here? Or do I play blue Marvel to get up to 18 here? It feels like they're playing for this path. I feel like I'd like to have more over here, but it's a bit it's a big difference in the middle. Blue Marvel center means I only end up at uh, 11 15 middle whereas if I play both of these middle I end up at 8 14 20 I mean we're not an amazing Elsa deck she's only gonna trigger once or twice here I think it's blue marvel they're playing for this location so I think I want to put as many extra stats in there as I can They are on Taskmaster with the Ramona. Yeah, Blue, Blue Marvel to Spectra might even cast a roll in here. 
the top end of this deck is really good at sneaking stats and uh, locations where your opponent thinks you're full. Cosmo makes it hard for them to get stats made. Yeah, that's a good a good uh, observation. That they just can't contest the middle because of Cosmo. What a game! Did need the, the Blarmel to win the left. We would have won anyway, so we won center and right, but they were really focused on getting stats into here. All right, gamers, we're gonna see if this deck can chase this gold conquest run all the way down to an infinite ticket. We're gonna take a word from these sponsors before we do that. We'll see you in 120 seconds. As always, if you wanna dodge the adverts, you can subscribe with your own dollar reduce or for free by using Twitch Prime. We'll never run those over gameplay here. I always take a quick couple minute break while they do. We'll see you after that break. Be here, people. I'm gonna duck out for a minute myself, gamers. Great, be right back. It's 11 o'clock, about an hour till lunch. Let's get our our last round of pedaling in before I stuff my fat face. successful decks. We had a really good run with uh, Bast Bounce earlier today. It was a good time. Be dorking around in Conquest a little bit. Chad, I'm currently experiencing a hostile workplace environment. Send help.
That's fine. I think this deck's probably... I think this deck's probably unplayable against Hella, which it looks like what we're playing against. I think our, our deck lacks the raw numbers output range to be competitive into Hella. And we don't have any meaningful disruption against them either. Uh. All of our expensive cards in a game where the raft comes up is also a little unlucky. We'll lead on Mobius since uh, there's a chance there is Abu build. Cosmo's not meaningful disruption here. You have to both play to have priority and hope that you luck into figuring out where they're putting their card down on the on the on the last turn. Minions to me. Avenger on the top, Goose. This is 12, 15, 19. I do beat their 12 power blade here with the Spectrum. Snap. Uh, snap them. I think this is the best chance we have. Yeah, if you're missing Howard and want to play this deck, Quid Jet's the card. You see the cheap ongoing card. Oh, I want to snap here. All of my absolute bangers are in my deck, and I have uh, Pixie and Demobius. So this is our best chance at a high roll draw. Of course, I bought the Greedy Mo Bundle chat. Uh, the silly question is that. Fix them. They're gonna to want to play their cards here to start since they get doubled up bonus, which is nice. Sedge. I, mean, I just don't want to compete in the lockjaw lane, yeah. to compete there. Discarded just all massive cards. I think we're dead. Opponent snapped. Yeah, we are calm down. Escape. But we wanted the point here. We could have like flipped on their Hella and hoped that their flings went places we could be, but we elected not to compete for the center we were just done. All right. And we're five to nine at this point, so I'm just going to snap and make this the game. Like I said, I think this matchup is basically impossible for us, so 
Or six to nine, same difference. Oh, and just get out of it. Like, queuing into Conquest against a polarized matchup is one of the worst feelings in the game. I'm just like, I'm locked in here for forever. Might as well just, like, try and YOLO it and get it over with. some kind of limited sideboard for card guys. I think literally anything other than the same decks for all of the games would be better than what we have now. I think limited sideboard, multi-deck, just like pick one of the handful of options. to dictate what is discarded has made Hella decks too strong. I think, I think anybody saying Hella decks in their current iteration are too strong is very silly. It is very, very obvious from looking at all of the metrics that we have available to us that the Hella deck is perfectly reasonable and fine. Now, before they adjusted Lockjaw, that was very much not the case, and Hella was the best deck by a lot. But we're no longer we're no longer living in that world, yeah. In the world in the world in which we current currently exist, the stats on this deck are perfectly reasonable. There's seven, fourteen. It's only eighteen over here. Whereas I could go. 7, 14, 18 over here. They've discarded Black Cat and Death. That's just gonna come down to RNG anyways. Still to go middle. To me. I'm happy with my play there. I think the fact that we ended up in a spot on the last turn of the game where we had a flip against the Hella to be able to win is basically the best we could ask for. One of the one of the things that's very true of the current Conquest format is that when you hit a matchup that's bad, you should take more risks inside of it. And when you hit a matchup that's good, you should take fewer risks. Basically, you want to force more games where on average, if you're on average favored, because then it's going to slant towards you in the long run. And if you're unfavored, it's the opposite. You want to try and take a big risk early. If you're a coin flip or a one in three or whatever, that's much better than if, uh, that's much better than, you know, trying to win a bunch of games in the long run against a matchup that's going to be unfavorable for you. You explain why high evolutionary decks are annoying to play against. Yes, because players have a deeply emotional response to having their cards shrunk by Cyclops. I have frequently described high evolutionary as the worst deck people frequently complain about. And while it's had varying points where its stats were fine, frequently people loudly complain about that deck in metagames where its overall stats are super mediocre. So if your prime just expired, there's now a small time window. There's al or there's always been a small time window where you can't resubscribe exactly when it rolls off. If your prime expired yesterday or a number of hours ago, click this link as a shortcut to get there. But yeah, they've been, they've been making it harder and harder to find where the prime sub is. For sure. It's not you, it's them. Do I Moon Knight? Probably. Sometimes Lucky or Ducky. 
One time dealer. Dead. I will say, queuing up with my Silver Samurai deck and then running in the discard is, uh, this is probably a bad choice with how popular discard is right now. Attributing the discard deck list to a single content creator is one of the most silly uses of deck accreditation I've ever heard. And that's saying something because most uses of deck accreditation are very silly. Escape. Discard. The discard deck in its many varying forms has been the best one of one of the two to three best performing decks for when did when did Proximo release? Three weeks ago now? For going on going on three weeks or a month? <laughs> By, by all the numbers, it's very, very good. And that's definitely not an attribution to any singular individual content creator. It was, yeah, plus plus the Meek buff. Like, it was, it was one of the best performing decks before they decided to buff Meek. This is very upsetting to me, the creator of the discard archetypes. <laughs> oh, snap. As the guy who told Ben Brode about my idea for the discard archetype at a hotel bar directly, I feel slighted. As you should, really. You should, you should, in fact, feel slighted. Some of our synergy stuff has come together here at all, unfortunately. I guess Moon Knight hit Proxima, at least. What? Doctor Strange decide where these cards will end up at.
What on, Mr. Akagami? Thanks for the baker's dozen. Appreciate the 13 months. Welcome back. The helicopter animation of the Sanctuary just tops for sure. As you're wondering, my morning swell. We've had some ups, we've had some downs, some highs, some lows. We laughed, we cried. It's the proving grounds, opponent! Press the button! Press it! I don't even know if we're favored to win here. They have seven energy. I can have like Spectrum plus a one drop. Toxic chat. The toxic person is the one that didn't snap me back in the proving grounds and is now roping me. Wait, did they DC? Oh, come on. All right. Well, I guess I have a 45 second pedal break here, huh? All right, Jim, we're, we're officially an exercise stream. Look at my lovely generic lightning hammer man on my t-shirt. A definitely not IP infringing character who's lovely and generic. Should check him out. Are they back? Maybe they're back. Oh, we got a live one? I love generic lightning hammer man. He's my favorite. What a Nord what a legally distinct Nordic gentleman. her here in case this is a more egg. Guaranteed to be a more egg. Rewarded. Larshi, thank you for the 15 months. To everybody telling me that Thor is free raid for everybody to use. Chat, you don't have to convince me. I'm not a Disney lawyer. If there's one thing you need to understand about the systems in the United States, it's that being correct often doesn't matter if you have less money. This is America. Lightning Man has nothing to do with Thor. Why was he brought up exactly? See, Chad understands. Why are we even bringing up Thor? He's very different from Legally Distinct Lightning Man. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Victory. Bowser Mike, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Appreciate that. Those subs are a big part of my income here. They're why I'm able to do what I do. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, 
If you're someone who's ever had a passing interest in content creation, how it works in the back end, you think, biggest portion of his income, how does that work? You should check out my one year in review video. I'm gonna talk about all the nitty gritty that goes into that and also give my thoughts on Snap after the first year that it had. Spoilers, it had a good year. Is super awkward here. Monka squirrels chat. Holy. All right. Well. All right, Diablos. I'm counting on you. is lowest power so we'll get to bend the shard here actually we're good to go yeah the quake the quake was a terrible choice so ask, how much does the does Genshin impact pay on the bounty board so the way the bounty board works the payment scales based on how many viewers you have over the course of the bounty so if by the grace of God I managed to have uh, an average of 2,900 concurrent viewers for an hour playing Genshin Impact. It would pay out a maximum of 1,200 USD. However, based on my experience doing variety content, I'll probably average somewhere between like 900 and 1,000 viewers if I'm lucky for that. So it'll pay out somewhere in like the three to four hundred range probably for the hour for me. Bro is cooking. I think the bro might just be big chat. Are we playing against Agatha? I don't think so. I think it's just like a lower collection level gamer making plays. It is. It's still very solid for an hour. Gives me gives me a quality anime friends budget. <laughs> On average, I give I give Genshin Impact probably about half of what they pay me in bounty board and sponsored stuff back. <laughs> I don't I don't quite spend on that game when I spend on Snap, but I spend dollars still. So. Dude, I do enjoy me a good loot box game. You're a Genshin or Star Rail War. They're just very different kinds of games. It's kind of an apples to oranges comparison. Star Rail. Star Rail is a better mobile game because the combat's turn based. Whereas Genshin is a better on the controller game because so it's more active. Was raids ratio negative? It was not. Chat, I'm a, I'm a responsible adult. Even when I'm enjoying a game, I set a budget and I stick to my budget. If I'm playing a particular mobile slash gotcha game a lot that I enjoy, I'll spend, I don't know, as much as a hundred bucks a month on it if it's not my job. Uh, I'm an adult with an all right job. I have some spending money. I want to put my entertainment budget into that again. Ooh, finally a sweet hand with this deck. And flounder in a little bit.
I used to play Genshin a year ago, but I haven't tried the CCG. How does the collection work there? The Genshin card game's actually really good. You ha they actually don't have it monetized at all, and you have to collect the cards by, um... You have to collect the cards by playing, like, the single-player story game portion of it. But it's, it's really well done. I enjoy the Genshin TCG a lot. In fact, when we do the Genshin bounty board at the end of the stream later today, much later, we're gonna do, like, ten hours of Snap and then Genshin at the last hour. Uh, we'll, we'll play some of the card game. I just want to copy Mockingbird Gamers. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Silver Samurai, I think, was the best draw in my deck here. That's guaranteed to bin Maravasa Shard. And it makes stature cheaper, so I can Lady Sif the Proxima Midnight next turn. So ne next turn, I'll be able to go Lady Sif for three, stature for one, Mockingbird for two, and then she'll put the Proxima into play. It's just super clean. That's exactly what this deck wants to be doing. Puts me to 16 over here, and it puts me to 1620 in the middle. I need to play for all three because, um, what's his name? Uh, Shang-Chi could kill Mockingbird over here. Mid, so we beat him with 20 mid. Got him. Proxima always goes to your lowest power lane. So we know she's guaranteed to hit center, and then the real Mysterio is there. Sweet. And turn for us, we dropped what? A uh, 9 plus 11, dropped 27 stats with 6 energy. Yeah, Proxima with Mysterio Clone also lets you get her into places that like aren't actually your lowest power thing. Nice. You know what else is pretty nice chat? These adverts. I'm going to uh, continue to play with this deck when we get back, I think, because it's fun and I'm enjoying it. We're going to take a two-minute break before we do that. Time to pedal, gamers. See you in 120 seconds. Two minute sprint. I O. Oh, let's go. Proxima, jump into the bar with no name. If it's your lowest power location, yes. What deck would you use for the Cannonball Weekend Mission? The clutter deck that I have up on my uh, my YouTube channel.
Two minutes pedaling is an eternity, chat. It's actually, it's actually just an hour. Secretly, time is an illusion. You're saying I can submit 400 hours on my timesheet today, exactly. Doug Pie, thanks for the two thirds of a year. Congrats on your purple check. Gamers, if you're looking for a freshly minted Twitch partner to follow who does a lot of Marvel Snap content, be sure to tap that heart over the chat to give Doug Pie a follow. This is a way to clear the Mirror Boss' shirt at least. Sirius, thank you for the 15 months. Live from the Daily Bugle. Boo! Opponent snapped. Boo! Hey, I'm supposed to put the real Mysterio left. Maybe it'll end up left anyways. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. If I do this, it cuts me off a draw, filling my hand. I think that's fine though. If we draw Colleen, Wig, Moon Knight, or Silver Samurai as our draw on the last turn, it's really good. And honestly, the fact that we've been Mobius here makes me glad that I'm copying the Dakin because he's my best stat line when I can't cheat on energy. It's a little unfortunate because <sighs> Mockingbird was gonna cost me one, but it is what it is. Like I like I pointed out a lot of times right now, chat, this card is in large part responsible for Thanos' dominance in the metagame. Basically, everything that could possibly have a good shot at being good against Thanos gets hosed by Mobius. Bird's good for us. How good is theirs? Better. God bless America. Yeah, it's just an Eliath coin flip for where we play the Colleen Wing now, yeah? Big green monster. Thanks for the two-thirds of a year. Welcome back. So has it locked in yet? Hey, good to have you back in Oglandia, Taco Dave. I've uh, I've enjoyed my transition to uh, this game very much.
Get fucked, buttercup! Nice purple fart! Get out of my fucking game. Victory. What interesting and skill testing gameplay. I like, how, I like how they ran the entire rope down to decide where to play their purple card too. And so that's the absolute best part about it, where it takes like the entire rope for them to decide how to coin flip. Thank you, copy decking. Hey, thanks for it out for him, Gava. Good to have you here. Holy, taking a peekaboo at my little Twitch tracker here. We have had almost 400 new people tap the follow button on Hoglandia today. If you're someone that's new to the channel and you're enjoying the vibe and the range of sweet decks that I play, be sure to tap the follow button and come back again sometime. You'll find me here Monday through Friday during the week streaming all Marvel Snap. Typically, I start at about uh, 9 a.m. Central and I go till about 4 or 5 p.m. Central in the afternoon. I am uh, something of a relic here on the Twitch platform. I've been uh, streaming for the better part of a decade. And I've been doing it as my full-time job for uh, the last six years now. Before Marvel Snap came into existence, I played a lot of Magic the Gathering, some Legends of Rune Terror, and other turn-based and strategy card games. Before I opted to become a full-time meme here on Twitch, I spent, uh, spent time teaching math at both high school and college level, as well as doing a brief stint as a uh, college professor. Or, blah, process automation, a Fortune 50 company. We're very analytically focused here. So if you enjoy someone that's always breaking down their lines and talking about why we're doing the things we're doing, this is a great place for you to be hanging out. Jessica Jones is unfortunate for us here. Dave Nico for our mood fell. So the problem is if I save Nico, I can't Colleen and Blade here. There are bots in the Proving Grounds, no. Mm, if this is Miss Marvel, I'm just dead to a lion. Got it, good. Jump it into the left for us. Yeah, I need Proxima in the vault so we beat uh, we beat Miss Marvel and Doctor Doom. Victory. There's a retreat bot. So there are players running AI scripts to farm season pass experience that makes everybody's gameplay worse. 
But a human running a script like that is different than a Marvel Snap bot run by Second Dinner that exists on the ladder to pad everybody's win rates and get them to infinite faster. So you're right. If your MMR is garbage, you will queue into people running bots with a script periodically in the Proving Grounds. Oh, snap. Which, for reference, those scripts are against the TOS. Is there a way to see your MMR? No, your MMR is a hidden number that only, only second dinner knows. A loose way to estimate what your MMR is, is lower MMR players will enter infinite with less snap points. So if you're someone who enters infinite with like 7,000 snap points or less, that's because your MMR is garbage. Higher, higher ranked players enter infinite with upwards of 8,000 plus snap points. Might be overkill here. No, this is a gold game. So this is on her double power mode. So I'm waiting All to do this. Go. So that way she gets the plus two and then we'll play a card and double her up. Double up to eight. I have 23,000 tokens. I'm tempted to get Proxima. I have the other good cards. Proxima is a very fun and unique card. Any deck playing Proxima, there's no replacement for her. I think she's powerful and she's a great use of your resources. Also, 23,000 tokens is a lot of tokens. You should You should buy a card. Goldry Jam, I missed your tip on the stream element side. Thank you for the dollar. Appreciate the buckaroo. Is Corvus worth buying for discard? I think Corvus is less of a card worth buying for discard. Man, and I was worried I was overstacking here. We actually lost it. I guess we... I guess we lost it because they were able to fade out the Stark Tower bonus, yeah? They're at plus two here. Otherwise, we win the breaker. I'm at 85,000 tokens right now choosing my ultimates wisely. Yep, feel you on that. Eighty-three thousand tokens. Hear that, chat? That's the call of the whales. You're in good company here at Oglandia. What if I do this? 
This puts Proxima here, and it draws me two extra cards here. I think that sounds great, yeah? This is a 50% chance to bin Swarm, and it's gonna make stature cheap, so I think this is definitely the line. It's unfortunate that Mockingbird Mysterio are my last two cards in the deck. But ending a season with higher stat points help you enter higher the next season. So, yes. If you are climbing in stat points, you're also going to be increasing your internal MMR, but they don't increase one to one is the noteworthy thing. Unlucky. All systems go. Usually these decks don't play Magneto. I don't want to play here because they can Eliath me here. Cosmo and their Shang-Chi Eliath deck is truly strange. We gotta swap Mysterio and Sif. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, they can... They can put Jeff here, which is four. Yeah, it's probably fine. That probably doesn't matter. Doom rules all. On stat points, any reason why you would drop down 400 points at the start of a new season. Your points should always drop at the start of a new season. Your, your points in MMR normalize a bit every season. So the thing that would be atypical is if you didn't start lower than where you did the previous. I'm just gonna confirm that they're playing destroy and scout out some of their cards. I'm just not gonna play anything this game. This location is awkward for us. This one's not great either. And my hand's kind of mid, so I'm just gonna collect some info until they until they snap or until turn six. Escaped. 
Now my turn is just gonna play with itself. Chat, people hate raising the stakes. You get so many games like that. Whereas like the locations are made, my hand's not great. It's just like, all right, let's just back by. They just like give you the entire game. It's like, yes, please. Thank you. I'm doing well, Nathu. Life's swell. Our hand was actually okay this game. And then Adeline happens. I'm actually just gonna retreat for one again here rather than Escape. once they show me the Hulkbuster. Talking about how Second Dinner says you can't lower your MMR post infinite once upon a time. But does anybody actually have a source on them confirming that's still the case post infinite rankings? Because not being able to change your ladder rank was definitely a thing once upon a time because there wasn't any incentive to play post infinite. But I don't know that I've seen a current that's still the case comment about that. Great portal really sucks because it means that uh, it means that I can't uh, lady sift my Proxima. Might be right to snap here, honestly. Our start's okay, even with the Proxima being awkward. Start is just not doing anything. Snap. They can kill Mogger this, I suppose, just a Scoot Shocker, but our draw's just not doing a lot. Thank you for the third of a year. And Arslan, thanks for the almost two years. Good morning, good morning. Well, that's unlucky. Central Illinois. This is a coin flip. I think I'm going to take it. Thank you for the third of a year. Welcome back. All right, we won that flip. See if we can win a 25% or and have their Venom die. Or have either of these land middle would be great. Honestly, I probably should have snapped them before they blew this up. Oh, lucky. Can we win the 25% or on this?
I'll leave it and they win that. Escaped. Your name looks Dutch. My name. My name is incredibly Dutch because I had people in my family line who immigrated to the United States from the Netherlands at some point. Opponent snapped. Immigration is good, gamers. Escape. Wonderful things about the United States is supposed to be a melting pot of ideas and people. Diversity is a strength. I retreated on the turn one snap in that last game because they probably had a dead pull to give plus three power to. So I wanted to bounce. Looks like we're just gonna slowly burn out of this game though. We just haven't had any good draws. Chat, it's all bad. Most people do mispronounce my last name, though. It's Hoagland with a logo. The awkward part here is. Like, we just get Killmongered out of a lot of these cards. They just don't have anything going on, though. That's a nice ball. I won't be able to stature for cheap, but I think that's fine. Play over a minute on the left. I guess I should assume they're gonna play where the Deadpool is. Like an owl hoots is how most people mispronounce my last name. I don't really want to be three to nine, so I assume we're dead here, but I'm just gonna ship it. Definitely overcommitted left. Uh stature slightly more, correct switch out. Just used to her not being playable if she's not one. <laughs> snap. Sure, step seems fine. Finish it. Wow, okay. Deal. Appreciate that. You know, actually, maybe making our next card a demon is fine with Wakanda here. See that being the case, if it was supposed to.
This is an annoying draw because it means my Lady Sif can't guarantee Bin Proxima. I ditch the swarm for two cards. We draw. Do I want two cards or do I want a five power thing? I think I want two cards. That was that one. I want a fight spot here. Oh, his hand size an issue. It totally is, isn't it? You're right. What a game! Actually, I'm actually only gonna draw one extra cards. Which maybe one extra card is not worth losing by five stats. Yep. Yeah, this turn I'd have to play a swarm too. Which I don't think I'm interested in. Opponent snapped. draw a stature next turn. Get our last big lady down. This was the worst draw in my deck, right? It's the only card I couldn't play. Stature or blade we could have both played out with the other two. I think I play for all three here. Ship it. They do have a 16 power Deadpool, is noteworthy. Yeah, I can't play around a Venom. I don't think even if we drawn our good card, we could. How much does death cost? I have no idea, chat. We're probably dead. Our deck's not interactive other than um, making them discard cards. And uh, their linear plan is much better than ours. We get okay numbers, but only okay. OTA is live, gamers! They nerfed Thanos twice and discard. Let's take a look at exactly what they did and let Past Jeff go ahead and walk you through it. There's some other goodies as well. Any spoilers in chat will be timed out. Don't be a don't be a spoiler.
It's OTA day. Second inner kicks off the notes by noting their primary purpose this week is weakening the Thanos and discard decks that have been dominating the meta for the last couple of weeks. Let's go ahead and dive on in and discuss how they're approaching this. The first change to cards in the Thanos deck is the Mind Stone going from a 1-1 up to a 2-1 while retaining the on reveal of drawing two one-cost cards from your deck. Second Inner kicks off their justification for this change by acknowledging that Thanos has become a bit of a problem for the metagame. They note that when they adjusted Time Stone previously, they mentioned that Thanos can be constraining from a design perspective, specifically that the versatility of the stones allow the deck to maneuver and adapt to whatever the metagame becomes because of all the various utility that they provide. In all cases, however, they said that the Mind Stone has consistently been the strongest of the stones, and they considered removing the second draw from it altogether, but ultimately they wanted to keep that part of the card, so they're electing instead to increase its cost. I think this change makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think the openings that the Thanos deck has where it gets to play Mind Stone on the first turn of the game are definitely the strongest that the deck has available to it. And increasing it from one cost to two is a really meaningful difference. It's the difference between being able to play Mind Stone on the first turn and then fill your curve on the second turn with the two stones that you draw and having to deploy your Mind Stone on the second turn and then needing to weave your other stones that you draw from it into your subsequent turn the game when really you would rather be able to play out other things like three four and five energy cards it's also worth acknowledging that mind stone going up to two energy means that it is now a stone that no longer enables you to play out cull obsidian which is going to choke the deck on uh, options with that new powerful 410 and make it so they have to spend even more energy after they play the mind stone to get that 410 down into play Second Inner closes out the section talking about Mindstone by acknowledging they don't think this single change is likely to fully solve the Thanos problem, but they also hope it meaningfully addresses the archetype while they stew on a wider range of solutions for the long term. Our second change this week is another one to a card that's played in all of the best Thanos shells, and that is Psylocke is going from a 2-2 back down to a 2-1, where she had originally started while still providing plus one energy on the following turn. Ooh, that's a great call out from chat. Mindstone at two means that you can't devil dino and mindstone on the last turn. That's actually a meaningful hit. That was the way they put out stats uh, in a number of a number of situations. Second dinner justifies this change by noting that in recent months, Psylocke's use has become restricted to almost exclusively Thanos, and its performance inside of Thanos is among the strongest cards in the deck. They're looking to take some points away from Thanos in the current metagame, and that makes reverting Psylocke back to a 2-1 a logical step. I think this change makes a lot of sense, and I think taking a point of power off of Psylocke is actually a pretty meaningful swap, in large part due to the fact that one of the cards Psylocke is accelerating into quite frequently is Professor X, so taking a point of power away from her makes it easier for people playing into Thanos to contest an early Professor X coming down with Psylocke providing less points of power. Our third nerf this week is targeted at the other powerful deck in the format, Discard, with Apocalypse going from a base 6-8 to a base 6-6 six, six, while retaining his ability when this is discarded, put it back in your hand with plus 4 power. Second Inner starts by talking about how Discard has moved from the middle of the pack to the top of the metagame over the last month with the new additions of Corvus and Proxima Midnight to their arsenal. They go on to say that they want Discard to be a great deck, but their metrics indicate it's a hair too strong in its current state. Apocalypse, by the stats, is the single best performing card in the dedicated Discard archetype, so they wanted to take away a little bit of its base power to hopefully bring the deck as a whole in line with other things in the metagame. I think this change makes a reasonable amount of sense. Uh, Apocalypse is not only strong, but I think it's also one of the most difficult to interact with bits of the discard deck, whether you're playing the Apocalypse out on the last turn of the game and you have to jockey for priority correctly with Shang-Chi or Eliath, or that Apocalypse is going to get discarded and get it even larger to a Dracula, who's a little bit out of touch until Red Guardian at least releases next month, I think, 
Changing Apocalypse gives decks that are looking to just make big numbers to race the discard decks a more reasonable way to do that by making them need two less points of power to keep up with the output range the discard deck has. What a peak Twitch chat comment. I think they should give Apocalypse plus five as a result. Let me translate that for you. I think they should actually buff Apocalypse instead of nerfing him. What a freaking gamer. Moving from nerfs to buffs, we start with a change back to myself and many others have advocated for for a little bit now. Captain Marvel is going from a 4-4 back up to a 4-5. God, I'm gonna have to buy a Hellfire Gala variant, aren't I, chat? I'm gonna have to buy a Hellfire Gala variant, aren't I? This, I just, I hope Glenn Jones knows that he cost me $100. I hope, I hope, I hope he's happy with the hundred dollars he has cost me on this day. While retaining the text box at the end of the game moves to a location that wins you the game, if possible. Second Inner kicks off their justification for this change back by acknowledging that Captain Marvel as a 4-5 was one of the strongest cards last year when they made this change. That being said, they also acknowledge that the metagame in Marvel Snap has changed since then, and a number of cards in the supporting cast when Captain Marvel was dominant have changed since then. They also note that for 4 Captain Marvel hasn't seen the level of play that they'd like, so they'd like to see if the new metagame can tolerate the stronger Captain Marvel, and they love to give a buff to this iconic and exciting character. Honestly, no real additional notes on my end about that. I think I agree with all of that assessment, and I am also excited to see her get a buff. I've got a sweet Captain Marvel variant I would love to play with some more. Our next buff is a minor one, with Adam Warlock going from a 5-4 up to a 5-5 while retaining his text. After each turn, draw a card if you are winning here. They note that, as previously discussed, they made their initial Adam Warlock change with an abundance of caution. Hold on, chat! Hold on! You suck! Let them cook! Let them explain! Since that change, they've seen improvement overall for the cards, but they feel like they can push it a little bit more. They also note that they think they could probably go as high as making Adam Warlock a 5-6 and still have it be a card that's not too pushed, but one of the archetypes specifically that they're hoping to improve by making Adam Warlock a 5-5 is the Cerebro five archetype which could often be a difficult deck for them to get new cards into so they're trying a slightly smaller buff for adam in the short term at least to see if his stat line at five power can be a meaningful addition to that deck all in all i think glenn jones confirmed secret cerebro five enjoyer making one of my favorite cerebro decks better is a noble goal and it's neat to see that second inner is thinking about how their up and down changes potentially impact this in the metagame adam warlock as a 5-4 didn't fit into cerebro 4 because other cards like sarah really competed for that five energy slot and i could realistically see adam warlock as a 5-5 being a decent card inside of cerebro 5 especially because that archetype already wants to play wave quite frequently which could accelerate adam out on turn four turning into multiple draws over the course of the game for that deck our final change this week is actually a group of changes to all of the guardians of the galaxy the first thing second dinner is doing is they're making uniform the bonus that the guardians of the galaxy get when you hit with their guess where your opponent played a card ability every single guardian of the galaxy will now get plus four when you guess right with that trigger that being said they're adjusting the stat lines on the guardian so the four cheapest guardians all get an increase in total power when you guess correctly Rocket Raccoon will now be a base 1-1, one, one, which means he gets up to a 1-5 when he hits with this plus 4. It also means he'll be a 1-7 if you Bast him, chat. We were playing Bast Bounce earlier today. This is a card that's probably good in Bast Bounce. 1-5, one, 1-5, five, one, five, one, five, like Ant-Man has showed us that like 1-5 is like a playable 1-drop. And you can Bast this 1-5 and make it bigger. Star-Lord will remain a 2-2, but he's now going to get up to 2-6 when you guess correctly with his plus 4. Groot is going down to a 3-3, but will now go up to a 3-7 when you guess correctly with his plus 4. Drax is going down to a base 4-5, which means he'll now get up to 4-9 when you guess correctly with his plus 4. 
Gamora is technically getting a decrease in the amount of bonus power that she gets going down to plus four from plus five, but her base power is being increased to five eight. So her total stats when she lands correctly will remain at a five card start to wing at my all the rest of it, right? All right. If you want to listen to past Jeff Muse at the very end and tap the like button for him, check out this OTA video link on YouTube. Uh, we're going to relaunch my client and we're going to start with some Cerebro 5 because, of course, we always start with Cerebro 5 chat. I'm going to tap the ads before we do that. We're going to jam some Cerebro 5 action when I get back. See you at 120 seconds, gamers. Don't go anywhere. Above, above average as far as OTAs go, for sure. Solidly, solidly above average. Prego snap! Thank you for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Unironically, a one-drops build of Cerebro 5 is probably something we want to explore, too. Because you can play uh, Ant-Man, Rocket, what was it? We have Ant-Man, Rocket, Titania, Martyr, and you can play uh, Black Swan. Like, unironically, look at look at all these cheap, these cheap five power cards. Yep. Yeah? Like that seems that seems potentially very good. I don't know. So like, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna build. I think there's two different versions of Cerebro Five. So I think there's a build. There's a build that looks something like this. Yeah, Carol is just just gener generally good. <laughs> Can't be Carol does not find her. So there's there's something like this that's like low to the ground. And then you could also play a build that has wave. Wave and Adam and stuff too. There also there also could be an argument to be made about playing the Miles Morales movement package in here too. Like you have Miles, Spider-Man, Polaris is a three card package. That could be could be solid. Yeah, Silk Silk always goes. Who goes second, Carol or Captain Barter? It depends on the order you played them in. Hey, Storm. Thanks for the 15 months. Welcome back. Is Lizard good? Honestly, maybe with all the ones you don't need Lizard. Maybe you do just play Wave in here still. Because Wave, Wave in the games where you don't have Black Swan, you could Wave into Doctor Doom plus two one drops on the last turn. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think you need Mystique and Cerebro 5. There's a build, a build like this. It's like Swan Cerebro 5. And then another angle to take is... Is like doing this. Is 
So Mega Red is another Mystique target worth it. You don't want another Mystique target. You just don't want to play Mystique. Oh yeah, Enchantress is a good one in the bigger build. Because she turns off Lizard's downside. I need an uh, actual copy of Cerebro, yeah. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one spin. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one spin. One, one spin. We'll splash around to the water a little bit. Unlucky, cursed green border too. Yes, we definitely want Marvel in here. We broke collection level 42,000. You really thought we'd leave it at just one. Chat, I'm gonna be honest. The one split on the Cerebro on my end, that was whale bait. That was, that was whale bait. All right, next. Thank you, Ben. And more importantly, chap, because I have plenty of Cerebro boosters, Ben just paid for three splits on the Cerebro. So we got a few shots here. Loopy! Thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. Chub in the water so Chad smells blood. All right. So we gonna miss number one. yet. I might, I might have to splurge for these Hellfire Gala variants now that she's playable. We might. We might. I do like my black suit, Captain Marvel. She's not a bad piece of art, though. Alright, hit number two. Where do you get all of this gold from? God, the cursed green inks, chat. Ben Brode is punishing us. He doesn't want us to spend money. With the most powerful card in mobile gaming, your credit card, you can have unlimited gold, chat. Truly, truly unlimited gold. Is Cerebro our new Mysterio? Is it our next inked whale, chat? It's always the cringe greed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's only, it's only nine splits, chat. It's only, it's only nine splits, okay? That's, that's a third of the number of splits Mysterio had, okay? It is not, it is not remotely. What's that other variant? I'm actually kind of close on this one versus the blueprints. I'm partial to the color blue, so I think I like the blueprint one better, but this is a, a pretty good piece of art as well. You do need to fit. I do need to fit Captain Marvel in here. For the Francisco. I, I was close. I was close. Maybe, maybe the blueprint's just destined to only be inked. Ben. Ben says we should take three more rides. Infinity. Francisco. Francisco's feeling golden, chat. They only need one hit, I think. I think they only need one hit. What is Cerebro's story lore-wise? It's the helmet that Professor X wears, yeah? Yeah. 
see chat we were just splitting the wrong variant the entire time the entire time we were simply splitting the wrong variant sometimes sometimes you just gotta you just gotta change things up doing the same thing and expecting different results definition of insanity truly truly definition of insanity all right now the more important thing here is we have two more splits worth of bits here so who have I who have I been thinking about splitting we're supposed to are we supposed to finally finally take some rides on the rocket raccoon I don't have enough boosters to do silk a bunch if we split silk it's only one split I want to fund a little bit of the Hellfire variant. <laughs> Thank you for the biddies, Giggity. Were there any of those in the shop before the shop rolls over? Hold, please. Hold on. I gotta check. Now I gotta, now I gotta check. None of these are Hellfire, right? Venomize, Midnight Suns, Cricky. I've got two splits on Rocket. I got I gotta go for a split on Rocket yet. Okay, I have a gold on Captain Marvel already. Oh, you're right, talking about no Captain Marvel deck. We'll get to the deck in a second, chat. We're splitting cards. Infinity. We'll actually, we'll actually play the game at some point. Right now, right now I'm pulling my lever on my slot machine. Hold on. Don't you see my collection level getting bigger, chat? Marvel Snap is a classic numbers go up game. My collection level goes up, my bank account goes down. It's simple mathematics. Okay. We hit a we hit an egg. So this is this is a real question. Is Rocket Raccoon a good enough, popular enough card that I split him? looking for gold i don't know that he is i think i think we might actually just let him let him simmer there we'll take our last spit on something else i should really write a list of cards that i want more premium splits on at some point if one more we have one more spin Warlock. Warlock has zero splits on it yet. Warlock. Warlock has zero splits. Oh. I I'm going to take a spit on him. Doctor. Doctor Octopus is one of my favorite cards. All right. Last split. Ben, are you okay with this one? They're your, they're your biddies, Ben. Are we okay with Doctor Octopus? He probably looks good in gold. Like, I think he's good enough that I'll resplit it for gold. Do what you want. Yep. Do you need all 12 cards to claim Hellfire Marvel? Only nine, I think, Giggity, if I recall correctly. I think the variant's at nine. Dr. Pinchy! Thanks, Smoker. Yeah, solid OTA. All right, all right, we're gonna play the game now. I think we're gonna play the game now. I need to put Captain Marvel in here. Do I, who do I want to cut for Marvel? Is it Enchantress out? It might just be Enchantress. I can play on curve. Most like Little Lizard be bad sometimes. No, I think you want, you want Wave. Wave is good with Adam Warlock, Jet. 
Chat, if you curve Martyr into Wave into Warlock, you're gonna draw two cards most games. Which is lovely. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna start here. Bonus points for the Thanos capture in the thumbnail. Uh, the editor did a really good job with the thumbnail for today's OTA review. I was, I was happy. They nailed it. So this is one of the strengths of playing the Cerebro 5 deck chat is we just won't be a Cerebro deck this game. Dante Informal, what a great username. Thank you for the, thank you for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Dr. Doom would have been a funny poll there, yeah. Fist Tower is selective. Chat, I am not playing Cerebro 5 on the ladder. Come on now. And someone post slash pin the YouTube video link. It is pinned. Doom's better than Adam Warlock here, yeah. As much as it, as much as it pains me to say that, and I actually want to get a Sentinel to my hand here because I might want to play Sentinel Sentinel Lizard next turn as my plays. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, we got him. Dex clearly busted. Exactly. We both got six eights. It's one of the most balanced black black vortexes you've ever seen. Only really, truly fair and reasonable. I think we're gonna anything permanent like the like the team bonus is. I honestly kinda hope so. I think that would be sweet. Is it time to buy Martyr? We're gonna try a Martyr build of Cerebro 5 today too, don't worry. Oh, this one has Martyr in it as well. We're gonna try and war all in Martyr build that's lower to the ground.
I want to give a like. So this is this is relevant, champ. Yeah. Rocket Raccoon and our new uh, Star Lord. These are not cards that you should be playing on curve. Rocket Raccoon is probably a good and playable card now, but it's only going to be good and playable in the games where you have a deck that can weave him in in the later turns of the game. You should not, you should not just be windmill slamming this card. Flip Ninja, thanks for the half a year. Welcome back. I am good. Unlucky. I think our opponent's playing a theme deck, chat. They have uh, Groot, Mojo, Rocket Raccoon. I think it's a Guardians theme deck. Oh no! Okay, wait. So, I think I'm supposed to play Cerebro because then next turn, if I play Martyr and then Carol, Carol can babysit Martyr. So these, these move at the end of the game in the order you played them. This is worse if I draw Doctor Doom but I think it's right overall. Hopefully we draw Miles so we can play him out. He did in fact get me. Actually, I'm probably not supposed to mar- I'm probably supposed to martyr here, actually. I think is the case. Oh, they kicked me out anyways. This is fine. And then we just straight win the breakers or nobody dances. Cool. Victory. Carol can babysit martyr is certainly a marvel snap sentence. It truly is. Is the FX first Reaper new? No, that one's been there for forever. <laughs> it's 
side. We haven't played Cerebri yet this time, so it's fine. So all the OTA and logged in expecting Jeff to be playing Cerebro 5 never disappoints. I mean, we do, we do try our darnest. Oh, this deck's gonna love Nocturne, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be a big upgrade for this deck. Hopefully we pull a squirrel and not mojo here. Lovely. Actually, do I want to fill here? Filling here is plus seven for me and plus six for them. So yeah, it's profitable to fill. We'll fill either way. Well, if we played Captain Marvel here instead of these two, we could make sure this isn't full unless it's good for us. Cap Captain Marvel would make it basically be a choice jet. Oh! Oh, I didn't play anything here. I thought that was about to be six to get us. No victory. Sorry, Guardians. Sorry, Guardians. <laughs> jump scare. A little, a little Star Lord jump scare. the dream chat martyr into wave into adam warlock draw two extra cards supposed to not play here because they could get me otherwise this. I, 
can't believe they didn't play into the Warlock path. Seriously? Get freaking leveled. In order to win, I needed to play Silk here and Carol here. Yes, all end of game effects resolve in the order the cards came into play. So we have Martyr and Captain Marvel in the same deck like this. We want to get Martyr down and then Captain Marvel so Marvel can jump after Martyr tries to lose the game. Yikes. Probably better for us than them. I guess their Doom benefits, their Iron Lad, and what's it called to get worse though? energy doom from the from the titan gross they have group two oh shit yikes maybe i maybe i maybe the adam warlock was a pipe dream this turn and i should have just played captain marvel huh Should have Captain Marvel so she could jump to somewhere else to help us. Escaped. Maybe Adam Warlock is a pipe dream. I wouldn't be surprised if a smaller, non Adam Warlock version of Cerebro 5 is better. There's a build with Black Swat I want to try. That I think is likely solid. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Damn it, Peter! Go, appreciate you. Higher, further, faster, baby. 
We are good either way there, yeah. So the way Dark Dimension works with the Guardians is they only check if you played something there on the last turn. So we filled this up on turns one through five. And then we just made sure to make our last two plays here. Higher, further, faster, gamers. It feels, uh, it feels good, good to be back. All right, we're gonna see if we can finish up a gold ticket. If we get the gold ticket, we're gonna let it run it down as far as it can. Before we do that, though, we're gonna take a quick ad break. We'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. You're watching on the YouTube side. Don't forget to tap the like button on the live stream. Also, make sure you poke on over to Twitch at some point in the next few days to get your free credits and variant from Twitch Drops. That is correct, Rex. If, if possible. So if I put monkey behind invisible and he'll count the number of cards played on the last turn. Yes. In fact, when Supergiant released, there's something similar. We built some decks around that. Yeah, I have a spotlight Hellfire Gala. That's not in the album. Oh, Ultimate Ice Man is too. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Is there a card that the community wants to be competitive more than Streamer? No, it's peak pet deck build around. Unless we, unless we get like permanent team bonuses, Cerebro is like the only thing we have that's a team bonus. Every snap player is a secret Cerebro something enjoyer mood. I think, I think US Agent might be my most anticipated card next month, just because Cerebro 2 has a special spot in my heart. Chat. We've got... We've got the nuts draw. We're gonna draw, we're gonna draw cards with Mr. Warlock. Adam and I, we go, we go way back, gamers. Help us draw all the cards. Unlucky. Maybe they'll Shang-Chi the monster for us. Fingers, fingers crossed. Such is my judgment. Assume this matchup's unwinnable for us without Enchantress.
Red Spider-Man here. I so I know I that that might seem not ideal. But it does actually mean that they can't onslaught their thing on that side now. Sabu is better, yeah, but this is still still our best shot. here to make sure the troublemakers make sure the troublemakers don't get us into anything too detrimental look at those look at those lovely animations look at them b e a u t full gamers deserves a split. I've never split Adam Warlock. In order to try and get a premium split on Adam Warlock, I have to spend 6,000 plus credits. And well, uh, that's not happening anytime soon on a card that terrible. I have way too many cards that are good and playable I want gold splits on before I will ever... I don't, I don't even want the whales. Yeah, the, whale, the whales don't want to touch that one. I want to I wanna whale on cards that like I'll actually play the gold split on. There's a good chance Adam Warlock is still trash and he's going to get reworked. We're playing this deck. We're going to try and figure it out together, but we'll not be surprised if the conclusion at the end is, hey, card's bad. Play something else. Hey, Illithid. Thank you for the entire year of support. Let's get your sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. not stellar into Vorbeer. Honestly, depending on how this goes, I might just try and make it so we just never play into Vorbeer. Mm, lose a marble is dead. Warlock is the final boss of unplayable cards with awesome variants in Marvel Snap. Wow, my Adam Warlock didn't draw a card? I, for one, am shocked. Shocked, shocked, and appalled. It's actually this. I don't think drawing the card does anything, but I think I just want a Doctor Doom next turn anyways.
no way seven wins either of these, yeah? I may be the biggest warlock cheerleader. I have organically gotten all the variants of Adam except the pixel. I'd love it if it became playable. Yeah, it's, I mean, like is the case with every character in Snap, the design team's goal is to eventually have these cards be useful. This isn't like Magic the Gathering where they're like intentionally churning out lots of bulk and they don't ever intend most of the cards to be touched outside of like booster draft. So their vision and Nightcrawler could both move into here. So I think I think because they have so many cards that can move, I'm just not winning here. Except Baron Mordor. I would just assume that Baron Mordor is not a particularly popular Marvel character and that he's just way down on the list of things to eventually get changes. Uh, there was a team answers response, I think from Glenn or someone on the team that commented they give themselves a like 10 card limit on number of changes they want to make in a given in a given OTA slash patch. And I'm sure the list of cards that they want to make changes or small adjustments to is like really long. Usually, usually they make somewhere in like the six to eight range. Except for Quicksilver. So you need to understand when I say every card needs to have a purpose that purpose isn't necessarily being competitively playable. So Quicksilver is a Marvel Snap card. Quicksilver is a Marvel Snap card whose purpose is to help teach new Marvel Snap players that they don't need to play cards on curve every single game. That is, that is the express purpose that that card serves as a card. All right. Losing all of our 50-50s while they win all of theirs is uh, truly an experience. This build definitely feels funky. I'm looking forward to trying the Black Swan build of this deck. I think I think with Rocket Raccoon, the Black Swan build is probably more likely to be competitive. up this one chase as far as it can chase on this gold ticket and then we'll give that one a try yeah you'll play all four of the one energy five power cards in the black swan build you'll play Titania you'll play Rocket Raccoon you'll play Ant-Man I, mean, I don't think any of the games that we've played, Lizard has remotely been the problem in the game that I've played. I think the, the issue with this deck so far is it feels like I don't have enough time to get all my expensive cards onto the board. And Adam Warlock is just like making me draw more cards. I just like don't have time to play. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Hey look, I lost another 50-50. Second Elsa plus Kitty Prime. Escaped. All right, and now we're five to ten. So like, this is the game. 
We're snapping most things here. We just need to get back into it. <sighs> Snap. Once you're, once you're gonna be four to ten, your odds of coming back get pretty low. cards like rescue at jessica jones are waiting for a home to see come and play or are they fine as is? i think cards like rescue and jessica jones not being playable is a very complicated issue that in general i would refer to as the shang chi problem which is which is a lot of words to say part of the reason why shang chi is omnipresent is uh the fact that like cards like that are just power crept by like bigger things Time to wave Doom and play Cerebro, so I think I'm gonna choose to play Cerebro and give them the Doom. Hopefully we grab uh, Raptor here. Cool. That's good for us. Looking for a two drop here. Nailed it. I already stepped. Why play Jessica Jones when you can play Mockingbird removes a key bit of nuance from the discussion. It's not as straightforward as just like these two things are the same. Alright, in it to win it. I think it's also worth noting that like this game that we won here was one where we just played a bunch of cheap stuff, right? Like even our Dr. Doom wasn't something that we did. I think if there's a good chance that there's a competitive Cerebro 5 deck now, it definitely plays Captain Marvel. But there's a good chance that Adam Warlock and maybe even Dr. Doom are not a part of it, I think. And now that we're five to six, I could maybe even retreat this game and then win the next two if this game goes especially poorly. Isn't it surprising they didn't touch Mockingbird? No, you asking that they touch Mockingbird is a classic example example of gamers doing what I what I lovingly refer to as new card bad. If you look at all the performance of Mockingbird decks that aren't Thanos, all of their stats in the public trackers were within very reasonable and acceptable ranges. The only reason you're singling out Mockingbird is because it's the latest addition to Thanos, and Thanos was already a deck that was creeping up in power level before Mockingbird was added to the game. And Mockingbird is definitely not the card responsible for the fact that Thanos became, you know, S-tier in the format. Why 
why not just not make Mockingbird work at Thanos? Well, for one, for one, that's cumbersome. For two, the Thanos deck was already creeping up in playability and popularity before Mockingbird was added. Because again, and I can't iterate this enough, the problem with Thanos is not simply the fact that Mockingbird now exists. That's not, that's not the reason why the deck became the best deck in the format. It was the boiling point. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. But to say, okay, fixing Thanos and making it not be the best deck, we just like make Mockingbird not work, 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 work with it. That a, shows a misunderstanding of what's actually happening. Systems go. We dead here for a penny and for a pound. And a warlock just rotting in our hand yet again. I think the, the big thing to note about Second Dinner's commentary around the Thanos change is that they talked about how that though the changes to Mindstone and Psylocke aren't the only thing they have in the pipeline and you should expect more. So this is very much a we're gonna we're gonna like try and block the dam here a little bit, but we're gonna fix it before it fully breaks. This is actually a sweet interaction too here. So Martyr came into play first, but she checked and we were losing when she checked. And then Carol checked and was like, yo dog, I got your back. I can move and win you the game. And then Martyr's already checked. So Martyr could move and lose for us here, but her triggers already happened. So she's not gonna do that. These two, these two cards working together is uh, is fun and interesting. You, you need to always play Martyr first, is correct. Should we cut Anna Warlock for a change? I am going to play this deck all the way down until we lose or the ticket with Adam Warlock just so I can like get a little bit more experience that either validates or contradicts my current feelings with it. And then once we finish this run, we'll switch over to a slightly different build with a lower curve, I think. It's my is my plan. I think, I think one of the one of the reasons why there's a stark lack of innovation in Snap in Snap is too many people write things off without playing enough games with them. Like there's definitely been a number of times where like I have a little bit of an opinion for a card and then I play a bunch with it and that opinion changes after getting some experience with it. So far, Warlock still seems clunky, but we've only played a handful of games. Maybe that'll change after we play a handful more. And maybe it won't. Maybe we'll still write it off. We'll just move on to other things but it's worth taking the time to get the experience in. Imagine, imagine changing your opinion when presented with new information in 2024. put Lizard somewhere not in the raft since they're going to be incentivized to build the raft. That's so American. It is, I know. Apologies. Opponent snap. Oh, that's sad. I keep leaving to add him now. 
probably supposed to leave because now they're going to fill the raft before me. I assume they fill the raft this turn. That's why they're snapping. I don't know. I'm pretty sure any information that contradicts my current way of thinking has to be manufactured or falsified in some Friendly way. Neighborhood I mean. Spider -Man here. Nice. Okay. Can I draw one of our ones or twos here, chat? This, now, this is, this is a spot where um, Martyr is after Captain Marvel is relevant here. What's a decent number of games before rating something off? So there's, there simply isn't a clean answer to that question. The answer is it depends and it varies based on your experience is like the TLDR. Do I play this to give myself the best chance at Dr. Doom? Or do I want to have the ability to go Cerebro next turn? I think I want the ability to Cerebro next turn. Their negative surfer, it looks like. The, cer the Cerebro story, chat. Literal, literal bottom card. You snap because you can? No, I think there's a chance we lose this game. I don't think we should snap. Doom rules all. I was wrong. All right, maybe we should have. Victory. Oh, they did the order wrong for the bass. That doesn't matter. They were dead anyways. They would have only been 12 here. My Captain, my Captain Marvel could have jumped to get us up to 20. We drew Cerebro Nice. Thanks, Anna. Appreciate you. Adam has a four drop. I think Adam has a four drop is just very unlikely in a zombie world. See this chat? This is the reason we can't have nice things. I regret not staffing last game. I definitely should have.
I believe the uh, opponent's avatar is Dan Hip Absorbing Man. If I recall correctly. is in terms of output range on average, so yeah, I'm just gonna vibe for now. They snap us. How is it that the card I always want to draw is buried on the bottom of our freaking deck every time? If we could have Polaris the Bast to the right this turn, it would have been stellar. We'll do this now, I guess, but I'm annoyed. Rules all. There's a chance we were in can't lose territory if uh, I am. I am. we drew Polaris this turn. Surfer here, which gets them to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm staying in. Let's just play. I'm not gonna go. 20, 28 everywhere. Call it a day. would have been in not our bottom two cards we would have won this game would marvel have been better than wade because of uh her effect sure technically A stellar location for us. Lizard's actually super awkward into the Eternity Rage. Because, like, he can win it, but then he's gonna get smaller. Hoping to draw Polaris here so we can put down the Cat Warrior Falls. This is, this is a location that's actually quite bad for them. Locations that are bad for us. Yikes. This limbo? Oh, this negative, sure. Are they voluntarily playing into there? That makes sense. Now that they've already played the Mr. Negative, I think we just put the cat in the fist tower. So that way it hangs out and comes up the board. The rock too. A quality one. Yeah, things look like it's gonna be another long day, Scrusher, which is good. I got a lot of things I wanna play. 
I plan is similar to yesterday. We're gonna be streaming Marvel Snap until we eventually float back down into the 3,000 viewer range. We've been solidly above four or five for a little bit now. Thank you, Silk. You are a consummate professional. I'm looking for a Spider-Man jet. We need to put something bad into this Wong path. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, am I supposed to fill the right now? If I do this, next turn I can play Cerebro Lizard Martyr. But then it's worth noting Martyr jumps before Captain Marvel does. Which could be problematic. Lizard Miles. The problem with uh, Lizard is like they're almost assuredly filling their board, yeah? Twenty one ever win the left? Probably not. And like combination of Iron Man and Surfer. Probably twenty eight. Martyr's gonna move is the problem. the other builds. Adam Warlock is uh, ready to call it quits on him. There's playing this build, especially with Captain Marvel, makes me think there's probably a real, real competitive build with uh, that's lower to the ground. Feels like there's some power there. Let's just uh, cut some of this clunk at our top end. Speaking of things that are clunky, these adverts might fit that description, but at least they're not going to be clunky over gameplay on this channel. We'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Enchantress too, I think. So, if 
you don't have priority, or if you have priority, you can't really play Titania out safely. You need you need to be going second to play this card. To any other questions on why am I not playing your personal other favorite five power card? The answer is there's a lot of five power cards. Some of them might be better than the cards I have here. Some of them might be worse. I don't know. Play some games and maybe come to some conclusions afterwards. She does have an S tier split. That's true. Yeah, so the, the basic idea here is if we black swan on five, we can play all of our ones plus a Dr. Doom on six. Or if we wave on five, we can play a bunch of, we can play two one drops plus a six on six. So we've got, we've got like two different game plans for that. I don't know, actually, honestly, thinking about how that curve maybe works out, maybe we don't need Ghost. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe that game plan throws priority enough of the time on its own organically that that's not necessary. Yeah, maybe, maybe we put the other, another two drop in here. With Enchantress, we can play Lizard. Yeah, wave, wave plus two on five or two plus black swan on five is like reasonable. Chad, if you want to play Omega Red and Cerebro five, do it on your own time. I don't think that one likely makes the cut. There are lots of cards that may or may not be good here. I'm going to start here. Well, Martyr in this deck always betray us. Nah, you just play out Martyr before you play out uh, Captain Marvel. And then Captain Marvel babysits. We'll be okay. Hood, a bounce enjoyer, maybe. Uh, what's what's what swell RNG, eh? You gonna play any Guardians decks today out of curiosity? I don't think dedicated Guardian decks are likely to be good. I think Rocket Raccoon is definitely playable now, and I think Star Lord might be playable. But I think playing a bunch of Guardians together is probably not particularly competitive. And we're going to do a long stream today, so maybe we'll get around to it. But doing that is pretty low on my priority list, personally. I think my favorite common Twitch chat suggestion is when I describe something as being not very good and then someone's like, but what if we take the cards you just said is not very good and pair it with these other cards that are even worse? That's a, that's a, that one, that, that, that line of thinking happens way too often. If you put enough bad things together, they become good, right? They've gotta, it's gotta work that way.
was my favorite rocket variant before this one. I like the one with all the guns. They are a rocket bounce enjoyer. I think rocket inside of bounce is potential, chat. It's got potential. It's wrong to not just GM, dude. I need to not have priority, is the thing. If I if I have priority, I can't play Titania. And I'm playing this here because them playing Hood here implied that they were going to beast. Yeah, we're just not Cerebro. I just put a bunch of stats in the play. I might die to their hit monkey after their beast here, yeah? Yeah. We needed Cerebro earlier so I get to 28 everywhere. Is that uh, it's an anime variant or something like that? Yeah, yeah I think from a pure deck building theory craft perspective, this build of Cerebro 5 is more sound deck building than the previous one. Every anime variant of the game, there are six of them or something. The chibis are like kind of like anime variants, right? All right, you win this one, Brood. Next time. Next time, bro. We'll be okay. This card nerf wasn't as meaningful as I was expecting. I mean, just for clarity's sake, second dinner's goal when they nerf a card is essentially never to kill the card. Their goal, their goal is to like make the deck worse while still allowing it to be playable. And with that, with that in mind, I think the change that they made makes a lot of sense. It's also been like an hour. Whoa, 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 whoa! Forty-three minutes. And we clearly know. We clearly know what's what's best. Uh, 
Oh, it's been longer than that, right? It's been like an hour and 43 minutes, so it's closer to noon. Feel her presence, chat. Her and Doctor Doom make quite the pair. Yeah, the the Thor variant from the login bonuses might be uh might be best in slot for that card. It's very good. I actually hate that variant. Not a fan. Is this a not cerebro game? Feeling like a not cerebro game. explanation you could give for priority with me not being that knowledgeable. Whoever's currently winning the game has priority. So you look at the board, I'm winning the game right now, I have priority. How do you feel about frog not associated generic hammer guy? Yes, if you're ever unsure, the person whose name is currently glowing has priority. I am Iron Man. Good, good show. Enchantress. I assumed they'd play here. Because I have Lizard here, which means they were less likely to play here, so I put Rocket here and Titania here. Swap to Tanya and Doom. Yeah, but I would have lost then because I'd have five less power on the board. So this puts us down a five power thing. Sub for Barter. 3,000 collector's tokens. point of this deck is being able to play your Opponent. one fives on the last turn. Uh, Silk is a non-sarcastic answer, but Silk is significantly worse with some of the bits of what we have going on. If you want to play something close, Silk is, Silk is the answer.
second dinner ever announced new variants. Uh, data miners will help you see variants that are coming up. Generally speaking. After, after every patch, community sites will have new data mine variants on them. To the 37 months, Benes, welcome back. Fan is my personal go to. I'm unsure if this deck wants ghosts or not. I feel like there's gonna be spots where we could usually play it on a priority. This game was kinda awkward in general though. Between the Wakanda and the cloning bats encouraging us to play out. KG1, thanks for hanging out. Glenn Jones made a sign for you to tap every now and then. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, that's a good sign. That's a good that's a good one. No one's no one's gonna believe that sign, but it's a good one to have. We don't make balance changes based on the volume of social media complaints. That would have a lot of problems. But I would, I would like the record to reflect chat that they definitely make changes based on my personal social media complaints because I am a special boy. And they definitely care extra about me specifically. So just, just so we're clear. When they're talking, when they say social media complaints like that, they're not, they're not talking about me, okay? They're talking, they're talking about the rest of you. Flex.
Tanner's ready. Come and get it. I only have one other discarded card here. I think we're actually good to go. I think we're good to go. I guess they could play a big thing here. They can have Iron Man and they can get us. That's fine. I'm ready to play another match. I am Iron Man. Higher, further, faster. Oh, no, wait. Carol goes left. Victory. God, it's so good to have her back, chat. Oh, it's so, it's so lovely. She's beautiful. Doo, doo, doo. We're back, baby. I've missed her. I've missed her. Just lovely. Look at how they salvaged our girl. Look at how they finally salvaged our girl. Busted chat. Busted. Cracked in half. Unbelievable power. The Rebro Cerebro Nerf Wed. Yep. Palmer Tech, thank you for the 10 months. Patches! Welcome to the few, the proud, the shillionaires! Look at that trickle dot economy in action. Oh, Glandy is a true fantasy universe chat. The only one where the trickle dot economy really works. Our next shillionaire will now only have to spend 999,850 shillings. Which makes uh, Patches our 150th Shillionaire claim here in Hoaglandia, cashing in nearly 1 million channel points every time. Don't forget to ping me in the Discord server, Patches, to get access to Beverly Shills. It is truly the place you want to be. Get wrecked, Mr. Star Lord. Wind aid my hand. What is Beverly Shills? It's the place you want to be. You know, just shilling. Almighty, what a Marvel snap card. Thanks, I hate it. Good news is we're tying um, Miss Marvel or their Doctor Doom there. So I got that going for us. 
eating a baby land shark. Carol! Thank you, Carol. Now we're beating Jeff and and Miss Marvel. I think this build has a lot of potential, chat. We're like doing some stuff that's putting numbers into play even when we don't Cerebro. Feels, feels good. Toxic lockout deck, hello. Bye, toxic lockout deck. They're out there confused because they already played alive. Fair, really. I need the Justina Titania variant, Chet. Like now. I need I need it now, Benjamin. to take to heart chat so listen to me it bears repeating if you are going to put star lord and rocket raccoon in your deck you need to understand these are not cards that you play on curve rock rocket raccoon and star lord are cards that you should be fitting into your curve on turns four, five, and six when you have high likelihoods of knowing where your opponent is going to play. Opponent snapped. There's a good chance we, de we eat crap this game just because we're playing to not have priority. have a ton of energy. Now I have to decide, am I like Enchantress plus a one drop this turn? to try and play to have priority and get rid of their Zabu? Or am I Black Swan to try and dump next turn? If I Black Swan, I could draw Medusa or Lizard to play Carol plus four ones, or I could draw Doctor Doom to play Doctor Doom and four ones. I think I'm gonna Black Swan. Doom rules all. So not wave here is what we want, Medusa, cool.
I need to spread and play for all three, so that way, um, we don't get Goli we don't get Goliath, yeah? We win, yeah? Carol jumps left. We actually don't even need her to jump. Nice deck, bud. Bye, Felicia. What a what a perfect demonstration of exactly what we're going for, huh? Like that. That felt that felt stellar. Truly, really, truly feels like there's something here, gamers. Where I keep working on this one. Before we continue working on it, though, let's go ahead and take an ad break. We'll check the shop. We'll be back in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Subs, I'm going to check my shop after the ad break. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. We'll grab our lovely new Thor. He's beautiful. See you in, See you in a bit. Ink split on Nick Fury. Nice. I have, a, I have an ink with a black crackle on him that I'm pretty happy with. Justice for Psylocke. I mean, second dinner's not wrong. Her only good deck was, was Thanos. Every time you hit a spendable currency to season past cash chat, it's just like, this is unfair. I've cheated the system. Ooh, a new 700 gold variant. Prizes. No oh, hellfire. McDougal, thanks for the three quarters of a year. Is this best in class Galactus? This might actually be best in class Galactus. How many Archer Mammal ones do you miss egg? Uh, almost all of them, I think. Wait, I might have a few incidentally in there, I don't recall. I'm gonna go open, hold on, sorry, pause. We're gonna take, take a minute and crack the 700 gold Killmonger from reserves before I forget. I always forget that I accidentally end up getting it somewhere where I'd rather not.
Opinion on Cannonball. Like, uh, C minus. Maybe C card. It's hard to envision doing all the work to make Cannonball good when you could just play Shang-Chi. Five run its god quest ticket down, huh? Oh, yeah, we can update the verdict link for, uh, for old cannonball, I suppose. Twitch drops. Apologies for the Jeffception. are everywhere. I'm glad they updated a bunch of the Guardians. They're very popular characters that are fun. A lot of people, myself included, really enjoy them. Opponent snapped. I gotta go ahead and retreat here. I think the board's a little bit too cluttered and sewer system's not great for me. Yes, we'll do an updated, updated best decks video on, uh, on Saturday. You have every 700 gold variant. Yeah, mostly from collection track stuff, though. I only ever bought a handful for gold. You could only you could only get 700 gold variants out of reserves. Wonder if this is uh they have Mobius for the Dream Dimension, which also makes my Black Swan worse. Mistakes, my hand's fine. Well, that's nice. If they have Mobius, they probably play Medina and Avalier. To play a lizard there so we can enchant your sim. Yes, if you want to see a real big whale, you got to check out someone like Super Tech God. He's variant complete, as in all of them. I, I'm relatively certain it costs somewhere in the range of the range of low five figures. 10, 10 to 20,000 range. Yes. yes, all. All of them. Alright, they'll have two shots to draw Shang-Chi off their deck. Also have the ability to move Jeff into Luke's bar, so I'll need to win here and here. What does our variant shop look like? Just empty, yes. There's the Doctor Doom I wanted for Christmas.
Wow. Doom rules all. That's lucky. Doom rules all. And I'm drawing Quake as one of their two cards. Playing Martyr didn't do anything. very typical Loki experience to me. Nine times out of ten when I die to Loki, it's never my card that beats me. It's basically always whatever fucking tech card they drew out of their own deck that beats me. It's like nine, nine times out of ten. When I die to Loki, it's whatever, whatever they drew Rogue or they drew Shang or they drew, they drew Quake. How do you think this version compares to the Silk Spider-Man Miles Morales one? So your statement uh, implies the existence of an established Cerebro 5 deck. To which I would respond, that's not a thing. So there is not an existing established Cerebro 5 deck. At least not yet. There, there probably will be with the addition of Captain Marvel and others in the game. I'd wager, I'd wager we're heading in that direction. Let's see if we can run the lose the Nexus, win the game gambit. Be kidding me. Doom rules all. Or that. The other the other times I lose to Loki chat. You lose I lose I, this deck wins with Agent Colson and tech cards more than literally anything else. Those are those are how it wins the games nine times out of ten. Is Agent Colson and tech cards. Call Coulson too, yeah, I believe so. Of course. I don't think there's a single person that can claim ownership for a particular version of Loki. That's been around for a long time and there's very clear cards that are good in it and cards that are bad in it. One of those decks that mostly builds itself. Yeah, our deck's gonna love, love Nocturne. Nocturne. Nocturne's gonna be a sweet addition to this archetype. Whoa now, gamer. They nerfed you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to ask you to calm down, okay?
What if I do this and then Enchantress next turn? I lose the Ant-Man, but I, I get the Raft. The Raft's not that useful. I'm just not in a rush. Oh, I'm not going to be able to... Uh, this is happening anyways. Okay, yeah, take them back. If they drew a third stone naturally, they could get the raft this turn. You want a Titania? Opponent snapped. I can see that. They're probably rushing to finish it too. Yeah, I don't hate that. Party wants to snap back here. Worked out real clean for us. We get to snap it back now. Medusa is an on reveal that gives her power. She's not ongoing. Just do this, right? Call it a day. Oh, they have space stone. <laughs> stone so good they could play anywhere chat and we don't know where Titania is necessarily ending up at yeah we just lose them moving a 10 on the on the left and then playing a big thing there The Cerebra the monster is going to save us. They don't have Thanos. They have something else. Unlucky. I'd also, I'd also like the record to reflect that had they not kicked our sandcastle, we would have gotten to 15 here, right? Would we still die to the, the martyr losing us the game, maybe? We would have been able to go Doctor Doom plus both of these. Yeah, I, guess, I guess that's not enough, actually. This card's so good. I... <laughs> It's probably not a mistake that Second Dinner was like, by the way, we have more changes for Thanos in the pipeline. 
there's a, there's a very real chance we're gonna need him. Thankfully, today's stream is gonna be long enough that uh, in a couple hours we'll be able to take our first look at uh, early format data together. format data. I mean, yeah, from Untapped. Where, where else would I be getting format data from? Sorry, for people that uh, are new to new TCG players, uh, a format is what we refer to uh, if, other card games have multiple formats where there's different cards or different cards are legal and different uh different settings. So snap. Snap technically only has one format. Usually, usually in other card games you refer to it that way as a... I definitely need to change my underwear. Dodge a killmonger, we can dodge a ball. Probably plays around Killmonger somewhat reasonably in a regular full game, but in a game like this where we only have four turns, we don't have time. My poor Sand Castle. From experience, getting gold in four splits is quite good. What's your opinion on imbalance versus hot locations? I think uh, hot locations are absolutely frustrating hot dog water in a terrible system. I think the imbalance patches that they've done so far have been quite good and I like that system a lot. I think the core issue with feature locations is that feature locations encourage people to play basically all the same deck. So feature locations end up with people playing a bunch of mirror matches. Whereas the imbalance passes, there's been a lot of different ways you can build with the cards that they've changed. Which makes it far more interesting. Yeah, I don't, I just straight up don't play ladder at all during hot locations. Go left! Got him. For someone asking about me playing other non-snap games, I currently have no plans to play non-sponsored non-snap games on stream. When you're a one game channel or one game streamer like I am, Streaming your non-main game results in a much lower viewer count, which hurts your advertising potential. Doom rules all. Uh, 
I mean... Move will ever be meta. No, I think Second Dinner doesn't really care for that archetype. They have Cerebro guaranteed. They do. Uh, we started with an Adam Warlock deck earlier today. I was unimpressed with it. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. To assert dominance here as the superior Cerebro 5 deck. Yeah, we tried, we tried an Adam Warlock build of Sweeper 5 similar to the opponents, and I was just not impressed with it. Why not play Titania left? Uh, they have priority. Where I play Titania doesn't matter as long as she's the last card to lane. example of our deck just like this was the problem we had when we were playing this deck even when Adam was working it felt like we just couldn't play all of our cards and like our opponent drew extra cards but they ended with four cards in hand and we ended with one card and just put more points into play so it didn't matter that they had more cards so our numbers were better Why is secondaries do not like decks like Move and Bounce? I think they favor having things that are more binary play patterns, which is why we see things like Elias stay strong for so long. Or Thanos just playing cards like Blob and Cole Obsidian. Yeah, this, this match was a clean example of why I think this type of build that we're playing is more likely to be the good build of Cerebro 5 if there is one. Braving the Wilds with no Luke Cage. Why do you need Luke Cage, givers? Let's get lucky. Or retreat. Or retreat, chat. When you're playing a deck like Cerebro, it's okay to just retreat the bad locations. Like, just retreat for one. It's really not a big deal. Too many, too many gamers get it caught up in their head that they're supposed to have an out for literally every situation their deck can get into, when, re when realistically, you're out for a lot of situations supposed to be press the retreat button. So the... The specific tension with Adam Warlock is that Adam Warlock encourages you to play Wave, so you can play Adam Warlock early, but then Wave encourages you to play more expensive cards, which makes it so you can't have Adam draw you a bunch of cheap cards. Certain if the wave part of this deck is good. Them ramping basically offset us playing wave though, so that's nice. Martyr is very close to being a reasonable card. I've played her in a number of like B, B minus tier decks at this point, and she feels like she's best in slot in a number of them. She's a 
series four cards, depending on what your resources look like. I think if you're interested in playing things, you see me playing Martyr, and I think she's a pretty fine pickup. Give me something ongoing to Enchantress here would be nice. Why would you play Vision into the Danger Room? A truly strange decision. It is, it is a safety room so far today. Accurate. Twenty two to twenty eight on the right. Yeah, basically I'm just accepting like if they if they're going to win middle, they're probably doing it by filling and killing the lizard anyway, so I primarily want to play for left and right if they're playing for the middle. And then Carol here lets us kind of spread out and play for all three, which is nice. Daddy's favorite little one seven chat. What a pog champion. Nice Shang Chi nerd. Get out of here. Carol, I'm disappointed you didn't move to win me season pass experience. We're gonna talk about that. It's your next performance review. You gonna slid over here to the left and gotten me some more. They played Shag and Cannonball. They did play Shag and Cannonball. They had they had the power. Hey, the Cannonball blew something up and the Shag cheated. And thank you very much. Speaking of things that worked and things that didn't, these ads are going to work for the non-subscribers and they're not going to work for the subs. So if you want to dodge ads on this channel at some point in the future, consider subscribing, even for free with Twitch Prime at the link in chat. Think of it as taking a couple dollars from Jeffrey Bezos and sending them to Jeffrey Oakland. You know, I have far less money than him and him and can certainly use it more. Otherwise, we'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Hey, what's going on, yipes? Happy Cerebro Day. The discard deck is definitely still good. They just took a little bit of stats off of, uh, took a little bit of stats off its best draws. Any sort of plans when clans and teams come out? Uh, it depends on how big the clan slash teams are. I assume they're going to be restricted to like 30 to 40 people as is typical in this style of game. 
my initial plan is that uh, tier 3 subscribers and Hoaglandia royalty will have dibs on the slots in my personal Marvel Snap Clan. With the asterisk that they'll be expected to be active for whatever clan events people will be working towards. Thanks for the 56 months, Hacksaw. So welcome back. Yeah, honestly, I think the best solution to discard is they should shuffle the order of the releases next month. They should move Red Guardian up to the first week when they announce it. Red Guardian. Red Guardian needs to deliver us from the discard menace. Uh, royalty. People that have uh, cheered lots of uh, cheery bits in Twitch chat. Enjoy your ad transitions. Use that kind of language with your kids. Which kind of language? Need to be more specific. I forget if I was swearing in the previous one, but no, I don't swear at my children. If you mean witty and slightly sarcastic at times, yes, definitely periodically sarcastic with my children. <laughs> the entire year of support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. Wait, so this should be an interesting slash fun one. The cloning bats is good for them, but not if they can't keep stuff on it with the great web. And I'm gonna get to make some Cerebros and then flourish with Black Swan at the last turn of the game. make them snap before they find out what's happening with the Diablo's base. Feel like we're in a pretty good position here. Opponent snapped. Let's do it. Let's do it. What a gorgeous pile of destroy cards, chat. So, the Doctor Doom draw means that I want to... I don't need another Cerebro because I'm going to want to play Doctor Doom on the last turn. So, I'm not going to Cloning match this because it'll cut me off a draw. And I don't want to play my one drops out yet because um, I don't want them to get Killmonger. What a game! Our opponent's hand is very full, and they just missed cloning whatever is on the cloning mats. I think they done fucked up. They didn't count yet. We're hoping to draw Martyr and Titania here in our next two draws. Playing Black Swan here will take all the points of power off of Cerebro, because she'll be a nine power thing. Meaning they'll have priority here. They'll have priority because they'll be winning here and here. So again, we want to we want to set up so we don't get Killmongered on the last turn. We want to we want to be going second so the Killmongers don't the, don't uh, don't come at us. Enough said, Bob. I definitely need to change my underwear. Oh my god, we spiked the martyr. Holy.
And then this fills and this fills, so Martyr's locked center. So we have uh, 27 on the left, 27 on the right. And we're stuck in the middle with 18. Is that, is that some casserole I taste yet? Certainly tastes like casserole. Nummy, nummy casserole. How many points was this? We went from nine points in one location to 27, 27, 18. Victory. That's, that's sick. That's really sweet. That's exactly what we're looking to do. I don't think they were salty at all. I think they fist bumped first. I, I, it's hard for me to ascribe malice to this emote when it follows this one. This one, this one takes a lot of the sting out, especially if they lost and lead on this one. It's, it's also hard for me to take, uh, unless someone's like roping me, if they lost and they're emoting any of these, it's the connotation in my mind is a lot more pleasant. The context is key. for tomorrow's thumbnail chat I, I, uh, I think our our thumbnail artist is cooking I think this is uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm in love maybe uh, maybe we put black swan instead of enchantress maybe it's black swan instead of enchantress actually you know what no I actually so this is the thing about YouTube if I put Black Swan on the thumbnail, less people will click into it because they're missing Black Swan. So, for the YouTube purposes, I need to lie by omission to obtain higher click-through rate. Set their powers to seven. That's a great idea. Yeah, look at that. Rocket, rocket variant set the powers to seven. Just wait till they click it and find out about Martyr. <laughs> Opponent snapped. Uh there, Thanos, my hand is only okay. I think I leave when they stab me. Buying Martyr now. If you are, if you want to truly embrace your destiny as a Cerebro 5 enjoyer, Martyr is a worthwhile pickup. Savage Lands is bad for me. We're lying in wait yet. We're gonna make our move here in a minute. Two turn one steps in a row could just be someone just like who doesn't care. I'll stay this time. Hey, thanks for checking them out, Conrex. Glad you enjoy them. Yeah. 
Hamby told me some time ago if I have Vine Stone on turn one, I should snap. Now I don't know what to do. Dude. Good advice, to be fair. Cerebro? Cerebro. Top set of locations for us, gamers. Justina Barter is not in the game yet. But yeah. I think Justina has a Titania too. If I recall correctly. Than we are here. Escaped. Opponent snapped. My opener is pretty solid. Snap. They're, they're just always snapping on one. I don't, I don't think it's anything about the strength of their hand. I'm wondering at what point do we end up with just every single... And what's, what's the point where we end up with every single stone costing two? I, gotta be, I think there's got to be a point where that just happens. Genuinely wouldn't be surprised if that's a world we end up in at some point. Man, I can't believe I didn't draw a lizard. I need to draw a lizard or martyr. You have to leave, right? Day. Victory. Sure. They're auto stamping on one. They must just like not care about their tickets or whatever. They already played Blob. They couldn't have another Blob. Maybe they figured you had a Lion Brain. Yeah, maybe you're Shang Chi Brain. 
They were they were beating Shang Chi. Maybe they just assumed we'd Shang Chi on the blob on the right. Average Marvel staff gamer better than that. All right, six to four. Let's see if they're still snapping on one. So we lose the center. Hopefully they can't beat Doombot on the left. Need to make sure not to die to Professor X on the right. Captain Marvel regardless, yeah? I think we're good. I guess I need, I need 21 to be big enough here, but that's probably, it probably is. I guess I could have Titania instead of Barter to gamble a little bit. Hopefully 21's enough here. No! Oh, what a brutal, brutal setback. the Titania. I should have gone, I should have played Titania. I should have gone Rocket or Titania into Rocket. That was on me. Uh. What's the line? Uh, 2, 2.5. Number of additional nerfs that Thanos is going to have to eat before it's not the best deck in the format. Over under. 2.2.5. Over. <laughs> four, four nerfs. <laughs> I love the optimists in chat. We need more of you in the world.
Maybe we should buff other decks. That's just such a bad take. The Thanos deck has such a number of stats above everything else that buffing literally everything else in the game instead of readjusting the one thing that's problematic is very, very silly. Rubber band game. Need our cheap cards yet. Liter literally have every card in our deck that costs more than three. I definitely think Shag and Eliath are a big part of what makes the Thanos deck so strong, yes. Professor, Professor X as well. There's big why is it always you three memes around those three cards. When you look at when you look at a lot of the problematic snapshots of Marvel Snaps formats over the last year and a half. Big why is it always you three energy for sure. middle here. Center, even without the Cerebro. Playing the Moon Girl, She-Hulk, Mockingbird deck video. You made you made a video on it, but a blast. Glad you're having fun with it. That doesn't really matter where these end up at. Feel that weird like a killmonger we should be good to go here yeah <laughs> that blob would have have to have been extraordinarily Victory. huge does the order you play martyr and captain marvel affect you at first yes yet yeah, in any any game where Martyr could move, you need to play Captain Marvel second. Uh, 
I feel like it's been a long time since I theory crafted a deck and then it played out consistently exactly how we drew it up so, so many times in a row. To answer the question that chat's always gonna have when I showcase a deck like this with some off meta cards, unfortunately, no. There aren't replacements for Martyr or Black Swan here. They are a big part of the core idea of what this deck is looking to do. That Black Swan into a bunch of ones plus a Doctor Doom or Wave into Doctor Doom plus some ones feels really good. Captain, I also can't can't overstate how good Captain Marvel is in this archetype. Not only does she babysit Martyr very directly, but she, uh, her and Doctor Doom together let us get into some really hard to reach places. Roseanne, thanks for dropping off that primer. I appreciate that. While well, you do some drops here with us. I think at this point, Gap, I'm probably just waiting for Pokemon Pocket to try Pokemon TCG. I think is the plan. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'd make any changes here. I think if I were to uh, think long term about other changes, if I were to test this again, I probably would want to keep an eye on my shop for a better Medusa variant, because this one kind of sucks shit. Uh, and then perhaps uh, Titania and Rocket Rack would eventually need to go to gold, but the specific 12 cards that we are that we are playing here just felt good. Did you try and play Martyr and Captain Marvel to different locations? The only, there, the two general kind of rules of thumb with Martyr is that first, whenever possible, play Martyr out before Captain Marvel. Second, try to never put Martyr into your Ant-Man path unless there's some situation set up where she's guaranteed not to move from it. Because your martyr, your martyr jumping and taking away your Ant-Man bonus is truly a disaster. Other, other thing to keep in mind in this deck that's a little thing is ideally you never want to put Lizard and Cerebro in the same path. And the reason for that is Enchantress can take away Lizard's penalty. And you can't Enchantress your Lizard if Cerebro's in the same path with it. So... Those are, those are gameplay tips to watch for if you're going to try this. Martyr before Marvel, never Martyr with Ant-Man, never Lizard with Cerebro. Watch to be able to Enchantress your Lizard periodically. Yeah, this, this deck doesn't want Mystique. You get to 28 points of power even without a second Cerebro effect, which is which is plenty. I think the, the big thing this deck does is while 28 gets gone over the top of by some of the decks in the format, this deck fans out its stats with Doctor Doom and Captain Marvel especially, so it plays to all three lanes really efficiently with its numbers. So, that's something else people keep asking me. Do you think this version is better than the Spider-Man Miles Morales variant of C5? There isn't an established C5 deck. When you say, is it better than the Spider-Man Miles variant, I don't know what the other nine cards in that deck are other than Spider-Man Miles Morales and Cerebro. Like, we've hit this point where there's this critical mass of good five power cards, and you can mix and match them in a lot of different ways. I don't think I would, I don't think I have a desire to test anything else in here. Looks like it's about time for some ads. Chat keeps asking me to play Jean Grey with Guardians of the Galaxy. So I think we're going to do that a little bit when we get back. Let's go ahead and take a 120 second break. When we return, we will play some Guardians and some Jean Grey. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Default Chris. Thanks for dropping off a default sub here in Hoaglandia. Appreciate that support. Welcome, welcome. Good evening.
I assume it's only been three hours. This doesn't have, this doesn't have stats yet. Yeah. Untap doesn't put up a latest patch until, uh, until we have some more data in. I see they nerfed apocalypse jokes on them. I never draw apocalypse, yep. question real quick here based on your stones all being in play I assume he hit the bug where he eats a 20 power Thanos but only gets credit for 10 of that power while stopping eating so there's currently a bug with blob and having all six Thanos stones in play where um, he counts Thanos as 20 power as towards his eating total, but only actually grows by 10. And obviously him stopping growing there is incorrect, but I'm actually not sure if the intended behavior is him getting plus 20 from a fully powered Thanos or not. Is it a bug that Rogue copies Blob's effect? No, that's a feature. That is 100% a feature. I can delete this little Avengers deck with sadness in my heart. Our event is over. It will live on, it will live on forever in memory. Hexmen in Texas, rip. Oh look, I can type plus four in now. Find all of our friends. I guess the first question is, do I wanna start, do I wanna, do I wanna try and build a real, maybe good deck with Guardians of the Galaxy? Or do I wanna build a shit deck that's Jean Grey with Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm gonna start, we're gonna start with Jean Grey. The Cerebro 5 deck was good. We can play we can play the shit deck first. Obvious, obviously Gene Grey. Okay. I need Gene Grey boosters. Gene Grey is one of those cards that I've rolled on the 155 boosters from Conquest so many times. 15, 1500 Gene Grey boosters. Just like by happenstance. So this variant looks really bad when you get a rainbow or gold background with it. Dysphoria, thanks for the 28 months. Welcome back. Been watching you for years and never once wanted, never once wanted you to build a good deck. The amount of wild cards I've spent on Grix is the test to this. Fair. We want Ghost Spider to pull Guardians out of Jean Grey's lane. Well, the problem is that only works if her path is full, yeah? Mojo. Mojo's a cute idea. Mojo's a 2-8, a the full path. Warhead. Warhead's cute. The problem with Warhead is that I think it's hard to grab priority a lot of the time. I also think there's still going to be Thanos everywhere, and Teenage Warhead is a hard sell with Thanos everywhere.
Jeff should be should be in here. Yep. It's a generically good Marvel staff card. And probably just a copy of like Shang Chi or Doctor Doom. It's probably just Shang Chi chat. Here's this is this is a really big thing to be thinking about if you're gonna try and play with Star Lord and Rocket Raccoon. These cards are good with something like Shang-Chi, and not just because Shang-Chi is fucked, he's good with everything. But these cards are good with Shang because Shang-Chi is a four drop that you wanna play in the late turns of the game, and Star-Lord and Rocket both let you fill out the last of your energy from Shang on turn six. So Rocket, Rocket and Star-Lord, these are not cards you typically wanna play on curve. You want to play them later in the game when you have information about where you're likely to hit with them. Honestly, it could, Goose could be good in this deck too. Because like Storm's good because she restricts your opponent's ability to play. So like Goose is another way to like push your opponent into, into playing in a certain path could be good. Groot's amazing with the full swing. Groot's got a lot of banger variants, honestly. Look at him, look at them all. Oh, there's this new one too, the little new baby. He's multiple baby variants. Oh, you can't see it by my camera, hold on. Hold, hold, please. I, I got like baby swinging Groot though the most, yeah. All right, let's play. This is a this is a start in the proving grounds deck for sure. Can you even play this deck? You have three cards with no premium splits. That's how you can tell the deck's full of trash cards, chat. They're missing, missing premium splits on a lot of them. Are you facing Cerebro 5? Yep. Stupid rigged game giving Cerebro 5 an extra silk for free. Oh, we're gonna juke the shit out of this rocket chat. So. Thankfully, Jean Grey is not Jeff's real mom, so he doesn't want to listen to her. And once Jeff decides not to listen to Jean, everybody else agrees. And they all they all just bail right on out. Got him. Got him. All systems go. Although I suppose I don't really have a plan to win here, huh? Is that a plan to win there? Does that work? This is plus three, we tie. 
We've got two thumbs that is dead to a Cerebro. This guy right here. I think we lose the Breaker too. I believe, I believe we have died. Ooh, maybe not. Oh my God, we lose the Breaker by one, gamers. By one singular point of power. Up 17, down 18. Unlucky. Rigged. It's a little flavorful that you lost to the it you lost to Cerebro due to the expedition. That's true. That is definitely a savor of the flavor moment. Can Gene be a good card when War Machine releases? Why would Jean Grey get better after a card that lets you ignore her releases? Can you explain? I'm not sure I follow the logic. Oh, snap. Opponent snapped. We did, we did hit on every buff guardian there. Chat, he's coming. The best part about Trax is, chat, they'll never see him coming because he's invisible. All right, Gamora showed up. Right. No, Gene's on the left yet. They have to play left. I believe this is a Hoagland in the end. Looks like they're doing some Cerebro 5 gaming. The Proving Grounds is probably going to be a lot of Cerebro 5 gaming today. If I had to venture, I guess. He's right. These were not good locations for Cerebro 5, no. Yeah, there's one getting jet. Oh, Wicked, you're still in the game, by the way. I don't know if you know. Our 3400th Shag Booster! Sick! Nailed it! Master the Mastery. I assume you're uns- I- I'm going to guess much to the dismay of free-to-play players everywhere, that unused boosters probably don't count towards mastery progress. Maybe, maybe they'll be generous and they will, but I would, I would be 
truly surprised if unused boosters count towards character mastery. They've said how many times you've split a card will count and how many variants you have for a card will count. I'll be, I'll be curious to see if just earned boosters is a metric. Snap. Is there a way to check the most boosters you have in your card? Yeah, what are the sort options? Sort your cards by the number of boosters you currently have available. I forget which one, but it's one of them. Or if I upgrade them all, there you go. I am Groot. Opponent snapped. There we go. L you. The upgradable filter only works if you have enough credits to upgrade that card. No, dude. If you're broke, it's not useful. Get an idiot, put Shag in their deck instead of Enchantress Chat. Fish. Oh my god, completely filling like Onslaught Citadel is so bad for them. Ooh, I wonder where they're gonna play this turn chat. Thankfully I have Daredevil to show me. Not the copy of Storm I wanted for Christmas. This is 8, 11, 12, 23. They play Tribunal. They play Tribunal. They'll be at 56, 65, 65 divided by 3. This actually beats Tribunal. Twenty-two everywhere. Oh yeah! Look at that! Look at that glorious purpose, Jet. And our guardians over here. Victory! Pumped up and ready to go. Math, baby. Oh my god. They stayed in that game. They stayed in that game chat thinking they were winning it. I thought they were just playing it as best of one. I thought they were just staying in because they were playing it as best of one. I didn't realize that, uh... They thought they could win for real. I 
I am Groot. They could have shagged their Super Scroll on the left. I don't think that's true, right? It would have only had the su their Super Scroll wasn't getting doubled, so it would have only been eight. Oh, Onslaught was there. Sure, good show. Also would have been fine. Sixteen or two Namor is not bad. I like that series of art. They're solid. Ooh, did we get him? Did the Storm Juke do it? Oh, jo, jo, jo. Such is my judgment. Get in the box, judgment. Oh no! They have 33? How do they have 33? 10, 16, oof, oof. Unlucky. Ge genuinely, I would bet this matchup is, oh, the lad was Miss Marvel. That was it. That was it. I was like, I don't think I cut it that much. Genuinely, there's a good chance this matchup is bad enough that we're gonna lose. Oh, we're gonna lose five in a row. Storm, storms like our our one saving grace. Storm Raven, thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. I'm gonna put Jean Grey into the danger room chat because that's the way I like to live, dangerously. She's here, she's here to trade. are all here gamers is the galaxy safe 
Is the galaxy safe? I think we're good, yeah? They only have 15, 19 in play. We are Groot. I must say, I do enjoy all of the Guardians animations. They make me, they make me feel happy, chat. We lose that if they didn't have th two, two threes left. Well, I mean, if they didn't play the second three left, we would have stormed the limbo and then it would have been a different game, yeah? really good job of having clean animations but ones that aren't too busy and don't take away from the actual gameplay right like you'll have you'll have a real problem like I think Rune Terra was a very visually stunning game but a lot of their animations got like in the way of the actual gameplay in a lot of spots there's like your gameplay paused for a movie Snaps, snaps animations enhance and complement the gameplay. They don't supersede it. Kang and, Kang and Galactus are the two exceptions, yeah. Okay, Kang, Kang is just a deeply... Kang's, Kang's issues are far deeper than the animation. Snap. Ah, Nebula and Storm the Throner, I think. This is not a location that's stellar for us. <laughs> Nebula is really good into locations like the island because she creates tension on where the opponent feels incentivized to play. I think we're Wait, hoping my. that we just peel Shang Chi to deal with Morbius. Wind, aid my hand. We must be, yeah? No, that's a Modoc. Yeah, okay, so Proxima goes to the right. because they have we're dead because of the throne room no wait is that true no because this is big enough no we're good we're good because i have string cheese i mean shang chi this is 28 they're both they're both big enough actually after the nerf they're both 14 yeah Oh, will we lose to the Modoc getting bigger? 
I think we're going to lose to the Modoc getting bigger, yeah? Yeah, we're only at 15. Yeah, bye. There's a reason why my initial assessment when this location flipped up was I need to storm this, it's bad for us, and then there was what's it called down here, so it just didn't work. You win if you Drax the Stormblade, though I'm not sure you could have predicted Proxima. I actually think the Morbius probably means we should have predicted Proxima, which is a good read. That's a good that's a good thought for the future. Mor Morbius have like Storms atypical for their deck, but Morbius means Proxima's guaranteed, yeah? It's just like how that how that works in terms of deck building. Had they played right, Proxima would go middle instead. But they weren't going to play right, right? I guess unlikely. So normally you don't want to play these cards out on curves, but into Adelaide, I don't want to redraw them. So this is probably a 1-1, but it is what it is. No, I think I think you're you're correct that we I think it's correct that we could have predicted Proximus Derek if we'd have thought critically about the situation. It was 100 percent an output and scenario we could have figured out. Got him. Get the overlay a uh, tap PC version. That is the untapped tracker, which is great. Super dead, and I really don't want to play Guardian of the Galaxy Wretches, so. That's the next one. Oh, how many more of these we're gonna try? Gamora probably remains a playable guardian, and then Rocket and Star Lord are probably close now. I think Groot and Drax are probably still not great. I don't know, maybe maybe Groot makes the cut in Surfer shells now. That's uh, sometimes three seven that you play on the last turn accurately. be the bad man next turn, champ. Because Jeff lets me get additional stats into Morag later. 
because we can Jeff somewhere and then play into more egg. Nebula is unfortunate. I make this smaller. But it does have five energy this turn. Got him. Oh, Steggy Boy. Steggy Boy. Oh, Steggy Boy. The cards we are a move. Morag just says your first card can't play here, so once Jeff slips into the sanctum, we can slip Drax into the Morag. Victory. Psylocke nerf relevant. I wear one of the other two. I think, I think the Psylocke nerf is probably one of those ones that we'll probably see get undone in a month or two. I think I think Second Dinner knows that Psylocke probably isn't the core issue with with um, Thanos, but their verbiage kind of implied they're like, this card is good when it's drawn in Thanos, and Thanos is her only good deck currently. So making her worse is like an easy shortcut way to make Thanos work while they figure out other long-term solutions. That's kind of what their their breakdown implied to me. So I bet I bet once we see other adjustments to Thanos down the line, we'll see Psylocke get her extra point of power back so she can maybe be relevant in other spots. Mojo into Mojo's world. What a fitting, what a fitting, fitting combination of things to have happening on our computer screen. Well, that's lovely for us. No, will probably storm the rate unless it's awful, unless it's really good for us. Yep, definitely just want to nip that in the bud. Oh, come back, opponent. These locations were so good for me. for Stegron to be a real Marvel sap card. Yeah, me too. It's just, uh, just rough. Victory. So many of the balance complaints from the vocal minority of the staff community can basically boil down to the this statement, well, why didn't they just balance the cards perfectly the first time? Which is very silly. Oh, snap. Why did you just do it perfect from the start, Gamer? Or 
We're gonna storm the world ship, by the way. Okay, with that draw, do I storm the world ship on four? I go like storm plus rocket on four. And then we can follow up with Gamora into Jeff on five. Are they Cerebro fiving? They might be Cerebro fiving. They are totally Cerebro fiving. Wind aid my hand. He could do nothing. So the problem with doing nothing is what if they play two five power things this turn? If they play two five power things, nah, it's, be it's better to do this. Cause I go to 24 if they play two five power things. They could like do it. They could do it like a two drop, a three drop. They go like Silk Wave or like Polaris, Polaris Silk. Yeah, I think this is... We'd have, we'd have lost to this trying to be cute. Victory. I'm just stepping on one. I put it finally got a favorable location. is actually pretty fine for them. They have Martyr, Titania, and Silk, potentially, who all upgrade here. Which list has felt the best so far today? We played a Cerebro 5 Black Swan deck that'll be tomorrow morning's highlight on the edited channel. I'm still in search of something to post tonight on the main channel. Although maybe I'll skip tonight on a highlight there since we've been doing such long days. Plus 13 up to 25 here. We're going to have nine per. We're dead. Dead. Now 
the deck our current opponent is playing. This is the build from earlier that I liked. Wait a minute. They fucked up with the Ant Man. We had a chance. We did not. If I would have, if I would have put these here, I didn't think they'd fuck up with the Ant Man. That's funny. I forgot that Ant Man doubling on Onslaught was gonna steal their Cerebro bonus for everything. It can! Let's game, gamer. All right, well, Star-Lord's probably hitting. The other locations are hostile and we have Nebula. They missed a couple of points of power, but Titania could go here and they could have their new map. I'm gonna tap this edge button. We're gonna play something else till we get back. This deck is bad. Thanks for it out. Don't go anywhere. Available soon! How, how soon is soon? I spent four hours untapped. I need you, I need you to tell me, I need you to tell me what's good. Untapped. Thinking for myself is hard. Let me look at what the other kids are doing and copy their homework. So it says this is the last 30 days chat. This is the last 30 days. There's 14,000 games logged here. Some of these, some of these predate Mockingbird, although this particular list is all Mockingbird. 
I, I assume Thanos is still good, yeah. Would be my would be my assumption. Something like this. This start. And storm in here too. I replace that word with this one. X-Men. The X-Men bonuses are over. But the core the core idea could live on for us. Yeah, we spent like four hours, three and a half hours playing Super Fun Decks. Oh, we'll maybe do more later. I want to try and play with some of the other things that are going on. Mysterio. Not Mysterio. Mysterio. Bishop. What else was the, what else was the X-Men deck playing? I don't know that I want to play Cosmo with Star-Lord and Rocket. that we don't mind basting. We had Nightcrawler before. Jeff could be good. Hood's Hood's not a terrible shout. We play we play Hood Nico. Take a lot of convincing for Jeff to put out a Nico in a deck, yeah. Correct. It's not much arm twisting. I really wish we had I wish we had one more piece of like soft lockout. I wish I, I wish I had one more way to bully bully a lane, basically. Is it Echo? Echo's close. Yeah, Echo, Echo bullies, bullies some amount of cards. It could be Cosmo still too. Daz, Dazzler's a decent call out. Echo, Echo's a good shout though. Echo, Echo's a soft lead bully. US, US Agent would be a good, a good option for the last slot once he comes out next month. I'm looking, looking forward to his release. He'll go on a lot of these small ball style decks that I like to play. All your cards have gold splits. It's hard to find the one you want. That's true. Play it. Thanks for the primer. Appreciate the support. Good evening. It's like, do I want? Do I want another card that makes some numbers, or do I want another card that? Uh, do I want another disruptive card like armor? We could round out with armor or Cosmo, or do I want another card that's good? So the problem with Monkey is that Monkey's not good with Havoc and Monkey's not good with Storm. The last card could be Dazzler. Dazzler's a card we've played before. 
You want a card that kicks sandcastles. So I think the only sandcastle kicker we could play is Rogue. And I feel like I'm not super interested in that. You want to play Jug for the Storm Lane. So the problem with Juggernaut is that Juggernaut um, is good with Storm on four, but it's bad after that, right? It's, it's probably just Jeff. Jeff is Jeff is fine with Bass, and he's good with the Storm. All right, let's try our let's try the small ball package. Ice Man, Ice Man would be a fine card too. I play it. Jeff for Storm is fine. Mysterio had Nico enough to justify Mockingbird. So you can't, uh, you don't want to bass Mockingbird, yeah? Maybe they're, maybe they're good enough. Maybe she's just like a generically powerful enough card that you accept that like, that's just a thing that's going to happen sometimes. And you do it anyways. Black Swan C5 games. I went out and bought Martyr. After 30 minutes, we cleared a gold conquest. Awesome brew needed something fresh. Glad you're having fun with it, Harkado. Oh, Lucas, thank you for the 45 bucks. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Jeff, so I can attempt to have priority against them, so we can maybe catch a Patriot next turn. Like, eight's enough to win here, and this will be four... 11 in the middle, that might do it. Lose the Doctor Doom left, though. Goes down to a breaker, which we lose. Can you put it? He did Havoc earlier so he could mast him up. Stan, both of our, uh, our what's it called, that game? Our Guardians. The like, Guardians feel like one of those cards that like is really easy to get tilted off the face of the planet with. I feel like very, very easily be paranoia. Hey, 
Anyway, good luck with the rest of your conquesting. All right. Oh wait, I turn on Bast. Honestly, this is a deck where I could probably even Bast on three some amount of the time. The unknown. Rafona bodes well for our Echo. That is obnoxious. <laughs> Un unlucky. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. This could end up being one of our best cards in this matchup. Could either copy an echo or potentially um could copy an Echo or remove Limbo. I'm gonna play the Mysterio out so they get merged over here extra. It also gives us a chance, a chance to play for priority here. Which we're gonna win. And that's, that's the game. So we'll get to go this into copy echo, and then we'll have a copied echo here as well. I think they play left and we'll tag them with the rocket raccoon. Oh, come on. Unlucky. I thought I thought if they were gonna set up Iron Man this turn, they would want to set it up into my mighty pen. This is why, like, these cards, like, I feel like you could make such good choices, and then it's just, like, your opponent's just on a completely different wavelength than you. Because, like, in my mind, they want to set up their Onslaught Iron Man path, and the path was something bigger. But I guess they wanted to Onslaught the Ravona here more than anything. Thankfully, we spiked the Storm, so... This match is probably pretty good for us between the Echo and the Storm. And the Goose and stuff. We have a lot of good control tools. Echo is a... They didn't know I was echoing here, Spark. I played Echo this turn. I played Echo the same turn they played the Onslaught. Wind aid my hand. I am Iron Man. All right. We found the... We found the end of the rainbow there. Big Beast could work with the Guardians of the Galaxy cards. Yeah, we talked about uh, earlier today we were playing some Bast Bounce, which is a less disruptive, more linear version of a deck similar to this. And uh, I think Beast is solid in there with Rocket Raccoon at least. I don't know, I don't know that that build wants Star Lord, but Rocket as a one with Falcon sounds solid. Those are, you basically have to pick when you're working on a deck like this, like which direction do you want to run in? The bounce direction lets you be extra linear and just like make bigger numbers. Whereas uh, this build playing Echo and Goose and Storm plays a lot of proactive disruption to kind of break up what your opponent is doing. Echo doesn't hit cards that are pulled by Jubilee. No, Echo only hits cards that are actually played out there from hand, which Jubilee does not count as playing from hand. Uh, the Cerebro 5 with Black Swan felt re really reasonable and competitive. Adam, War Adam Warlock is still, still not great.
Nico or a hood here. Yeah, positional cards that have a disruptive effect on the board that don't outright lock you out is something people miss a lot of the time. Are they just playing Call Obsidian in their deck? And their Maria Hill gave them havoc. Well, that's super unlucky. We haven't had a great last draw. We just needed to win either of these sides. Escape. Yeah, they're just like legitimately just playing Cull inside of their Loki deck. Whiskey, thanks for the 16 months. Welcome back. Yeah, we're dead. Unlucky. Havoc. Havoc was a generated card, though. Yeah, I think you only need about three one drops for Havoc to be good. Get a goose here and then storm the center, I think. Or I'm gonna bast. Oh, snap. Or I'm gonna bast. <clears throat> Our hand is officially basted, shit. Kind of giving it up to do doing this. It definitely doesn't feel right when we lose the Asgard draw. I guess it was ambitious to hope to get both. draw next turn even if it's bishop we'll have uh nine energy and be able to play it out with the other three cards from our hand so no reason to put them out now 
I hope Goose gets updated to only care about the starting cost of cards and make it more useful. So that was Goose's actually original design, was it cared about the starting costs instead of modified costs. I have mixed feelings on that. There's definitely upsides and downsides to both ways. Wind, aid my hand. Indeed. It's a question of is plus six enough here? Is plus nine enough here? Oh, you know what? They can't call obsidian here, yeah? Conquest way, we're just never fucking beating someone that's running that hot. There, Maria Hill just like outright murdered us both games. Holy. Yes, once, once again, average, average Loki deck. Um, Average, average Loki deck uh, completely dominates us without Loki. Three three shadow gig. Flashbacks to this morning when we just like played for almost two hours and nothing but can shit on literal sandcastle cake. Okay. None of my castles were safe. Sand castles, they're safe from no one. Untap dot up to your decks. You gotta click the conquest tab at the top. Mostly, mostly play Conquest once we're post-infinite, so we sporadically do ladder, but you gotta click into the other one. Get 
recording. Shark in the Kunlun. Picked. It's the same rough shell. It's the same core disruptive core. Goose goose storm echo. Bast and little things that don't mind getting basted. Speaking of bast, come on, bast. Wind aid my hand. Are we turn four ham havoc gamers chat? I think we're turn four havoc gamers. get plus four so this is this is 14 for three energy is not bad I didn't realize you were a rocket enjoyer and I split there have been a couple of rocket bundles that came with boosters oh, apocalypse This was just a proving ground stay and they're leaving. Victory. It's a, it's a truly baffling stay if they continue to play it out, but. The proving grounds were leaving now standpoint. Who cares? Which variant is that? This is uh, a 700 gold variant that was added somewhat recently. Yeah, when Rocket, when Rocket got buffed today, I was like, okay, I should finally split Rocket. That's a fourth split ink, too. So it's not like we split him a ton, either. All right, gamers. Looks like it's about that time. The capitalism makes the world go round. We'll see you in 120 seconds. We're going to play some more Bass Guardians when we get back. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Appreciate everybody dropping here in Hoaglandia this evening. I'm gonna run to the I'm gonna run to the restroom really quick, Sub. So hear me. lunch that I think we can hop back on the bike. Hi, it's Jace. Thank you for the five years. Welcome back. Pull up my split list. So my split list is kind of like changed. Like I have, I have some cards on here 
that I like. These are cards I don't have any premium splits on, but I think rather than resplitting bad cards I don't really play, I'd rather chase like gold splits on cards that I don't have gold splits on that I like. So I've definitely I've definitely decided that I like. I like uh chasing gold rather than ink. Who was the one that we missed a bunch on? You're saying you I do I do need to make a new list. We missed on someone today. No, we got gold on Cerebro. What is the one we were splitting on that we missed a couple on? Yeah, you know, I need to go through and figure out who are cards that I like that I need. I need gold on eventually. Chase it. Chase it all the way down. Torn. They might not play Kitty into the cloning mats this turn. I want. I want to clone. I want to clone Star Lord with the bonus, obviously. But I want to do it on a turn where I think they're likely to play into here. I want to wait. I think by turn four they should probably be playing into cloning mats, but early on they probably aren't. Oh, they didn't play Elsa into the vats. That surprises me. The Star Lord might miss, but I think I need to take the shot. Oh, there's Shuri Kitty. Probably a little bit hard for us. They have vision to skate into our storm path. And our uh, our disruption doesn't line up well into what they're doing. Bassett Havoc is so good. He's he's so close to being great. So he's so close to being great. Opponent snapped. Well, well, shit.
I, gu I guess that's good. They could vision us, but I guess if they don't vision... I'm just gonna play Havoc. Is it a turn three Havoc YOLO? It's a turn three Havoc YOLO. Ship it! Friendly neighborhood spot. Oh, come on! Ugh. So if I Mysterio to save Havoc in the Warrior Falls, I have to fill Bar Sinister. But I, I guess that's the line. And then, I, and then I think I have to storm the Nexus. You want to rock it instead. That loses if they play there. I think I'm punting the middle and assuming Havoc wins the left, and then I'm storming the Nexus. Do we think, do we, think we can win the Nexus? I don't know. Mother of God, the answer is no. <laughs> Alrighty then. Alright, um... This, this game has had some twists and turns. The Spider-Man movement part of their deck is not what I was expecting. Wind, aid my hand. Where's the Mysterio from? Where did their Mysterio come from? It's not on the Trekker. If you click on it, it just shows you a clone. If Shang-Chi in their deck too? Wild. Truly strange, Sherry Bell. Yeah, it was not. I was not how I was expecting that one to work out either. What's the interaction if you put Mysterio in the bar and put the real one in there? I believe you get four, four, four power ones. They change that interaction at one point. I think it's, I think it's you get four, four power ones. potentially. Time for now. This is a, this is definitely a deck that's like not in a rush to spend all its energy. 
We're happy to play out Jeff on two. I think I'm waiting on the Nico still. If this Nico rolls demon mode or draw mode with this mass, I'm in a pretty, pretty happy spot. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm so I'm sorry, what? I'm gonna wait one more turn to Bast, I think. Wind aid my hand. This is just strange. Goose on Carbartage. Yeah, I'm gonna do that next turn. Yeah, this is probably the Hazmat Serenic that's been going around a little bit. Usually this build does not play Killmonger. Echo, I don't have priority yet. Hazbat's gonna hurt me, is she? How? What's, what's Hazmat gonna do? Well, I'm a little afraid of Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi on the left messes us up a little bit. This ties Shang-Chi here. They can't shake, there's literally a Zabu right there. Ah, I should have left the Jeff in the middle. I lose to uh, Shang Hazmat. Hey, hold on, are we good? Did Echo get us? No, I lost because I chalked myself out of the Shang. Brutal. The Jeff didn't matter. If I would have put... If I would have put Rocket left and not been afraid of the Shang, we would have won. Well, I guess, I guess if I put Rocket left, I probably was never gonna Rocket and Echo. So I would have, I would have been plus eight, but I would have been minus eight from the Man Thing. So I guess I die either way. I would have had to play around Man Thing specifically instead of playing around Shang Chi, which I'm not sure is likely to happen. Although I guess we could know it's in their output range. I don't know. They're definitely a Shang deck. Zabu's just so good. My poor, my poor goose. It's only, only the second best cat in Marvel Snap. So my goose was cooked, yep. Yes, the opponent, the previous opponent's decks that established Archetype Jet. A toxic Sarah deck. Oh, snap. What's been making the rounds? Has been, has been. Someone asked earlier if Cerebro was the bad card people most want to be good. 
And I agreed at the time, but I had been forgetting about Hazmat. Hazmat definitely fits that description as well. Cerebro. Cerebro's at least, like, had metagames where it was actually good. Whereas, like, Hazmat is just, like, perpetually terrible and people keep trying it despite. I might storm here because if they're Cerebro 5, this is bad for them. All these, I guess all these locations are bad for them. They might, they might just not be a Cerebro deck this game. they can't double Doctor Doom. That's a good thought. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Unfortunately, I think we're just torched by Dr. Doom. My stats in the middle would we have won? They're going to 24. I would have been at 18, not only 22. gamers if you're someone who enjoys my content and you've been appreciative of all the extra hours i've been putting in with drops going on and you want a really easy way to support me a fantastic way to do that is for the last hour of the stream we are going to hang out with some of my favorite anime friends genshin impact is up on the twitch bounty board so we're going to switch on over to that Uh, sponsorship from them it gives me more support based on how many people are hanging out so if you ever checked out Genshin before I'd encourage you to hang out and play we're playing it on stream because it's sponsored but you should know that uh, I've been a daily Genshin Impact player for probably close to two years now give or take we're coming coming up on that they also have an in client uh, card game that we're gonna start by taking a look at so we got a lot of card game fans in the audience Well, we will in fact also turn some only mode off while we do a little bit of variety content here. So Genshin is an open world action RPG at its core. And we'll show some of that at the end after uh, we show some of the card game to start. Genshin. Genshin at this point has 
hundreds of hours of voice story content. What platforms? is on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation 5. Before we dive into the card game, just to highlight how big this world is. Uh, zoom out. So this is the area they just added. This is the Court of Fontaine. And then if we slide down over here, this is the Desert of Sumeru. This is the Jungles of Sumeru. This is the Chasm. This is Leowit. This is Dragon Spine. And this is Mondstadt, the starting area if you pick up Genshin for the first time. And then off in the corner is Inazuma, an island nation on top of that. And then there's other some sub areas and dungeons in the game that uh, expand the map even more. So if you're someone who loves open world exploration, it's great for that. I, the, the three things I enjoy most about Genshin personally, I'm not a big, a super big exploration person. Like if you see me scroll around, you can see this is only 51% explored. And even these first regions from the very start of the game that I've played the longest are only like 80s and 60s. Ooh, this one's 90. We're getting close. Um, the... Mind be purged. World I, I enjoy uh, story-driven RPGs. So I do all the main story content. It's, that's fully voiced and I enjoy all of that. I've got really reasonable voice acting. Another part of the game that I enjoy is min-maxing and building the characters. So I have... Uh, Lots of characters here, so basically level 80 characters are fully built. So I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, what's that? Like almost 30 characters fully built. And when you're building characters or different weapons that give them different stats and your artifacts that you put on have different set abilities with lots of different stats and substats. So the part that makes my brain go burr when I play a game like this is getting to minimize and maximize uh, which combinations of artifact stats give me the best output range. For anybody in chat who's a regular Genshin player, I regularly 36 star the Spiral Abyss, which is their their deepest end game content thing. So my account is very much an end game account. Already, I think I finished the new Spiral already. Yeah, I did it over the weekend after it came out. <laughs> Kazuo is only level 60. Listen chat, my C1 Nahida sat unbuilt for an undisclosed amount of time. I, I mostly build characters because I like the idea of how they work. The other thing I like about Genshin, past, past building characters and uh, doing the story stuff, is they actually have a really good in-client card game, which uh, I'm playing on PC right now with my PS5 controller because I like the gamepad for when I... I'm doing the RPG stuff, but I'm gonna switch over to keyboard and mouse for the card game. So I think the prefer to play a card game with the keyboard and mouse. So let's show that. Let's show the card game here. Did Prime so disappear? They didn't disappear. They're just kind of buried. If you like exclamation point sub in chat, you'll get a, a quick link to them. So this area is for the card game is what they call their Arena of Champions. And you pick a deck and you play with that deck until you get five wins or three losses. Usually I rack up a couple of five win runs per season. Let's log in here with my Shenhe Agro deck. I, I legitimately think their TCG card game is one of the best traditional TCGs to come out in a, a good long while. I say traditional TCG because the gameplay is a little bit longer than something like Snap. They are a Dendro Electro deck. You get a partial mulligan at the start of this game. So I take some of these cards and put them back in my deck if I want. But honestly, my opening hand's kind of good here. I'm going to keep all of them. So this gameplay is played with... Uh, you have three characters that have varying starting life totals, usually 10 or 8 that you put in your deck to start. And then you win the game by knocking out all three of your opponents. Is it TCG or CCG? There's no trading between players. And that's what you mean by TCG. There is no there is no trading aspect. So you have to to unlock the card game portion, you have to play the RPG for loosely 20 to 30 hours, depending on how much you play. It's adventure rank 32. So you can't you can't just do the card game. However, if you like card games and you also like quality RPGs. The RPG is good, and you'll get to play it and unlock the card game eventually. Manshi, thank you for hooking up that primer. Appreciate it. 
So, my deck is uh, an aggro deck. I enjoy playing aggressive decks. Each of your characters has three abilities that you use these dice that you roll at the start to use their effect. The goal of this deck is to set up Shenhei's Maiden Deliverance, which kind of sets up a combo to let me do a bunch of damage across of all of their characters simultaneously when mixed with my other two. You're different, different characters of different elemental types that work in, in unison with each other. This is a support card that costs me one dice of any kind, so I'm going to play that off to the left here. And this says every time I attack... It gets a, a counter on it. When it gets three counters, I get to, um, what's it called? I get to draw three cards. So when I attack three times, it draws three cards, basically. I'm going to go ahead and hit this, Unleash. which taps my opponent for two. It applies cryo to them, and then it gives a counter to here, and I've got four dice left over here. Support card here. When played, they get to re-roll dice, and they have another re-roll phase. So there's eight different types on these dice, and sometimes you need particular types, and sometimes you need generic types to play your stuff. Their attack do just does three, and then two, and her ultimate here does two, and then summons a thing that deals extra at the end of turn. So I have two different directions I could go with my turn at this point. I can use her regular attack, which gives her an energy towards her ultimate and sets me up to ultimate next turn. Or I could go ahead and play Dunyazard, which discounts this one, which draws me another card out of my deck. And Paimon here sets me up with extra dice for an extra, basically. She says she spend three on her to get two extra rainbow dice for the next two turns. You got to put three in and get four out over the next two turns. And then I have one resource left, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this uh, kind of item food card to her, which says the next time she takes a hit this turn, she takes three less. The priority system in this game is very interesting, because both players go back and forth uh, attacking and playing cards, and whoever ends their turn first gets to start their turn first on the following turn. So they hit a quick in. Oh, you know what? I might have I might have messed up, chat. So, I didn't realize quite how hard I was going to get hit there. And I think I think our Shene is going to die before she ults now. So, I'm looking for Animo dice and Ice dice. Those are the two types of characters that I have. So, I'm going to reroll the ones that are not those. We got one Ice and another Animo and then Paimon gives me two Rainbow. So, Lisu here says, when I switch characters, if it does not have an energy, it'll gain an energy. And then my Dunyar's Zard, you can see this has a green zero because its cost has been reduced. Dunyar's Zard makes my first companion played each turn cost one less. So, I'm going to put Lisu into play because after I attack with Shenhei, they're going to get priority and their attack's going to kill Shenhei. Or knock, knock her out or whatever uh, friendly way to say that is. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this. Manifest. Six, six, four, three. We can still win this game if she gets knocked out before we get to ultimate with her, but it becomes a little bit more difficult than we otherwise would be able to. So this character sets up, um, sets up elemental types. And then these characters oh. do what's called swirl no, those game. elemental types Bro. across my game. opponent's characters. So I'm gonna put my wanderer. Are you sure up. it has to be me. Now my <sighs> opponent on. only Let's has two dice with. left, and what that means is, when if I attack my opponent, they're going to get to start next turn by attacking me, because they'll have ended first. So I think I'm gonna try and preempt that and set up for a big turn next turn. So I have seven dice right now. I can use Wagner over this to use two of them. And then I can go ahead and... Spear's not bad. Put that on Chow later. And I'm going to go ahead and use... Do I need to attack? Maybe I do need to attack. And just give up priority going into next turn. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. 
like you could only have four support cards over here so in order to play Lieben out I need to burn one of these and if I attack it cracks the treasure seeking ceiling and gives me three cards so I think that's the play Behold. so they're gonna get to attack me to start next turn and that should be fine okay so this was, this was actually a really good series of hits for us here so this is a lotus crisp which can prevent us from taking three next turn and then this generates us an extra dice which lets me trigger this to draw some extra cards next turn actually it could let me attack this turn too i'll have to decide do i want to draw with Lieben or do i want to do this i think i want to draw with Lieben and set up for a really big turn next turn I, I would love it if they would make the card game into a dedicated game. It has such an impressive and sweet amount of polish in it. It's ab absolutely phenomenal. So I'm, I'm definitely playing Lieben. It's just a question of, do I want to use him to punch something? If I use my extra dice, you can see it tells me what is good. So I have insufficient dice, but I can play a thing to get an Animo die. And if I punch, it does two here and then three and then one. But more importantly, it gives me this extra bit here to get uh, charged towards my ultimate. His ultimate hits like a truck. It does seven damage. However, if I use the Lieben card, I get to draw two extra cards next turn. I think I just want to... Drops are enabled if you're hanging out for Genshin. So if you Genshin, just drops every patch as well. All right, I think I'm just going to punch him. I think I'm just going to team my ultimate up and hope for the best here. And then the opponent ended their round first. So they're going to get to start by attacking next turn if they want. We each draw two cards. Now, our cryo person is knocked out, so we're basically shuffling away anything that's not these animo dice. And if you don't roll the exact element dice that you need, you can use your cards to convert into them. We might be able to burst this out with the, with the spear and Wagner here after he ults. It would have been really... I really wanted to hit a pair of gambler's earrings here, because that would have let me get some extra dice generated, but we might be okay regardless. Let's see what they do. So they hit me for four. I'm going to go ahead and this does seven here, finishing this off. And then it does one across these. I'm trying to decide if I want to use the Lotus Crisp to prevent damage to him. I don't think I do. I think we're going to be finishing with Chow because once his alt is done, he's mostly spent. Wretched vermin. they can they can switch characters and then i attack so priority passes back to my opponent now so they'll get a chance to attack before i get to take another action and they can play cards while they're waiting for that too appreciate the people that are hanging out for the sponsored genshin segment really great way to support what i do here every day by watching for the hour that we're doing this we'll play we'll showcase the card game for a game and then i'll show you some of the rpg stuff I probably play that card game for like half hour to an hour, hour a week, but I do. I log in and do the RPG stuff every single day. I think, I think I could probably count on one hand the number of daily quests I've missed in the last two years. <laughs> and if you're someone who's subbed, who enjoys, enjoys Genshin or checks it out, we have a very active Genshin Impact thread in the subscriber Discord server. Under, under gaming general if you want for help min maxing anime friends all right so they switch to kale but she's only at four so weapons are sweet in this game this this weapon does two things for us the first is it'll give the character i put it on plus one damage the second is the turn i attach this it makes one of my skills cost two less dice and wagner here lets me play this weapon for free so basically, Wagner plus the Spear generates two extra dice. The, at, at the core, the card game is definitely about minimizing and maximizing your ability to um, use all of your dice efficiently every Falling single turn. And I think I think we probably got this game locked you up called? at this point. So I get to go ahead and attach the Spear here. 
And then I think just for the sake of it, I'm gonna go ahead and put Lotus. This is so food. You put equipment or support card. I'm trying to decide if it's worth if it's worth um putting a block on him. I think it is. Just so he doesn't take a big hit here. It, it, it means I get one less attack overall, but I don't think I need more than one attack. Because so I hit with this, it charges his ultimate towards the next. And then our, our ultimate hits like a truck here on, on this Dorko. I guess they could Lotus Crisp to fade my ult. They haven't done that yet. And then I'll be sad. I don't have any Dendro applied to me. Playing the Lotus Crisp was probably wrong. I probably should have just left myself enough dice to attack twice. I'm surprised Christy doesn't do exploration for you since she strikes me as a map filler. So, I mean, Genshin's map is so huge. Christy's still working on exploring her own map. I am excited for her, uh, Urkulichio or whatever, however you pronounce her. I'm definitely gonna pull for her. I'm skipping the seamstress in this patch. I'll probably pull for the fire lady in the next one. Drawing some cards. Decked, and then you can see I'm actually missing the last Animo die to do this. It's actually the first time my rolls have been really good this game, so he can elemental tune, turn one of my cards to get the type of my current character, and then finish up with this. So these games, these these games of this card game, they're a little bit faster. They're they're a little bit longer than Marvel Snap, but they're still they're still pretty quick, all things considered. There are some control slash stall decks that have the goal to make the game run longer, but aggro decks like this one that I've played a bunch of, they, they're pretty, pretty punchy. You find players mostly play to the very end or concede before the last character goes down. Most of the people are very much played till the very end in this game. People, people make you click through it and knock them out. And to be fair, one of the things I've really liked about the Genshin card game is it's very much a small edges matter style game. It's not, it's not like Marvel Snap Tech cards where like there's a big swing and someone gets crushed at the end. Like almost every game of, in fact, that last game I played was one of the less close games I've played. Like I had probably two turns, two to three turns ahead of them where I, I beat them, it would take them two or three more turns to beat me. A lot of the Genshin TCG gameplay that I've had, it's like one turn in one direction or or the other uh, could decide the game in the other way. Yeah, they actually regularly have official tournament series stuff. So every, every patch cycle, they have an official tournament series for the card game. I think first place is like 1200 bucks or something. I forget exactly. I, I've played in a couple of them because you can play them async and it's fairly convenient, but I have it, uh, usually I end up putting like 50 to 60% of my matches in them and you need to win like 70 to 80% of your matches to make the top cut in TCG tournaments. It's a very, very steep cut. All right. I'm going to put my game back over to the controller. I'm going to show some of the actual RPG stuff. I have not done my daily quests for today yet, I don't think. Which are nice and quick. So, is this PvP or PvE? So Genshin is entirely PvE, which is really fantastic because one of the things I hate about other RPG gotcha style games is like when you get pitted in a PvP arena against other whales and they're just like, that's the incentive. Genshin. Genshin is a very successful game. The T, sorry, the TCG game is PvP. Sorry, correction. The RPG is PvE. The TCG is PvP and has AIs that you can play against, so it's both. But the, the card game is the only portion of Genshin where you're competing with other players. Uh, so the way Genshin works in the RPG aspect, you can see I have four characters lined up here down the side of the screen. And the... Rough combat involves switching between all of your characters in a rotation that makes sense and is optimal. So the gameplay, rather than uh, like dodging or stuff like that, sometimes there's some dodging involved, but.
but a lot of it is figuring out the patterns, the rotation through your characters to execute them efficiently. Huh. Oh, he is up top, is it? No, he's just right there. Okay. So this team, for example, Shen Hei here. Take your truth she powers up my other characters that deal crowd damage. You can't run. This guy is annoying. And then Seiyu is a healer. And then Dan Yu is my main DPS who puts down this area effect. And then she has bows for her auto attack. My characters, the I have my commissions currently set to rotate through the different regions at random. And these commissions rolled up in one of the earlier regions, which... Uh, my team is going to roll through very quickly. There's actually a chest over there I haven't collected. Maybe we'll stop and do that real quick. I don't remember the name. Would you show us the level 12 game mode? Oh, the Abyss. Yeah. I actually have already completed my Abyss for this cycle, but that'll show you what it looks like when my characters are Cryo just like killing these things in one hit. My will and body. <laughs> let me, let me clear my dailies. Which will take like five minutes here. And I will show you the uh, end game. What the end game spiral of this looks like with my teams that are. I have to make a little thought into them. Test subject. Spiral. The spiral abyss is the part that you really have to min-max for. Make it to the end game. By ordinance divine, take your true form. Punishment. Shenay, Shenay, and Ganyu are some of my favorite characters. I use this team in the overworld a lot because Seiyu lets you roll around very quickly to traverse, and she has a great sword which lets you farm gems and stuff, which is convenient. Uh, where's my mission? Over here. Blow up this one. Yes, the, the current spiral abyss is one of the less obnoxious abysses we've had recently. The last couple of, the spiral abyss, the end game dungeon, they, um, they rotate what enemies are in it periodically. And the last couple before this cycle were kind of obnoxious, the enemies you had to beat. So this, this area, the Spiral Abyss, is the endgame dungeon. It resets twice a month, and you get a nominal amount of currency for beating it. I think, I think the amount of j p currency towards gems that you get... No, it's not, it's not full of worms this time, thankfully. So the you look at the opponent details here, it tells you who's here. We have uh, Jade, Plume, Terror Shroom on the back half, and a couple of operatives. There's a lot of uh, wider things on the front half. Perpetual Mechanical Array. You get 600 Primos, which is like, it's like 10-ish dollars worth of currency. I forget exactly what it translates to. I forget who I used in here. Let me, uh, does it tell me who I used this time? It does tell me who I used this time. Oh, it doesn't tell me per floor though. I think I used I think I used my Bergen team on the front half. Oh, I used, I used, uh, I used my Hyper Bloom team on the front half is who I used. Because you want to, uh, you don't want Animo. Animo characters are my favorite, but you don't want, uh, Animo damage into the Durg of Copula at the end. Uh, my bar is on his C6. My, most of the four stars I use are C6. I'm not, I'm a, I'm solidly a Genshin Dolphin. I definitely don't think I qualify as a whale, but we're a, we're a Dolphin. We spend, we spend dollar reduce. All right, let's run, let's run through this and see if, uh, show what it looks like in the end game. So, the team I want to use is Nahida, Sincho, Raiden, and Kakome for Hyper Bloom. And then I think I want to use the Wanderer Slams on the bottom half. Or sorry, uh, Chow Slams. I mix up my emo boys periodically.
This is this is fully Emerydon. Yeah, she's uh she's got like a thousand a thousand elemental mastery. So this team is a triple elemental reaction team. This first character, small child, puts down what's called dendro cores, and then you make the dendro cores wet, and then you electrify them with Raiden's ability, and they start to blow up. Remember my rotations here. Now we shall perish. Share my oh, I should have tapped her to start. Grow, grow, grow. Rest and and then I usually on field. I've been on fielding uh, Kakome for this, I believe, if I recall correctly. Sure, bring Usually, usually when this rotates, I sit down and think about it a little bit. So, not only are you rotating characters, but you see how each character has a uh, extra ability that goes wide with this big animation. That's their ultimate. So, when you're building the characters, one of the things you're trying to keep track of is what um what their energy recharge ability is. You can use their abilities when they come off of Okay, so there's two, two Dorcos now. You can also see a timer ticking down at the top. And one of the ways to get the, the maximum in this area is you have to not only beat the enemies, but you have to beat them within the certain amount of time. So there's a lot of there's a lot of colors going on in here. But some of the things that are happening with the colors is if you watch my characters while I'm playing through here, you'll notice the characters. The characters are changing. So I'm, I'm switching back and forth and rotating through and hitting their buttons as their abilities come up while also making sure that my characters aren't dying. So to get the maximum stars in here, we have to beat the second half of this with more than seven minutes left. So I need, I need to clear... The boss in the second half with these other four characters in about 70 seconds. This team has much more straightforward rotations than the last one. And I can explain it really quick. So Chow here, he's the primary on-field DPS. Faruzan is a character that increases this DPS's damage. Farina puts down... A sh Farina's a sub-DPS... She increases damage and has these things that hover around and deal damage on their own. And then Zinyan is a healer and another character that buffs. So once I hit start on this, you're going to see me switch to Faruzan, tap her alt, tap her skill, switch to Farina immediately, tap her alt, tap her skill, switch to Zinyan, tap her alt, tap her skill, and then end on Chao. And Chao's going to stay in play for a while. He's going to pogo stick up and down and stomp through this monster in a couple, a couple of seconds. Have fun with this guest. We've got little under 70 seconds to do this. So each character wants to tap their ultimate and their skill. And now Chow sits in play. And Chow's combat is some of my favorite in the game. He just pounces up and down and up and down and cuts right through him. He's so, he's so quick. Chow. Chow is probably the best built character on my account. I was super happy when they released uh, Cloud Retainer Zinyan. He's a, he's a quick boy. Like I said, I like, my characters are well built for the end game. I enjoy the min-maxing perspective of, of this game. <laughs> Attack 30%. Hi, baby girl. Thank you. You brought me dinner. But, but, but we didn't bring you dinner yet. Oh, you got a drink for me? Okay. All right, let's uh, let's rotate through. Yes, I'll pull up. I'll pull up. I'm gonna run through this, and we'll pull up builds here in a second. Thank you, Jake. Can you put it down on my desk, please? Let's go. Inazuma shines eternal. I'd be very careful if you not let that fall. It would be very bad if it fell. All right, some of these are immune to Dendro. Because they're Dendro types. Uh, my Chow is not C6. I do not pull for heavy constellations on. I do not pull heavily for constellations on five star characters. 
I am not. I am not a massive Genshin Mao. I'm a little bitty baby Genshin Mao. Or er, Genshin Dolph. Let's not say it. Let's say Genshin Dolph. Let's say Genshin Dolph. Alright, where's the last one? Okay, so we got some flowers now. My, my show is C1. I usually pull for first constellations when they give me the ability to get an extra charge on my skill. But pulling pulling for constellations on Shao Pass, that is not stellar. The uh, Chow team on the back half of this definitely does a lot of the heavy lifting. Yes, if they're the same type, your character would be less damage. You want to use different types. Sometimes they don't take any damage. Like the type of guys I was fighting. They don't take any damage. This team is just like constant rotations the entire time. Just like constantly whipping through characters. We got three more to clean out here. This one, this one was slow. I think I think I did that one slightly faster. I don't remember how quick the Chow team does this. Oof. Do the enemies change or have they always been the same for version one? They change the spiral abyss every patch, I believe, which is every every six weeks. So a lot of these enemies are from, from the newer areas in Genshin. All right. So I, I only have, I've technically already cleared this with three stars, so I don't have to do it because I cleared these rewards already. But to get the three star rewards, I would need to do this in like 55-ish seconds. Which is we'll see about pretty that. quick and probably not possible. There's some animations on this guy. We'll see though. Make way to let my name echo in song. Disappear. Thirty seconds, shout. No, don't blast off, bud. Worthless. Twenty seconds, shout. Oh, he's so good. Why is he so good? No, come back. Worthless. Oh yeah, this is. This one does the stupid bit. Yeah, I think I don't have. I don't think I have enough time. So you got to figure out which of the the sub guys you actually got to kill. All right, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna three star this one. Yes. We'll get a couple seconds short of one. Yeah. So if I was doing this for the first time, where's the where's the girl? I, I was doing this for the first time. I would restart this floor so I can make sure that I got three stars. But go ahead and clear it out here and go to the next one. He's annoying. I, I, I don't think my issue was with that second chamber that type through. I think the issue was I took a little bit long on the first chamber. Unsubbing for the sub barber. So my chow, someone has to see my chow. He is uh, 2,300 attack, and he's 86% crit rate with 195% crit damage. He's quite, quite lovely. He is, he is only on two two pieces, so he, he technically doesn't have optimal sets on his artifacts, but like... Look at this piece. This piece is a monster. 14% Four, crit rate on a crit damage crown. Like, I don't know, it's, just, it's just so hard to upgrade some of his pieces. Like his, his attack stands are 10% crit rate and 26% crit damage. So the way, the way artifacts work. So the, the end game chase, the thing that like I grind dungeons to find. Let's find, let's find a show and artifact. So you see these artifacts say level 20. When you, um, I have, I've been loosely farming Vermilion hereafter for him to maybe, maybe eventually put on him. Um, so where's, uh, where's a piece that I can show? Uh, none of these are worth upgrading. It doesn't look like Sag. Uh, this one, this one might, might be okay. We'll see what the last one is. So you can see these artifacts 
at level zero, they have three substats on them. And every artifact, when you roll it up, is going to have four substats on it. So I'll, I'll roll this one up. So it unlocks another subset at random. And then when you hit breakpoints of four levels at 4, 8, 16, and 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, it upgrades one of these four substats. One of these four substats at random. So I, I hit this. And you can see it just upgraded the flat defense stat 46. So this piece was only maybe okay if it like rolled crit rate multiple, multiple times. So this is one that I would unlock and stop upgrading because once it rolls a bad stat like that, I'm just not interested in it. So the, the end game chasing artifacts to grind super optimal characters like this is getting a bunch of artifacts, finding ones with good substats, rolling them up, see what you hit, and throwing away the garbage, which takes a while. The Hunter set, uh, by the numbers, is still marginally worse than Vermilion Hereafter for Chow. <laughs> Loosely. <sighs> My, my Farina build is probably one of the most awkward on my account. She's got 213% crit damage, but she only has 54% crit rate. But it's just so hard with her artifacts. She's another character I need to farm artifacts for at some point. It's so hard with her artifacts to get more crit rate into her without giving something else up. Like her, her Sans here has no crit rate on it, but it has 15... 0.7% HP and her damage scales off of HP. So it's like, well, I could replace this with a Sans that has crit rate on it, but I'm going to give up a whole ton of HP, which gives up damage in another spot. Which is, which is awkward. Oh, I didn't mine items yet today. Let me go do that real quick. We're almost, almost done with the dailies. Yeah, I have, uh, I have Chow's, uh, Jade, Jade weapon, too. Add that one came, fell out of the standard banner, if I recall correctly. Thank you for comp- Add Astra- Find ten items is code for do your exhibitions. That is accurate. This is, this is their equivalent of the battle pass- actually called the battle pass. I couldn't remember if they called it something different than the battle pass, so. The... The monetization of this game is actually very similar to um, Marvel Snap. There's a battle pass that runs on a six-week cycle that's 10 bucks for the battle pass, and then they have a $5 daily login things. You just port before areas. Yeah, so... There are these statues that you can teleport to, and then there's teleport waypoints that you can teleport to. And once you once you have them unlocked. So I've explored most of the areas. I have a couple of waypoints that are like, you see like uh, this one here is underwater that I haven't unlocked. And Fo Fontaine is actually deceptively small, this new area, because areas like this have multiple layers that you can go through. Where there's like under underwater stuff was the gimmick here. You could go underwater for the first time in the game. And there were special under underwater stuff to do. I am not currently building any characters, so I'm mostly just conserving resources. So I've mostly been farming. I've mostly been farming uh gold ley lines with my resin. Because I'm mostly mostly happy with my artifacts for the time being. I'm trying to build up like 10 to 15 million gold, so the next couple times I need to build characters. I have some in the tank. Can show off a different team while we run around and beat these things up. All my characters are good enough for overworld stuff. Mm. Out the Bergen boys. This is, this is one of my favorite teams. I think Alhatham's one of my favorite. Alhatham and Chow. Alhatham, Chow, Wanderer. I think are my three favorite DPSs. <laughs> I really like the DPS characters that uh, have a lot of on-field time. Ignorant and mind the side effects. The brain outlines your face. Brain cutter. Did I scare you? I got you covered. Check this out. 
Here you are. How can you do it? I can still. I have another reason. Taking a turn for the better. I have a lot of the teams in this game have some similar structure to them. You either have two or three elements that you look to make reactions between, and then you'll have um, some support characters that deal damage while they're off field, a healer that keeps people alive, and then an on field DPS that pushes his buttons. There are some exceptions, like that Hyper Bloom team I showed, where you're just like constantly rotating through people in perpetuity. But for the for the most part, you'll you'll have uh, on field DPS in a lot of a lot of your teams. Mind the side effect. Someone asked earlier if there's co-op in this game. If you're still hanging out, sorry, I didn't. Uh, I'm just getting around to that while I am fumbling with my words. But yes, my uh, there are weekly bosses that you get special resources from that you can farm three times a week. And my wife and I always do those in co-op together. And you can um, you can farm artifact dungeons together too. I am a proper Genshin gamer. For some good reactions to get you. So my bread and butter team when I was first starting out was a freeze team. Just water plus ice makes any enemies that aren't bosses like completely unable to move for a little bit and give Seems you like an rate. Putting, putting a team together with an ice and a water like that can give you pretty can clear a lot of the overworld content while you're doing quests and stuff. They struggle with some of the bosses depending on how they're built, but if you're just running around hitting monsters like this, freezing them up a great way to get through it, even, especially when you're in the early stages. I showed all those big spots on the map. This area is Fontaine. It's got a very steampunky looking feel with the characters and vibe. Each area has its own Remember, look and feel like that. Like in Azuma, this is like feudal Japan. Liwa is very uh, classic. China, Mondstadt. Mondstadt's just kind of generic high fantasy-ish. Hyper Bloom, so the Dendro reactions are three elements. This team is what's called a Bergen team, which is Dendro, uh, Hydro, and Pyro together. Hyper Bloom is Dendro, Hydro, and Electro together. So Dendro, Dendro always goes with Hydro, and then you mix in either Fire or Lightning. Shit, folks that are hanging out through the end or chill on Genshin for their 15 minutes before we wrap the stream up today. <laughs> It's a little bit different than what we usually do here, but to be honest, chat, every other day this week where I've streamed a ton of Snap and then signed off, the one of the first things I do when I sign off after I go say hi to the wife and kids is log in and do my Genshin Daily, so now I just get to do that while I'm live today. Taking a turn for the better. <laughs> shout out, shout out oh, to the Twitch Bounty Board for sponsoring. Uh -huh. Rain outlines your face. Supporting fire. Fire it up. Here you are. <laughs> A process of elimination. <laughs> yes, Dendro, the little green seeds are what happen when you have Dendro and Hydro, and then the third element makes them explode and deal damage in particular ways. Bergen. Bergen does more AoE and Hyper Bloom does more targets, I believe, is the big difference. And the, the Bergens technically blow up and hit you too, but this team that I'm playing has three support slash healers in it, so you basically don't notice. I think the big appeal of a game like this, to me personally at least too, is I'm someone who's always liked like open world RPGs, but I get like, you know, they all end eventually. In Genshin, I'm sure Genshin will end eventually at some point too, but their roadmap of how many regions they plan to have, I think it's like a minimum of seven regions for each of the Archons. And then I, I would I would wager, I would if I was a gambling man, I'd put money on there'll be an eighth area past that. That'll be like a final area past all the the whatever. 
And they put out, they've been consistently putting out a new major area with each major version each year. So like Fontaine was their 4.0 region this year. Seems like an emergency. Mind the side effects. Rain cutter. Huh? Huh. Don't get too close. Huh? Huh? Here's backup. <laughs> Still so have Netland, Shesnaya, and then Conria and Celestia. And then probably Genshin too. Yeah, we'll see. I have to imagine once they work through their save roadmap, if the game's still successful, they'll figure out and write in story reasons to add more. Got about 10 minutes left. I did all my daily stuff. We do some exploration. Like, look, Chad, it's a random chest. We beat up these treasures. Well, I guess I guess I can explain the monetization a little bit for anybody that's new that hasn't seen it before. Prices on this box. The random boxes, sometimes there's just enemies around that you need to beat up to get the stuff from it. Like this one looks like a beat up enemies box. Oh. Alright, KO this guy. Here you go. Alright, so. One of, one of the things that actually really surprised me and I appreciated about Genshin the first time I played was um, I was expecting it to be like heavily in my face monetized, but honestly, the monetization in this game is even less pushy than Snap is. There's no, there's no FOMO deals. There's no FOMO limited time purchases, buy this and get extra currency for these things. The... The FOMO aspect is they have limited time banners, similar to how Snap has limited time characters in the spotlight caches. And one of the ways you acquire characters in the game is by using wishes with the in-game currency that you either acquire or purchase from playing. So these are two different limited time banners for characters and then one that can pull weapons that you can use as well. This is a new thing that technically has characters and weapons that I don't know and I fully understand, so I'm not going to try and explain it, but it's another way that rotates to get get anime friends or weapons for them to hold. And then this is a standard banner, which uses a different wish type that's always there, and we'll use my one standard wish. By dropping frames. It doesn't say that I've dropped any frames. Let me see if my encoding's having issues. Stats. It says it missed a couple of frames due to rendering lag, but nothing major. This game is 85 gigs. And it's massive. But I'm like, unlike, I feel like when I see an 80 gig download on like a multiplayer shooter game, I'm like, this is unnecessary. Like, there's just so many assets of all the different things in this game. Like, it's not, it's not 80 gigs because stuff isn't compressed. It's 80 gigs because there's just like, all right, let's go to, let's walk around Inazuma for a second and just like show you how different Inazuma is than like the vibe of Fontaine. Just the music's different. The look and feel of the enemies are different. Oh, actually this is it. Let me show. This is actually, I think this is one of my favorite places in the entire game is the Sanganomiya Island. It's just very pretty. Look and feel of everything. The first, the first time I made it to this area, I was like, whew. I feel like it should ruin another open world games because there's just so much to explore. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so, so much going on. Yes, each, each region has a really fantastic, unique look and feel that's different. I bet, I bet if we dive down in here, there's things I haven't done yet. There's different random puzzles to figure out when you're walking around the open world. Is that a 
this? The lightning here is an electric ram, which I may or may not have. To point these at it. Another, another thing here. Point them in the same way. Okay, those are all. Those two are lit up now. I don't need to light up this third one by hitting it around. That type of stuff is like walking around in the world and finding random puzzles that you like hit. And like that box that I just opened, for example, that gave me currency towards character pulls. So you can spend dollar redos on character pulls, but you could also do quests and the main story gives you those. And you can walk around and solve puzzles and explore and open boxes and farm extra pulls that way too. And some of the puzzles are really simple, like that one. You just got to figure out how to line them, line them all up and make them go the right way. And some of the other ones are more involved. I definitely think the puzzles have gotten more involved as the areas have moved forward. Where are we, where are we doing here? I jumped in here, and there's a lightning thing. And this one doesn't look like it spins. It looks like it's cracked. Sometimes you need a particular element. This is... Hmm. Oh, I hit it with Dendro, and now it's, and now it's hurting me. Oh, wait, did my, did my thing go up? Oh, I had a... I think my electrogram ran out. This thing. Normally, that pushes you out. This thing lets you walk inside of it. Am I supposed to use lightning on here, maybe? The puzzles have been flowing difficulty per region. Yeah. There is no escape. Is that it? Anybody want to backseat me? What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, did that light up? <laughs> I can't tell. Sometimes I sit here and fumble at them, and other times I give up and I Google it. <laughs> I feel like that looks like it lit up when I <laughs> use. A lightning attack. I assume my electrogram's about to give out. I'm about to start taking damage again. Yes. Oh my god. Healing, please, Kakumi. Thank you. I think you already did that one. Yeah, maybe. The box match. Okay. Hey, look, there's another chest. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, if you look when you're walking around too, it'll show some exclamation points and stuff. There's random little notes and stuff you can find. There's so, so much to walk around and do. Walk, see, walk, to walk into here, it bumps you back on unless you have the electrogram. Does it look like I've done that one before or something to grab in there? Who's my favorite Archon based on the story stuff? Uh, it's probably between Vente or Farina. Vente or Farina. Let's move out. Hey, look, another random box I haven't found yet. Is this between these samurai? How do we unlock? They're standing here menacingly. I think it's Torn to oblivion! Uh, Illusion shattered! Committed to memory! No uh, uh, before me! Uh, uh, you Make yourselves at home! Grow, grow, grow! Ah! Oh, he's extra chest we found. Just walking around. 
around. Someday in a far off land, when I eventually finish all of the quests and world quests that I have, I will spend my time in Genshin walking around collecting things. There's a lot. There's a lot to eventually walk around and collect. I haven't, I haven't actually done Farina's story quest yet, because there's all of these in here. I've done some of these. I've been slowly chipping away. I haven't done any of the newer ones yet in here. So I still have... Each of these is probably about an hour and a half to two hours of fully a fully voiced story quest that's focused on a specific character. So there's one, two, three, four. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of those in here. So it's like another 30, 30 hours of story cuts in here that I haven't done yet. And then I actually haven't done any of these yet. I should I should do one of these at some point so I can describe what they are. But I don't I don't actually know what these are. These are shorter, I think. Or less in, less involved in the full quest. And so I'm, I'm sure there's someone in chat that said these, huh? Yeah, the, the hangouts. Uh, let's show one more area for the good context of how different places are. This is the desert with the oasis. Hangouts have different branching paths and different endings. You can replay them to get to the different paths. Okay. This is an oasis in the middle of the desert region. But the desert region is very much a, very much a desert. You see, a, lo a lot of the maps are honestly deceptively small when you look at them. Because a lot of them have vertical space that you go to explore. Like there's a whole swamp down and down here too. I see a box there with a red circle around it. So a lot of times when I come back through is I feel like... So this one, you can see these little pedestals here around it. There are three what are called sealies in the air, and I bet this is one of them, that you gotta find them, and as you chase after them, they walk back over to each of these things. I assume we have to find all three. Yep, there's another one. To unlock what's in the box. Usually they're loosely, they're loosely in the direction. You can use elemental sight to see where the seal is. Oh, can you? Right, what am I looking for? I don't think I see him. Usually they're like loosely in the direction the pedestal is. This last one is this way. Oh, I, I saw a little wisp. Haha. -ha, okay. Okay, I see it. I see a little wispy. Shows the one little bit you can't find. Okay, so it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It might be up up top too. I'll look around a little bit. All right, and that wraps up an hour of Genshin. I really appreciate everybody that stuck all the way through the end of the stream, especially the folks that are that are newer here. I'm planning to be back to do a full day of Marvel Snap again tomorrow. Remember, if you're one of my wonderful subs and you decide to poke at Genshin, you should pop in the Discord server. We've got a Genshin thread under the gaming general section that will uh, we're very active in, in the community, myself included. Play the game a ton. I will uh, catch all of y'all around tomorrow, hopefully. Enjoy the rest of your... What day of the week is Is it Thursday? It's all a blurs day to me, gamers. We'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Peace.